as Logan, second game, Logan nine, so obviously made it to four back, and two, uh, Shumi broke down somehow, and Robert is now on the TP uh, to win the second to go 2 0 up. So, potentially three 2 0s on the other lawns. This lawn, I haven't seen, this, didn't see what happened. I wandered across when um, I saw Robbie make hoop one, and then he had a nice crispy peg from his uh, takeoff in corner four. But Joe, Jose had to his seven yarder, I think it was roughly, give or take. He hit that, and now obviously proceeding with his break. So he's got a bit of a position. I'm not quite sure what he should do here. Probably uh, go to yellow, isn't it? I think. I mean, if he makes it four, he'll be backing himself to go round. He just needs to get through this, doesn't he? He can leave black there as a reception ball. So, will he be trying to get a rush? No. Well, if he did, it was very weak, but I don't think he was even trying, was he? So, so Chris hasn't come back quite as yet. He's coming back at some point. I'm just loading up the uh, the comments, so if anyone's watching and wants to say anything interesting, then let me know. If not, I'll just carry on. It's not quite as warm today. It's quite. It's well. It's not chilly. That's not fair, but it's. It's certainly jumper weather. The clouds have come over, so they're quite dark now. Potentially get some rain later. Jose has played a shot, sending partner into the lawn, so he's fully committed, but he looks like he's played it well, doesn't it? It looks like he's right in front. Um, I can't quite see. Yeah, he is, isn't he? So he just needs to run this to the boundary. Black's on two. Yellow still for hoop one. I don't expect we'll see anything out of the ordinary. He's still got a croquet straight to play to get past blue to be able to rush it nicely to five, but he should be away now, shouldn't he? he should have a break. Not a nice roll though, is it? I mean, I always worried about hitting blue on these shots. He's gone down a good line, but it, it's not quite there, is it? I don't know. It's hard to see from here, north-south orientation. But no, oh no, yeah, it's a brilliant shot. It is very good. He'll be happy with that. Yellow, obviously, not quite a good hoop six pioneer as he would like ideally but he won't be worried about that I'm not sure what Jose's uh, preferred leave is he did go for a MSL didn't he in game one that he didn't he didn't execute very well but I don't know whether he'll do that again or Maybe he'd just go for a spread. He's going for his early two back pine. I think he does need a rush on black here, really, because yellow's the wrong side of the hoop, isn't it? So you need to be able to rush black eastwards after this stroke. And that's fine. So he wants to rush past yellow so that he's got space to croquet black to one back. Chris would probably be getting excited about this hill. I think he's on the right side of it, isn't he? He's far enough away. I'm not expecting that hill to play much of a role. Anyway, we were just talking, it's not sunny today. I, I don't think it's going to get sunny, so I don't think there's going to be... I don't think the lawns are going to be speeding up really much from what they are at the minute. I think they're going to be fairly consistent all day. So once, these, once the players get the speed of it, it should be fairly easy, I think. Well... Interesting, bad ratio, wasn't it? He didn't. 
He didn't quite get black far enough. Black's okay, but red's definitely too far. And uh, this hill might be in play now. If this was Robert, we'd be fairly confident that black, that yellow was coming quite a way past the hoop, wouldn't we? But I'm not sure what Jose's technique will be for approaching this hoop. Yeah. That's a half roll. Yeah, and then that didn't do anything, did it? It just went straight. It looked like it just went where he hit it. talking to Matthew Essick uh, briefly just before I came back and he was quite keen on these Atkins, he was disappointed that they hadn't been used previously in the previous rounds. Uh, they do seem to be adding some value to the uh, interactivity. Croco scores up to date now with the uh, the balding game both 26 to balding and 9 to Alan. No TPs, so he might struggle against uh, Fulford or McCorkindale in the next round if he if he can't get any peeling going. Don't know. And um, Avery obviously breaking down on his uh, TPO in the second two back which was quite bad unfortunately yeah, he's still in it it's always good to be 2-0 up though isn't it you know you only need one out of three now I can see down on lawn one Rob seems to be lining up the rover peel of his TP oh hang on I wasn't watching what Jose was doing and he's run one back why a long way but it's advantage of uh, having the balls evenly spaced behind the hoopsie because he's run that long way but he can just hit yellow because of where it is so having a ball at your hoop a ball in the middle and a ball at your next hoop definitely helped him out there I didn't see the hoop straight so I'm not quite sure why it went through that far. I was just saying about Robert, he's peeling Rover, I can't quite tell what hoof he's for himself. So this is the takeoff to North of Black and he wants to be rushing this down down the lawn south towards Blue so that he can croquet it out to three back and go to his two back Pioneer. I think he's probably going to just hit this down to sort of level with the peg to give himself enough room. He's cut it a little bit further than I thought he might, but he's cut it on the right side, so he's given himself a nice angle. He's got enough space to pump that over. Windy enough now that my paperwork just went flying. So I've put that in my pocket now. <laughs> yeah, see, Robbie wouldn't have had any problem playing that, would he? Getting black straight to three back, but Jose's just not managed to get it all the way there. So these are the kind of things, probably, you know, not going to cause him any issues, but potential there. He needs a rush on black. He needs to be able to rush black to three back. So these little things just might start making things a little bit more difficult. Now floors from lawn one, so that was obviously Rob's peel maybe straight rover and he's pegged out so he is now 2-0 and uh, 
I suspect that will be lunch down there as well. It's uh, 25 to 2. I don't know Logan, but I know Rob doesn't. Tends to not eat a big lunch during play, so that could be a quick lunch break. They're all 2 0 now, so this probably is going to be the last match to finish, I would guess. Especially if uh, Jose can take a game, which I think we all hope he can. It's just getting a bit interesting, isn't it? Just a few shots to play now. I mean, he's going to be fine, isn't he? But it's just more difficult than it needed to have been. He again, needs to play a croquet stroke where he gets past black. I'm not expecting any issues. Yellow tad short, maybe. It's probably couple of yards short of where it should have been. He wants to be positioning blue at the peg and then being able to rush yellow over to the east boundary. And he didn't get a very good rush on black, so side approach to free back. I'm sure he's going to be fine, but this leave, you know, is putting a good leave at risk, isn't it? He's got to play some good shots now to get this diagonal spread as you'd want it. If his free back pioneer would have been at free back, he probably would have been in a lot better position. He's got a chance of getting a forward rush, but it's not going to be pointing at the peg, I don't think. Yeah, no chance of a forward rush. So now he's got a, a role to play. It's a difficult role because you want, you do want black fairly deep. I mean, you need it near the boundary but you obviously don't want to send it off because that would be end of turn. And you want to get close to blue. Looks like yellow might be in the way. So you need a decent half roll close to blue so that you can just nudge blue the other side of the peg. So he hasn't broken down but he's made the leave harder hasn't he? He's, you know, If he gets a good leave he's going to have done well I think. And that could be the difference. Yeah, black's not far enough, is it? I don't think. It's quite far north as well. So again, it's going to be very diagonal. And I think Keith would probably be looking at that, saying that black's not very good. Because blue could just hit it. Yeah, it might be a little bit further north. It's, it's quite hard to see from this position. We're off the north boundary, quite a, quite a few yards. Um, we've got the cameras, so maybe I should look at them. Jim Nichols says, what lawns are the semi-finals going to be? Like? Uh, well, I don't know. I do know that it's not going to be lawn four, because I was just talking to the, uh, on the production team and he said they're not quite sure what they're going to do with the streaming tomorrow because this lawn uh, won't be used. The, the final, I assume that means the final will be on this lawn. So great coverage you'll have for the final, and I'm won't be here but I hope that I'll be able to watch some of it. I have got something to do on Sunday but hopefully I can uh, watch some croquet as well. So I guess, um, I don't know, maybe it depends, Pro probably I guess depends on who wins and what lawns they've played on as to which lawns are used. Obviously uh, Robbie and Jose have played on here, so they could, I su suspect, uh, play on any of the other three. Rob, obviously, and Logan are on lawn one, so they won't be playing there. The winner of this match plays the winner of the Essex, Essex Avery match, doesn't it? Let me make sure I've got that right. Yeah. Uh, so that would mean that they, that match would be either on one or two. Um, and the winner of the Fulford um, Logan match for and Alan and Balding match presumably will be on all three. 
I think I think that's fairly safe to say that. And I'm just being told that that streaming will happen or can happen on Lawn Three. So you, I suspect, will be seeing um, Fulford or McCorkendale versus Giro or Balding on Lawn Three tomorrow. Um, with the other law, with the other game either on one or two, and the final on Sunday will be on Lawn Four. So I don't know whether that means that they'll. I don't think they can move the commentary position to Lawn Three, so they'll be in the same spot. So commentators might not have quite as quite a good view tomorrow. So probably be more relying on the cameras. But the coverage is so good that I I don't think that will cause any issues at all. And I guess Andrew Gregory will be here tomorrow as well. He told me he's staying for the weekend, so um, you'll probably get some fairly good text commentary of the other semi-final that's either on one or two. So I think coverage will be good. Yeah, Chris has come back. A bit of a start to the game. I didn't see the very start of it, I joined when uh, Robbie was in a position where he'd made one and he was taken off from corner four with a hoop three pioneer, he was taken off to his hoop two pioneer, had a crispy peg and then Mr. Dribble at his, uh, must have been about a seven yarder I guess at his hoop two pioneer. So he hasn't come out and just dominated as I thought he would do. No, but Jose had had had, had a turn before that, Right. so he was already on hoop three. Um, I'm not sure how that happened. Um, so he's now taken his hoop free ball to full back. And it's a very southerly diagonal crop, diagonal spread, isn't it? It is very diagonal. I did mention that Keith probably wouldn't have been happy with black. In the middle. Um, that was just about two feet north of level with hoop four. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not good, is it? That's too short. That's what, about 14 yards? Yeah, 14, 15. Yeah. Um, and again, we're going to have this interesting position of what is Robbie going to do? Probably good for the game. Um, we should probably mention it's got cooler and it looks like it might rain. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I said it got cooler as well. Um, the yeah. production team did offer us some uh, duvets, but I think they were joking. Yeah. Sleeping bag, maybe. You could have bought a sleeping bag. You want to talk about what happened on the other lawns? No. Rob's pegged out to a two-nil lead. Balding is two-nil up, and obviously Essex is two-nil. So, so those games could be finished. They could easily fairly be. soon. Um, here we've got Robbie, who's hit him with his hoop two ball. So if he wants to TPO directly, Reddy's going to go directly to four back. He's got hoop a position, three. hasn't he? Um, and do you think he should? I would be tempted, given how many errors Jose's mm, made. Interesting, isn't it? I would be tempted to peg, peg him out with a TPO. Um, but as we said before, you know, it's one of those games where it's quite likely that having been not very, not as good as you perhaps might have been, you know, something all of a sudden something flitch, switch goes off and uh, yeah, and we're playing top quality croquet again. So. But I don't know, would it maybe a little TPO on Jose might put him in under pressure a little bit. I, He's 1 0 down, isn't I he? I think so. Yeah. Um, might be a good idea. Leave three balls on. Yeah. Lovely croquet stroke there. Got a dolly rush to hoop two. An excellent hoop three pan here. Very good shot. Did you go over to the cricket pitch? I didn't. No, oh, I just I went, went for lunch. Oh, okay. Took a while to arrive. So what's Jenny? Is Jenny here? Jenny is over on the cricket pitch. Right, okay. And I haven't even looked to see what her draw is. Oh, okay. So, lovely rush to hoop two, just a few inches in front. And he can more or less do what he wants to do now. So we'll get to see, is yeah. he going to peel red out? He's going to tidy yellow up, isn't he? I would have thought rush back to yellow as an obvious first step. Um... Oh, Jenny getting to play in a match against Sharif. That should be entertaining. In the plate. And we got our first visit to Wimbledon for players today. Yeah, I just spoke to Dave Kibble. He's opted to go over there this afternoon, so he's quite excited about that. 
So he can tell everyone he's played at Wimbledon. I said, just don't tell him what sport it was. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Bernard Neal used to say um, he'd won the Wimbledon title 30 times. Uh, that was a quiz question. Which player has won Wimbledon okay. 30 times? Yeah. And it was Bernard Neal. It sounds like something that could be on a question of sport or something like that. So, yeah, just tidying up his hoop four pioneer here. And then we'll get to see whether he is going to try and peel the red ball out. Or go to one back. Or just go to four back. Mm. I think just going to four back might be high on his list of priorities as well. Yeah, nice break. He's not had a break, uh, sort of a, a tight break yet, I don't think, has he? Uh, that he'd be happy with. No. Well, that could be either or, couldn't it? Yeah, and again, the weather, which I mentioned before, does mean that the lawns aren't are not picking up speed at the moment. No, um, I mentioned that. I said I don't, I don't think they're going to get any quicker than they are now. We so just haven't had the sun. Taking off from yellow, indicating he's not going to be TPOing. Four back. So now it's either one back or a ball to four back. Yeah. Well, I mean, one back has been his go-to, hasn't it, with the it, TPO? It so, has. So that's not... Um, wouldn't be surprising. People huddled around the lawn in their coats, mm. and I don't blame them. Um, the breeze was just starting to move the flags. Yeah, it just blew my paperwork away. Um, and it is chilly. Quite a few croquet players have turned up today for the quarterfinals. Lovely yeah. to see Sam Cuthbert and his family around, and he'll be moving back home in a few days so good to see that all moving in the right way a few of the um, a few of the competitors were that were eligible for the other competitions have decided not to play Gavin Carter the Red Charshum and uh, somebody told me someone else but I can't remember who it was no no not David Moore possibly David Moore yeah no obligation to play in the consolation events And that's the shot I'm not convinced about with Robbie at the moment. That was a strange but shot, wasn't it? It's a sort of played with a roll, mm. and it's getting about a 40% ratio. Oh, I don't think he got black where he wanted it, did he? And it doesn't look like he's got the back ball quite under control to me. I don't know if you, I don't know when you started walking across, but at the end of Jose's leave, he, you know, he was in one of those positions where he was, he was absolutely fine. Yeah. But it, he was very difficult for him to get a good leave right because he just didn't have the balls where he wanted them and he ended up having to play cro big croquet strokes never in any danger but just didn't have the precision and obviously you saw the leaves that ended up um, suboptimal as you would probably call yeah, it yeah and uh, you know I think you could have got Robbie to take the long lift with yeah. a better leave yeah and we've seen that the long lift does hill yeah. left to right um, and one thing I mentioned commentating on the Robertson Shield in Melbourne last November was the standard of the leaves wasn't high enough. Yeah, I, I just wonder whether the people that play in England and are subjected to playing super advance, whether that has any bearing, you know, we just don't we just don't have the uh, the opportunities to play these turns day in, day out. Well it's possible. So we're expecting two more hoops from Robbie and then a leave. You've called it early. Do you think, I mean, would he have put blue there if, if that was his line? Would he not have put blue closer to two? Well, you would have thought so. Yeah, um, um, yeah I mean, I don't know. But.
Just amazing how far that front ball keeps going. Just. Hmm. Well, this does make it look like he's going to send it to two back, but he could have been doing it from a few yards closer, couldn't he? He could. One option is to croquet red down to two back and rush blue north, and then croquet blue down there. Oh, I was going to anticipating yellow. that he was going to be rushing blue north. He's going to want to have the yellow near corner one because mm. that's the ball that Jose wants to play. Even now, Red's there, do you think? Um, well, I still think we need to work out is he going to one back? Mm. This ball might end up being a one back pan here. Not clear, is it? Well, yeah. you normally you'd put part of two back if you're going to do that, wouldn't you? I think that is a one back pan here, isn't it? I still think he's going to punt it back down to hoop one. Yeah. Here it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where red is now, it's a lot easier to get yellow on the opposite side, opposite side, isn't it? From just just where it is. But you give up distance. You give up distance. Uh, but I imagine that's what he's going to do, isn't he? I mean, he's got to move red a long way. He could. He could easily still choose to rush out red seven or eight feet. Yeah, it's a fairly big wire. Well, it looks, that's what I was going to say, where it is. It looks like it's in a good spot, doesn't it? Just to... And this is now genuinely wind. Fulford is genuinely not going to be happy with this, is he? Those flags are blowing yeah. nicely. The breeze is definitely picking up. The leaves are rustling. Lovely control, approaching it from inches. Should get a good rush. Back to hoop one. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what he does here. I mean, I wouldn't be making this leave anyway, but I think I'd just leave it where it is and just try and get yellow on the opposite side. Remembering, of course, that wherever yellow's put it, it has to not be in a hoop running position. Is there any danger of that? It's hard to see, isn't it, from here, but I don't think there's any danger of that. Still think he's going to throw this towards corner one. Blue's in the way, though, no? Blue is not in a good position. Red's not in a good position. No. You can't put it due south, because it can run the hoop. I mean, if you want to add a bit more, you can get it sort of closer to the south boundary, can't you? On the eastern side. But he's doing what you suggested and having a crosswire in a different direction. How do you describe that? Northwesty, well, southeasty. It's sort of no, yeah, it's, it's the other way, isn't it's it? It's the standard crosswire yeah. if Oppo's on one and one. But it's not the normal crosswire against one and four back. Where you'd normally have one ball with a five or six yard longer shot. And that's the hoop one ball. How much difference do you think that five or six yards makes? It's probably two two percent. Mm. So it's not a lot. In the grand um, scheme of things, but it's worth having. Up. Yeah, yeah. So Mark and Matthew walking back on for the start of the third game. Um, Mark needs to win the opening, doesn't he? He does. He's got the um, first play, and he's laying a super shot again. Robbie just putting yellow. South east of the hoop. There's no, there's no risk of him leaving it in a position where it's going to be able to run hit one here, I don't think. Gets a rush on the red. Not tight though, is it? It's not. If he needs to hit it gently. Exactly, exactly. I moved that's that quite not a long way. Now, is it? I don't know. It's hard to tell from here, isn't it? No, I think it probably needs to be moved the ball. Yeah, that's Back about again. where he's going. So Matthew's gone on the east boundary. About level with hoop five. Mark's shooting at Matthew's ball from a bulk. missed. So 
there. It just needs to nudge around a, a ball, a ball and a half. And if I you don't can hold, like these little shots. I mean, they should be easy, shouldn't they? But well, you if just, you can hold to keep a rush to one back, yeah. just in case it goes wrong. That was always a good idea. I think idea. that's what Stephen usually does, isn't it? Maybe not the right person to have picked that. <laughs> but... Um, He's going all out for yeah. a rush to corner three. It should be fine, shouldn't it? Don't you just play it straight, a little straight shot and just... No, I don't. I play it at an angle. You play it I think angle. I've got more margin of error for okay. by doing that way. Um, didn't move that very far at all. That's only moved half as far as I think he wanted. Yeah. Um, but it There's seems... no jump though, is there? There's no possibility of a jump. No, that's true. And he's looking at corner three, so he's clearly happy enough. And Matthew taking the long double from B Bolk instead of what is quite a short shot at the mm. super shot, isn't it? It's about a yeah. 12 yarder. It's quite a short super shot. So, this is about a 25 yard double instead of a 12 yard single. Mark does not want to see this hit, does he? He does not, no. Standing on the south boundary. And Robbie's rushed to corner three. Can't see Matthew from where we are. And again, the standard thing to do is let them. Yeah. He's taking his double from sort of big round in of front of Hope Free or somewhere, wasn't it? Rothman, yeah. Oh, the Americans yeah. are. Uh... So Robbie will be trying to leave the ball in corner three open and leave the other ball wired. And this time you can see he's, he's not leaving himself any room at all. So he's not going to get a ball to hoop two. So this is clearly a TPO leave, in my opinion. Sorry, I wasn't listening. I was watching um, over there. I don't know why. There's, yeah, no, there's nothing to look at, really. First game, Robbie gave himself three yards room, didn't he? And yeah, here, so he's going to be tight, is he? I and is that, do you think tight. that's something to do with the fact that he's left the balls, the other orientation on lawn one? Just, no, I uh, think it's more to do with... Hoop one? The fact he's going to go for a TPO and not a sex tuple. Right, OK. <laughs> yeah, the Americans do seem to be quite good at supporting each other. You see that, don't you, from the other... You do? ...the other uh, nationalities. We yeah. don't get it quite as much from the English. They're very keen to uh, support each other, even though it's a single player. Event. Matthew's organised a rush to hoop one. He's yeah, it should be away here, here shouldn't it? But it should be fine. So, ball to one back from Robbie, and we're expecting a TPO rather than a sex tuple. Well, or maybe a bit of both. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the TPO is clearly what he's been doing, isn't it? Up until now. Yeah. Um, Jose's a good single ball player, though, isn't he? So he's, you know, good striker of the ball, good shot, good hoop running. I don't know if he plays much golf croquet, though. I think he does, does he? A little bit, little but not bit, a yeah. huge amount. But, I mean, he'd be very good if he did. Uh, um, he's going to play the yellow here, isn't he? He's, what he wants to do... It's got a ball at its hoop, and if he hits in, he's got everything, hasn't he? Yeah, I, I suppose I was just trying to get to the point. He's not really the kind of player that you'd, you'd say you'd want to be playing one ball against. No. I suppose Robbie just thinks he's better than anyone else in the world anyway, so... I said this was one in seven when you asked me earlier. Yeah, and he's already had one. And yeah, so it's not how percentages work, I don't think. <laughs> but you can pop down the casino lace to try out your theory. <laughs> He 
good at keeping his head down, isn't he? Looking at it. No. Oh. Well, no. another close one. I always think when people start walking sideways, it's yeah. missing. Yeah. Yeah, you just try and make it look to yourself yeah. like it, you know, get to an angle where it looks like it's going to hit it. Yeah. Lean your head over a bit. So Jim Nichols has asked on what lawns are the semi-finals being played tomorrow and the answer is I don't know. Well I kind of have answered that and um, so I think it's fairly safe to say the Fulford versus, uh, well I say Fulford, Fulford or McCorkendale versus Balding or Giroux will be on lawn three. And the other one on lawn two? Or one, I'm not sure which. Two probably and, I think. Uh, so, the, so the stream game will be lawn three tomorrow. Right. Um, so that would be coverage of... Uh, At the moment, Fulford v. Fulford v. Balding. Um, and yeah, that would be a fantastic this, result for Tom, wouldn't it? If he manages to close out this match from... Yeah, I mean, he's not had a TP yet. So both his wins against Ella uh, in, this, in this match. So he had three yesterday against Harry. Three yesterday, he? so none today yet. So he probably needs to play better than that if he's playing Fulford. But obviously he's capable. Yeah. He probably woke up happy that he was playing Alan rather than Bridge. I still think Alan's in this match. Oh, for sure. Whereas I'm less confident about Avery. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I, I think it's gone for Avery. I really want him to win, but I don't know. It's a big ask now, isn't it? It is. He's going to go two games and break down. Yeah. And I think he's quite unlikely to do a TPO if he hits the lift. So, I always liked TPOing when I was a long way behind. Yeah, the match. I think you. I don't know, it feels right, doesn't it? Just you try know. and gain some control of the lawn again. Unless you're going to go to one back. <laughs> yeah. I'm fairly sure Mark won't do that if he hits a lift. Although he did that in the last game, so. But he won't. Well, okay. Yeah, I'm fairly sure he won't be trying to 6 ball. So, well, Robbie's. You guys are copying on that thing. You like a bit? Yeah. Robbie's disappeared. He might have gone. I didn't see him disappear, did you? Maybe he's no. gone up to the clubhouse. But... Um, equally, you know, again, just checking his blood sugars. Ah, Maybe yes. He's just having yeah. a little snack. Well, they didn't have lunch. So no. he might need to. Oh, here he comes. He's obviously been up to the clubhouse yeah. to do what he needs to do. And he's now coming back onto the lawn. Hmm. So first game, we saw him try and rush partner behind hoop two. I'm quite interested what he's going to do with this yellow though, to start with. His last game he didn't try, did he? He didn't try and get it to hoop two. He didn't. He, he, he's, he's got more space now. He does have a bit more space. I think this would be a better turn than the, the last time he tried it. I think so as well. So ideally, you'd like this four yards southeast of boot two, I, I think. Yeah. And holding for a rush on the black. Which he can certainly play, I think, with his mallet that he's got. Yeah, he's got an extra, at least two feet of room. But again, he's not, he's not going all out for it, has he? So he's obviously happy with it there. I think he could have done better. Than I that. think he could have done a lot better than that. But he, he wants to make sure of his rush, doesn't he? he That's does. what he's prioritising. Yeah. And he overhit this in game one, didn't he? Yeah, quite quite a long way. <laughs> I 
and this is much better. It looks better, doesn't it? That's definitely good. So he'll, he'll have a go at mm. this. Has to miss the hoop by not very much on the right with the back ball. Yeah. But he'll be very pleased with that finishing position. It's a good I mean, shot. I'm sure he's going to make this look easy, but it's not an easy shot. Oh, no, for, this is for, tough. For a normal, you know, A-class player. No, if you miss the hoop by three balls, yeah. you're leaving yourself quite a long row aren't Well, you? also, as well, there's a chance that, that red might hit the hoop, bounce off and hit blue. I'm sure that won't happen, but it could happen to somebody. Yeah, black could easily bounce to somewhere nasty, couldn't it? He normally spends longer than that lining them up, so he's obviously very yeah. happy with that initial position. Not a lot of pull, is there? So no, not a lot. Can line it up straight, I think. I'd be definitely having it into the left on wire. Yeah, just slightly, the inside of it. Slightly. It's not going to be rolling, is it, by the time it gets there, probably? No, it should be skidding, I think. Which is probably bad for the peel. Yeah. Yeah, there is a chance he's going to be short on red as well, isn't there? I suppose he'd be happy if we'd, or he'd be happy with a four yard or something like that. Good shot, this one. Yeah, yeah. And it did come out an angle black though, so there was a. And blue's hilling. Oh. So that was a much better shot than the end result. Blue has gone yeah. four feet right left to right, hasn't it's it? It's pretty ugly, isn't it? Now. Um, it was yeah. He played it really well, he and he really, deserves a better result than that. He's really going to hope he hits it half ball on the left now, isn't he? Yeah. He's praying that it's half ball on the left. This is the sort of the interesting one, isn't it? I heard you talking about it the other day. Is how hard you hit it. Do you, yeah, you, you almost hit it softer than you need to because you might hit it in the middle. Correct. Yeah, that is true. Is it on the wrong yeah. side? Well, it's okay, isn't it? Um, He's just got to take. Off. And to be fair, blue's probably quite good for him, isn't it? With his hoop stroke, he can probably just. Settle for hitting blue. Ideally, he'll, he won't, but. So you're saying run the hoop through to black? Just, yeah, I mean, it's what it's been doing, isn't it? He's, it been, is. he's been putting the balls there, approaching the hoop. And if he gets the same sort of hill as he got on the way down, he might hill behind the black and get a rush to two back. Yeah, there's chances, isn't there? I mean, you know, you get a rush somewhere down there, don't you, and just put it in front of two back going to red, and you're in pretty good shape as long as you get a rush to yellow. He's playing to hit red, isn't he? It's a good approach. So what's he going to be doing if he does hit red then? I don't think he's hitting red. You think he's, you do think he's going to hit black? I think hitting black is the right thing, isn't it? But I'm not sure I would have put red there. Uh, it's just he likes it's just the firm to get in shot front, to the approach. Yeah, yeah, it's just a line that gets him in front of the hoop. Nice shot. Hasn't got a rush on the black, but he'll be able to tap it and roll it back down in front of. Well, this is a much better start, isn't it, than the previous turn that he played in the last game? And so there is an option, if you want to be very aggressive, of putting this two back and rushing red up the lawn and then croaking red back down. To... No, no, we don't no. do that. Do look, we? look at what he's doing. This is TPO. This is this is crazy, isn't it? I mean, I was surprised that he hit black that hard. I am very. I thought having got off to this good yeah, start, I thought just hit black gently. Well, you know, he had a good position. Roll it down in front of two black. Rush red to yellow, and just see what happens. But he is intent on the TPO. It is his tactic. You don't have to put black there straight away. You could croak it there. Be there's no reason Before not to, though, three. is there? But he hasn't got a rush on red, has he? There's no reason not to put it in front. I mean, it's much easier to put it in front from where you were. It is. Than ten yards away. It is. The blue's the problem. That's just a bad shot. Now he's in danger of not making hoop two. Yeah. Well, it's interesting now, because is he going to play a roll to get his TPO going, or is he going to play a takeoff? And if he plays a takeoff, he would have been better, better off rolling black in front of two back. Yeah. So this is clearly an attempt at a TPO. Bit surprised having got that one yeah. back peel before he I mean, won. From where he was, I just said he he made quite a good start. I 
I think astonished is probably too strong a word, but I'm very surprised at the line of play that he's now taken. But it's obviously what he feels is the right thing to do, so. It's a tough shot, isn't it? It's a full roll. It's not. It's not really good, Red's gone it? into black, but blue's very good. Yeah. So I think he'll be happy with that. Blue was far more important than red. Yeah. Meanwhile, Matthew has um, gone to four back and made a little bit of a loose MSL. So the ball at hoop two is a few inches away from the hoop. So I think we need a name for this. Um, I mean, it was, did this year... <laughs> What did this used to have a name at any point in the past where you go to one back and then do a TPO? Because obviously TPO is a a, a name for it, but uh, I feel like it needs a more descriptive name. No, well, I mean, people used to go to one back peeling the four back yes. hoop, and that's in the New Zealand TPO. Yeah, a New Zealand TPO, but um, this isn't that, so this needs to be a, a, F a Fletcher TPO. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then also I was thinking as well what you need you need on the end in brackets the number of peels on Correct. part that you, you also got you do because it could easily be not one two or three uh, yeah I say my preference is trying to get two peels and the three back peel in the jaws yeah which Rob had didn't he the other the other day yeah I think Against I mentioned Marcus, was it yeah I think so and nice angle he's come out out there look I had that against Pete Landry at the resort at the mountain. Okay. And still lost. I've, I've left the lawn with the ball in free back quite a few times. <laughs> so Mark Avery now going to have what could be his last shot of the match. Yeah. This is a must hit, isn't it? I think you've just got to take the shortest shot, haven't you, here? Come on, Mark Avery, open champion. Not feeling very well, though, so that, that you know, could be playing on his mind. He's got his jacket on. And he's left yellow yeah. a long way short of hoop four there. And there was no need to hold as well for black as he did, was there? Any three yarder on black would have been good enough. You'd assume so, but... So I he's think that's a, of, an error. I, th I feel like he's caught, sort of caught in between playing two sort of styles at the minute. He kind of wants to play the precision stuff, but he's not quite getting there. So he's having to, I don't know. Don't want to put black in the way of your rush to hoop three. So Alan's on the lawn, he's, they've obviously started. Looks like he's there. Well, there is four balls on the lawn, but he's approaching hoop four with a break by the look of it. And uh, Rob Fulford's just going back down to lawn one, so they'll be restarting. This so is now, okay, isn't it? I mean, it's yep. not a textbook, is it? But he shouldn't be in any danger here. No, it's just, you know, that yellow is yeah. it's seven just, yards away from the hoop. It's just another few percent, isn't it, that you're adding on to the difficulty. Pretty reasonable. I'm just going to watch Mark over his lift shot. He's taken a long lift. So he's lifted the ball at hoop four, hasn't he? Yeah, and he's one of one. And he's missed. Yeah, he stroked it, but he didn't like it. So it's potentially his last shot of the championship. And these little shots, um, really handy to get good at them. Know exactly how far each ball's going. Yeah. It's just a slightly thick takeoff, isn't it? Again, this sort of shot, Robert Fulford has just got that. Those balls are on the right spot every time. And 
Looks it's good, okay. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Probably run it into red, I would think. Yeah. Won't risk hitting it gently. No. And, and what do you think about this now, then? Are you worried about getting a rush on black, or are you just happy? I had, I'm definitely getting a rush on black with a... Oh, he's missed. I think, I think he tickled it. I think he tickled it. Yeah, yeah he did. Thanks very much. That's handy. You don't want that return row okay yeah. that you've got to dribble at, do you? No, that would have been a bad result if he'd have sneaked past it. Um, yeah. I think he's fine, isn't it? He's just going to... But yeah, you're asking about the rush. I definitely don't want to play this with a straight stop shot and just tap black and have no. to roll to yellow. It's playable, isn't it? But like you say, I don't think you need to in this case. I was more thinking if he'd have run the hoop and maybe run into black and hit it a bit further away from the hoop. Right. You know. Red. Run into red. I'm not colour blind, I just say the wrong word. Well, I've been doing that a lot as well. <laughs> Uh, no more comments yet, so we're probably just talking to ourselves, I think. Well, we've gone past the witching hour, really, in uh, Australia oh, and New Zealand, and they'll be in bed by cried now. off, have they? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's quite a lot of people down from clubs in the UK today, uh, just popping out for lunch earlier, uh, bumping into people from various clubs, so that's good to see. I think um, the uh, production team told me we were over 200 this morning at one point on the live stream. So it hasn't got the peel. He'd be disappointed he, with that, do you think? Because it's not so much he's worried about completing the TPO, <laughs> but when you don't mm. peel it cleanly, you end up getting less opportunity to peel partner. Yeah. And it didn't look like a great attempt to me. It, but these are the sorts of shots that, you know, might have gone through yesterday. Yeah. And now they're, they're actually... It looked stopping. fairly straight into the wire, didn't it? But... But in terms of the TPO, it's no no issue, is it? But so someone's just catching up with the results and saying, just notice that um, James and Reg are out. Uh, what happened? Well, Reg lost to Alan in five games at Roehampton. And that's a good shot, isn't it? It is. It is. And James lost to Logan. And that was in four. Was, was, was that it? four? So, four, four from. We memory. should be able to remember, but we're not professionals, are we? We're just doing it for the love, so um, we don't so hold all the information in our head. Five. Five. Yeah. Um, Twenty-six TP in the last game, and a five TP match. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty high quality. Logan currently two 0 down to Rob. And Alan currently 2 0 down to Tom. So those two big wins yesterday not quite being followed up on yet. I think there was only three games for quickly looking at it yesterday that didn't have any letters in total. So that would indicate a quite a high higher level of play than we've seen this morning, wouldn't it? It would. It would. And yeah, you know, it's been obvious that the hoops have been a completely different challenge today. Yeah. Um, I think it would be interesting, won't it, tomorrow morning to see if they are still in the same place or... Yeah, I don't think they'll be moved overnight. No. Whether they're moved for the final, I'm not sure. Okay. But I think we'll be using an identical hoop holes tomorrow. Yeah. Well, this lawn won't be used. And were, were all the lawns moved, did you say? Or was it all just of them. All, all of four them. were yeah, moved, okay. yeah. So going to be rush peeling red through four back. And as we said in the last... Oh, he's lost it. Yeah, so it's okay. No, no it isn't. It's not. No, that, this is, is rush That's peelable, bad. but it's really fine. He's not worried though, he's just walked straight up to it. And obviously if it stays in the hoop... It's tough. Taking off to black becomes really, really and difficult. knocking it out of the hoop is not a good result either without and the peel it was one of those rolly shots again it was, wasn't, wasn't it, it? Yeah. Well, i just don't think he's got was control it the line? Of the back ball. Oh, here we go was it the line or was it a hill i don't know is there a hill there it's line on length isn't it yeah oh he's, he's played a good shot oh, oh unlucky 
So great rush peel, but Blues followed through and cleared his hoop six par near yellow yeah. to about two That's feet off the west really. boundary. I mean that is that is a that is a result you would not expect. But it was if that, he'd have if he'd have played the shot that he wanted to on the previous stroke, there would have been absolutely no chance of that happening at all, would there? Correct. And having got here. Are you going to play a big pass role? Yeah. Well, I was about to say before that happened, and, and black is a perfect ball for just taking off to, rather than taking off to get a rush on it. Uh, but now he's uh, in a position where he needs a hoop six by now. He does. And he's down on the ground, lining up the croquet stroke. A nice one to peel. <laughs> he's trying to hit hoop six. Yeah. In the with, jaws would be a very nice result from here. With yeah. red, yeah. Jaws a pen up. You've got to make sure you're not crosswired. Yeah, I think black's a good though, isn't it? Because it's slightly on that side. So he's not going down a wide line. No, he needs to play well, well left, I think, here. Yeah. East. Oh, now, we did get told earlier, didn't we, that there was um, an update on the Fantasy League and somebody's asking about it. So when we get uh, some time, we can show you the... The fantasy league standings. We can indeed. Probably It'll not be quite as of evident. last night, won't it? Right. I so, didn't enter it. I must um, admit. But what is the prize? Are you putting up prize, a few hundred quid? No, or? the prize no. is honour and glory. Oh, just, oh right. Is it just one of those? So it? he's finished short on the roll. Red's okay. And yeah. He's rushing this away from the hoop, isn't this he? This is going to be a few yards away now, isn't it? Unless he flicks it. He'd probably um, be hoping for another half baller, won't he? Yeah. Be nice not to hit that in the middle. That's, oh, that's mm. a good shot, though, isn't it? I mean, it didn't go as far as I thought it would. It didn't go as far as it would have done if I'd have hit it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And ideally, getting a rush out of this hoop up to yellow, to yellow and get it yeah. back back in lawn again. But I mean, you don't need it, do you? If you don't get it, you just put out a one back pioneer and get your break back together, and he's still got loads of time. So, ideally, yeah, rush up here. But if he doesn't get it, he won't be sweating. So I think we're still trying to get these fantasy results to come up. Um, uh, here we go. Here we go. So running down from the top, um, Sam Cuthbert and Richard Bilton, four and five. My good wife, ninth. And oh, I've moved up to 16th. I was 60. Something last time I looked. That's Alan beating Reg. Who updates these scores then? Uh, so it's all done automatically by Eugene Chang. Oh, okay. He's written a nice little program. Right. Meanwhile, we'll just pop back to the lawn. Rob's played a lovely uh, approach to hoop five. Amazing though, isn't it? He's put black all the way to six. Um, got nicely in front, but I mean, you don't you want run to run this, this now by two or three yards, and you're in trouble again, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, d I didn't watch that shot because I was doing something else. But, uh, and that's see? what he's done. He's yeah. run it by four yards. I mean, he's probably fine, isn't he? But why? I just don't get why black's there. I mean, and he's shooting at black, not red. Why? Uh, I hate to say things like that because obviously he's far better than I am, and he probably knows exactly what he's doing. But it feels like the wrong thing to have done. Yeah, this load. Yeah. Getting straight position and punting the ball I mean, he many yards forward is a clear part of his game. He wants to play a hoop approach uh, uh, that he's going, that he's, he's controlling the back ball. That's his main priority, isn't it? And he's almost saying, well, wherever the front ball goes, I'm just going to hit it. But when yeah. you do this, it's you start thinking, well, actually, if I'd have put black at the pig, I'd be in a much better position. Now, this is about 11 yards, isn't it? Mid turn, 11 yards, snicked it. Very handy, very handy. Yeah. Now he can go and fe fetch yellow out from the boundary, and he's back in control yeah. again. I mean, he can just black back now. Just becomes his one back pioneer, doesn't it? And he brings yellow across as his escape ball, and hopefully he'll still get his peel after six. So that was C. Stewart asking for the fantasy results. So I didn't see where he was on the. Hopefully, you spotted yourself. 
Um, uh, there's about been. 100 people in it. Oh, is so, it? So, uh, about... Uh, well, if you're a hundredth, you might not have then. Well, maybe I hit 85 or 89, but you know, it's a good number of entries. I'm pleased to have moved myself further up the leaderboard from 60 something. You haven't but retired from fantasy. No. Fantasy no. prediction competitions yet then. I need Alan to have a big comeback. I've got Alan and Rob still in the event. Have you retired from non international? fantasy competitions. Ah, oh, well that's a fine question. <laughs> that's a fine question. Right, so he's, yeah, he just needs one shot now, doesn't he? And his, his standard TP's just magically come back together. Yeah, he wants to get a good rush on red in front of hoop six so he can peel it after running the hoop. And I suppose what we should also mention is black's at the wrong hoop. So in terms of peeling black ah, through two back, well, it's not happening, is it? No, but I think from where he was, he's um, got his TPO back together, hasn't he? So he's he's still got. If he gets his peel, if he gets his rover peel to go to three back, he's still got the potential two back peel before rover, hasn't he? Yeah, um, or even before rover. Or oh, before rover is, is better isn't it after yeah. over is probably pretty useless and again one of those roles where I'm not happy with the back ball no it's this back I ball is just not under control that is related to his his uh, stop shot so just a confirmation that tomorrow we're going to stream the semi-final on lawn 3 um, and we're expecting that to be between at the moment Fulford and Tom Balding they're both 2-0 ahead if, uh, if, the, if the matches continue in the current Form. But Alan started his comeback and he's had a ball round in the third game, so hopefully that's the start of a big, big comeback. Meanwhile, Robbie's still approaching from further away yeah. than he would like to be. I feel like it's a bit of a shame if all if those games all go three nil, isn't it? I mean, the winners will be happy, but the spectators don't quite get our money's worth. Money's worth, but uh, Essex in total control isn't he doesn't look like he's gonna make any yeah error. looks like he might um he's on a delayed tp with partner at two back he's just quite casual as well isn't he doesn't look like he's under any sort of no he's, he's nice to watch um so a little bit loose maybe on the break play but it, it all looks under control yeah uh, robbie's approach to six and that's hill. okay. Probably try and run this past the red and get a rush back in front of Penult for the peel. Yeah, are you surprised at how far red went there? I would have thought he would have been trying to get it a bit closer, but it's almost as if he hasn't got the shot. Yeah, uh, but is that tied to? Because you keep mentioning this role that he keeps playing, and I just wonder whether that's that is the characteristics of his mallet that he hasn't quite got oh, on top of yet. I think it is. Yeah. But so I don't think you'll see that in a, you know, if he sticks with his mallet for another year, I don't think you'll see that shot being played. Because mm. I think he would have, uh, he would be playing it better, won't he? You'd hope so. I think he will. So that's that's a, a, on the right side. A useful little cut in front. He thinks he's overcut it. Shakes the head. Yeah. So I'm a bit worried now because someone's asking who's on commentary with you. So that's either going to mean that I'm probably so, means that I'm annoying everyone. No, not at all, Jack. You're doing a fine job. So this is Jack Wicks. Uh, Jack's the secretary of Colchester Croquet Club. And uh, am I right in saying current treasurer's tankard? Oh, yeah. Massive, holder? massive, massive win that was last year. In um, last year, yeah. Yeah, I can talk about it. I just can't do it. <laughs> well, that's half the battle, isn't it? Although a lot of the players that can do it can't talk about it. Yeah. Now this might turn out to be a three jaws to TPO, and they're always fun. Uh, so he jaws to four back, and ends up with a rush peel where he cannoned his hoop six pounder away. Mm. Um, now he's jaws penult, played it as a straight stop shot to try and maximise the chance of the peel. Yeah. And he's the peel's good there, isn't Brilliant. it? This is fine now, isn't it? He'd be, he'd be be totally happy now yeah. apart from that he wants to get his other next peel on black so we're expecting that he's going to be picking two balls out absolutely yeah blacks you won't see the black clip on the hoop because at the start of the turn it was on one back but it's currently on his pocket because he's peeled it through one back so he, he wants to get another peel so we're expecting that that's going to be 
before Rover now. Well, I am. I don't know what you're expecting. Yeah, I think before Rover is a pretty good estimate of the likely time. Um, you can peel it after three back. So if you peel if you Rover going across, to three back yeah, and then okay. rush across, yeah. you can peel it going to. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say peel it going to the PLE. Peel it going to red, yeah. which he's peeling through four back and Alton Rover. Yeah, it's so all quite complicated. But uh, having said that, I even though you've said even though you've mentioned that, I would still say that I'm expecting it to be four Rover because that's quite. That's tough, isn't unlikely, it? Unlikely, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it looks like Tom's hit the lift against Alan. Rob's in play down on lawn one. Looks like he's approaching hoop four, doing something. Tom's just picked up the clip off of hoop one. And Matthew has just quite a nice position now for a, a delayed double, doesn't he? I mean, you'd expect him to be finishing now. You would. So this is not where you want your rush, Jack. You'd normally rush black to the north boundary. Yeah. He's just going to ignore red though, isn't he? And I think you're right. I think you have to ignore red yeah, now. But just carry on with your break. This means you're going to be peeling Rover straight. quite likely straight. Yeah. Well, I mean, will he fancy peeling it on the way to Penalt? He could set it up, couldn't he, and rush up to Penalt. It's dangerous, isn't it? But depends how much he's he wants another peel on partner. I mean, I wouldn't be. No, I think we're I quite likely be. to end up with a 1v2 back game now. Well, he's got an angle here by the look of it that he might be able to push black over towards Rover, come up north of red. He does want this rush peel, doesn't he? He's looking at it. Yeah, I suppose if it was a if it was just a normal TP or a TPA, you wouldn't be too worried, would you, really? It's not ideal, but you just carry on. But the fact that he wants the TPO and another peel, he... Yeah. Uh, part of the reason we're we're going on about this two back peel is if you don't get it, the opponent's probably going to make one and two and be in front of hoop three yeah. by the time you get in front of two back. I mean, I, I mean, this is just something that's just popped into my head. I wonder if there's a case for just peeling yellow through hoop one. No. 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 Um, I want that lead. I don't want them in front of hoop three when I'm in front of two back. Because I run two back and then I can't go anywhere. Well, would they though? Because they'd be in front of two, presumably, and then you'd go in front of two back. Yeah, okay, and then they'd run two, go to three. Yeah, so, yeah, it doesn't help, does it? No. So then they're likely to run three and four. Yeah. And then suddenly you're, you're on 5v3 back already and you're, you're only four points ahead. But he's got the break back. He's not perfect control now yeah this is a good control break you're rushing back up to red yeah after well, the I mean he could potentially rush this through couldn't he and, and rush it into a position where he can peel Rover going to three back uh, you're certainly trying to do that but the pegs in the way you've got to get the the pace correct it's not easy yeah, I mean you can't worry about the peg can you? you just you just hit it at the right pace and hope that you miss the peg and if you hit the peg then well it's in the way you know there's nothing there's nothing you can do to miss it so you just hit it at the right pace and hope that you sneak past it uh, Sylvia Schwartz admiring Robert's um, outfit uh, I think we should probably mention he's lost a bit of weight as well so he is looking really good I don't I, I, I believe you but I don't know Robert that well so I wouldn't be um, able to tell you if he has I certainly haven't lost weight I don't know about you but um, maybe so I should go on the diet he's on he's, um, he's looking great you're quite right Sylvia Someone said he's been going to the gym as well. So, Tim says, will Robert not TPO and peg his own ball out, leaving a one ball finish with a great lead? Yes, yeah, yes he will, but we're arguing that a seven hoop lead isn't a great lead. We've already seen Reg Bamford well, play be. Aston. It might be, mightn't it? It might be a great lead, but there's, there's a chance that it's not. Yeah, yeah. So, Reg v Aston, Reg had an eight hoop lead. And Aston missed a six-yarder after over to win plus yeah. one. I just wondered on that shot whether Aston maybe just should have stood back for a minute because I felt like he played the shot and uh, he played it thinking I'm just about to beat Reg, you know. I just wonder whether he could have just walked away sort of ten paces and come back. And what I said to Aston is, 
in a few years time you look back on that as a really good learning experience yeah and this looks like he's got a good angle here to hit does. this and miss the peg it so does if he yeah. gets the pace right he's got a chance of this peel oh it's, it's come out a bad angle it's a bit hard is isn't it, it too firm a little bit hard he might get, pe peelable might get it in the jaws i'm gonna have a go here but i feel like this is going the wrong way the pull's going the wrong way it, the pull is definitely going the wrong way jack yeah because <laughs> you're pulling right to left into the outside wire. So the other option is to roll it about six yards east, go to black, yeah. run the hoop and then rush yeah. red back in front and of the I like Rover. that, I have done that a few times, I quite like that. So that's what he's doing. more spectators now as well the uh, chairs, yeah. chairs are filling up aren't they has it, it is. been like this the whole time or no there's more people here yeah, today so okay. just milling around at lunch lots of people from random croquet clubs have turned up and it's just a shame it's not warmer or else more people would be out um, a few people sat up under and the veranda one of them Peter Rothwell is is here. He's been following the live coverage and he's actually come to Hailingham, but he's still listening to the commentary. And it's a bit like Test Match Special, isn't yeah, it? You it go is, and yeah. watch at the Test Match, and but you you've still, got your yeah. earphones in. Yeah, and the snooker they do it, don't they? Yeah. They have the commentary in their earpiece. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so moving Black uh, a little bit further north, I don't think he's going to stomp this as far as he would normally. No, so I think Red's quite far north, isn't it, for me? I think it's, I think it's too far north, but I mean, he likes it, doesn't he? He does he like running the hoops there, so. with a bit of vigour. I think I would have had it not as north as that, but if he gets his rush, he'll be happy. That looked like a, lot, a funny line, didn't it? But he's in front. So he wants to run this maybe about, what did you think, four yards? Mm. Further than that, anyway. Yeah, I, I, I'm struggling with the uh, north-south distances because it looks longer to me than that. But So you can try and cut this half ball in front of Rover and have a go at the peel. Or he could just tap it and put a good ball in front of Rover. Uh, wrong side. I can't I can't tell you what he tried to do there. Well, it was neither. it's a good pace, isn't it? He, if he'd have hit it on half ball on the other side, I think he, excuse me, he'd have been happy. You really think he's missed a... Uh, three yarder by half a ball. Well, you, I thought he might have deliberately rushed it here to give himself um, a nicer angle. Well, he might have done, but I doubt it. Well, I miss three yarders on the wrong side. Yeah, Robbie doesn't. <laughs> so that's yeah. Matthew Essex. Matthew 3-3-0. Three, three uh, it's a shame for Mark, he will be disappointed, but he's not feeling 100%, so... I been told there's a cold going around. I don't know if you've. Well, I saw a few people. A few coughing people in the gone clubhouse, down with the cold. But, yeah. Um, let's hope it's not the COVID. Um, yeah. Else Matthew might be regretting shaking hands with Mark after that yeah. match. Well, I'm sure Mark's washed his hand. He's quite hygienic. He's quite a clean, clean person, isn't he? So red isn't perfect. Is he going to go back after four back and tidy it up? No, I'm more wondering is if he's going to try and rush in front of uh, two back after oh, Pennock. No. You don't think he I is? I don't think he is. I think all the concentration is going to be on completing the yeah. TPO now. So he's going to be one one versus two back, which, yeah. uh, will he, I think from, I mean, I don't know, but I suspect he'll be disappointed. Yeah, I think he will. Although, to be fair, having he had some fun, didn't he, around eight five. so from that point he'll probably be happy, but from the, far, from the start of the turn I think he'll probably be a bit... Yeah, I'm happy. So this is a black that you wouldn't put there if you're going to go back to red. No, it's a good. It's just a good pioneer, isn't it? It should be level with the hoop, I think, if you're going to go back to red. Um, and reminding viewers, he got the one back peel before hoop one, didn't he? Yeah, so it's disappointing from that point of view, isn't it, that he's not managed to get any further along. I don't think you need to go to red, do you, really? 
Well, that's where he's got his rush to. Yeah. Is he going to take it? But then, like you say, why put black where it is? I mean... Because it was a deliberate choice, wasn't red, it? Red's, red's on the wrong side at the minute, so the peg's in play and hoop six is in play to get to black. If it if it stays on that side of the hoop, he could well move it across now to this side. I think he will. I think he will move it across to this side. Yeah. So yellow back up to peg on the eastern side and Roque red across onto the western side. Yeah. And and again, black is a good ball to just take off to. We're not taking off. We don't need a rush. I do. Well, ideally, but you don't need it. If you get, if you get, if you just get to it and make a roke, you're making the hoop, aren't you? I just want a bit more at this stage. I want a rush to penalt. Yeah, but you don't. You want it. I, I'm sure he'll be going for it. But if he doesn't get it, he'll be happy. You know, he's he's not in any danger of breaking down. That's a half roll for him, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So he'll be able to move red east and west after this shot, but he can't really move it north and south again. Yeah. So he has to get that north-south line right. And I'm interested to see how just how far west he goes here. Yeah. Fair way, isn't yeah, it? it? Is, isn't you need it? a thickish takeoff. That's move it what five six balls it's probably further than i thought he was going to move it but he he's just being safe isn't he, he definitely doesn't want the peg or the hoop in the way no so he's making sure that he's not got those any potential to have another crispy peg he's already had one in this game which i don't think you saw did you no i was, he was away taken from, off from corner four to his hoop two partner and crunched into the middle of it so he needs to play this well. Get red the right distance. Dead in straight, straight in front. Yeah, I mean, dare I say it, you're concentrating on red, aren't you? I mean, I know you're saying you want a rush. But I want both. Yeah. I'm greedy. You are greedy, yeah. But you are also good, so... Oh, this could hill, this could hill, this could hill, this could hill into the hoop. And that is that dead. That is an All dead. absolute disaster. Absolutely I mean, that dead. that wasn't even in play, was it? Um, so he's giving contact. I can't believe that was in from where he was. You as know. soon as he struck it, I thought it could hill into the hoop. I mean, it's why I'm I just... don't like where black was. Yeah, and yeah. black was deliberately placed there. I have it at the side of the hoop, and you can finish short of the hoop, and nothing should be able to go yeah, wrong. Yeah, I mean, we said, didn't we? Black's not good if you're going to rover, but to, I mean, that is. So he's trying to run hoop six and get lucky. Yeah, I don't know if it's in line, is it? Oh, he's got it. There we go. Well, he's got another another two strokes. So you were saying you were quite happy approaching Penalt from north of it. So you've got your wish, Jack. Yeah, well, I'm still approaching the heat. You're going to send this near the south boundary <laughs> and run it run it hard? Yeah. I, no, I'm looking I'm at sending this... Just play a normal approach, I think. Just, just you know... What is I a normal approach for Robbie? Yeah. Well... That's a good point because it's it is probably mallet, a stop shot, it? giving him a five-yard hoop and yeah. a ball twenty yards. Past I think, it. I think, I think. Although I'm not certain, the balls would end up if I played the approach. Hopefully, blue would be in front of Penal and black would be somewhere near over. But that is, that is a bad result if you then crunch through to the south boundary because you've then got a ten-yard back. Then you? Well, you can't hit red. Red has to no, get no. Peeled. I mean, if blue, if black goes to, so I'm saying, if I played this approach, black would probably go to somewhere near Rover. Ah, oh, okay, right. Robbie's playing but with he's his hands full roll. I mean, he's he's got a lot of space to run this into to be able to make a roke, hasn't he? That looks hard, doesn't it? It looks wrong line to me. That's the wrong line, and oh, this is yeah. about a thirty degree hoop. Oh. He's walked. Up. It was a good strength. I didn't think it was. A, I didn't think it was the right strength, but it absolutely is the right strength. It just didn't go down the right line. And is this a Keith was obsessed with uh, stroking ball through hoops? That's with ultras. Is that is that so this, with ultras? Or is this you bully? want to stroke it through. With Atkins, you can do either. You can either hit it dead straight at the middle. This is going to be hard. I've got a feeling this is going to be like max power. Oh, oh, that's, that's not bad. a good shot, was it? That's not going to go through any hoop. Hmm. So, so Jose really should 
be walking on the lawn and, and walking off as the winner of this game. He should, and we should say it quietly, just in case he's forgotten, but he has got a contact. Yes, I don't think he's within earshot, but he might be. I think he's over in the player's tent, which is about 15 yards away. I mean, I, I don't think Robert is going to win this event playing the way he is, is he? He needs to. He needs to play a lot he better needs to than play today. Better than he is. A lot better than today. Um, Certainly, if he wins this game tomorrow, I think he'll be giving himself a bit of a talking to. Yeah. So, recap. We've got yellow on one. Yeah. We've got red on Rover. I do hope that he uh, remembers his contact. There's a good chance that he just sees his one yard Roke. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it's possible. Takes it. And we've got blue on Penult and black on two back. He's, a, he's obviously not one of these people that turns his mallet up the other way when he gets a lift or a contact. That was the old school. The fact he's looked at blue is a good thing. Is that, or is he looking at playing a croquet stroke from blue to red? This mm. is astonishing. Well, he's not fingered it off, has he? So that might indicate that he's forgotten that there's a contact. Usually you'd expect to think a person, well, I don't know, maybe nowadays you wouldn't, but sometimes a player would put their finger up, wouldn't they, to indicate that they've remembered well, that they've got a lift or the, a contact. The, the one finger would be, I've not taking my lift but yeah. I've remembered it and the two fingers yeah. would be I know I've got a lift and a contact yeah or something else but <laughs> I've I've okay. I've remembered so he's not he's not put any fingers up but um, that doesn't mean that he he hasn't but I it's I mean, a massive error not taking contact from blue you sending it to hoop yeah. two and getting a rush on black to red it would be amazing wouldn't it if he if he had remembered and he didn't take contact then then that is a bad decision. If he's just forgotten, then uh, it's a bad rush to one. Unfortunate. Blue's now still on the boundary. Red isn't. Red isn't rush well to yeah. one, and black is nowhere near hoop two. And he's not getting a rush out of hoop one. So, um, yeah. I mean, he's. Well, let's get through hoop one, eh? Oh, that was a bad line. That's short. That was not down a good line, was it? So it's actually much straighter than it looks from here. He's gone past the hoop. It's only about 15 degrees, I think. Um, and yeah, should be okay. Oh, uh, it's just dear. straight into the wire. Um, well, this that is a criminal turn. It's astonishing, really. I He's going to go home tonight. He's going to look at the video and go, why on earth did I forget yeah. my contact? Yeah. Robbie's got a 13 yarder. Black at blue. Has he got any sort of is, target? He is 4 2 back, isn't he? He is. He gives everything so, away. Everything away. He'll be expecting result. to finish if he hits. Yeah, just watching that on the screen, that hoop shot was into the near wire, unfortunately. So I don't think there was. I don't think it would have mattered what hoop he was playing on, it wouldn't have gone through. Yeah, you can't write straight into the near wire. So, do you think this is a double? Or do you like just it. think it's the more defensive of the two shots? It's like it could be, doesn't it? I think it's two yards longer. I if think it was a gonna, double. He's going to hit it, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's got that. Oh, dear. For our yeah. friends in Spain, this must be painful and to watch. I think at this point, that is Jose. Uh, very unhappy now. I think after the first game, he he could have uh, he could have been potentially okay with what had happened. You know, he had chances, didn't he? But I think now he will be not happy. It's basically a four-ball break. Yeah, um, I, okay I, with two balls in the middle. I don't want to be the one that tell, tells him that he forgot his contact. I'll leave that to you. So, red will go to three back. He'll probably rush yellow through hoop one, won't he? Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't matter, should it? I'm expecting this to be a winning turn now. It's actually a little bit more difficult than we're making out. Sometimes we've said they're easy turns, and they yeah. were easy turns. It's going to be a straight but, double, but I, I'm expecting well, it. Well, I think Robbie's going to be hoping for a 
pelt peel before four back here. And he needs to get a rush on yellow over to near blue, maybe about four yards away from blue, so he can croquet a ball in lawn, rush blue south, and then load penult with blue before three back. And then he can peel penult before four back. So that's the plan, but he needs a rush out of two back over three or four yards away from blue. Do you think that, I can only think that that turn from Jose was almost as if he'd, um, you know, it was so unexpected that he got that chance that he almost wasn't ready for it and he just got excited. And it's, it's interesting you say that, but it was a two error turn, wasn't it? He got crosswired from his penult pioneer and I'd have been up out of my seat going, Oh, about Robbie, to, you're talking about. Yeah, Robbie yeah. did, and as Jose, I'd be going, oh, True. I'm about to have a turn yeah. and get ready for it. And then Robbie hits, so he sits down again. Yeah. But having made the second error, you've, you've already sort of prepared yourself, haven't you? Interesting, yeah. So Robbie's uh, rush peeled hoop one by f much further than he expected. Um, oh, and he's he now got now, a three and a half yard yeah. approach, making the rush to blue more difficult. He's almost got to play a role to approach yeah. this and get a rush. I mean, I think he's probably just thinking he's going to do a straight double. I know there's the opportunity for this peel to fall back, but... So, straight in front. Uh, yellow's too Ye deep, though, isn't Yellow's it? good, I think. Is it good, is it? Yeah, I, I think see. it's going to be OK. It doesn't look like it's going to rush to blue, but it might do. Certainly if it goes straight through, I think it's fine. If it wicks off okay. towards corner one, then yeah. it's going to be a big cut rush. Oh. One of the spectators moving out of the way. Yeah, it could easily sort of bounce over the barrier and hit you, so good idea to move. That has got a bit of a wick oh, towards that chap's corner got, one. That chap's got earphones um, on. I wonder if that's Peter sitting um, opposite there. Could, could easily be. He got hit by the ball. So this is now a big cut rush. But you can play a thick takeoff. You could simply put yellow into a skateboard position and thick takeoff blue to penult going to red. You don't need a rush. Yeah. Yeah, he's going for this rush, isn't it? It looks like he's going to try and hit this quite hard on the right-hand side. Cut it up. Cut it north. That's yeah. fine. That's quite a good shot, really, isn't it, from yeah. where he was? Yeah. So even if he doesn't get a rush on blue, and you'll he never, still you'll, thick take off. The, he's not got the angle here, has he, to get north of blue to rush it south again? Oh, he has. He has. He's just got to play a good shot. Yeah. I'm not sure he wants to risk going off the lawn. Well, has he got his... Uh, it looks like it might be one of his funny ratios, so to me, to do that. He might need one of his sort of roll shots. Maybe, maybe. No, I think... Yeah, you certainly don't want to go off there. So you're just settling for making a roquet and just... I am, I'm going to play a nice across. croquet stroke. Yeah. I mean... I suppose one thing that you you would say is red's on the wrong side of the hoop to do that in terms of getting crosswired from it. No, I don't think so. I think I'm going to play so wide the crosswire isn't in play. Yeah. Because it reds about level with it, isn't it? I, I don't think there's a big risk, is there? But I'm going to play a long way west. It's the sort of thing you've been saying all day. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that's a fair comment. A fair comment. If you played a really bad shot down an awful line, it, it could go wrong. It's not like the takeoff to Penult, where it was obviously always well, in play. Well, I mean, I didn't, I, I just didn't think it was in play. I thought really? he was just going to go a couple of yards west uh, of it, and it was going to be absolutely because he was west, wasn't he? I, I always tell people when you're playing north-south at Hurlingham, you get a lot more hill than when you're playing east-west. <laughs> yeah. So I'm always avoiding these north-south shots. So I think that's unclear whether he he was. I don't think he was trying to get a rush, was he? I think he was just. It's half-hearted. It, it was, wasn't it? I mean, his sort of his reaction kind of indicated that he wasn't happy with the shot, but it doesn't look like he tried very hard to get a rush. So,
So these are tricky. If you get it slightly wrong, the distance on both balls becomes affected. And it's quite easy to play too much into blue and leave black short, or not enough into blue and black goes long. I think this is what David Moore would refer to as a square split. It is, it is. Quite a tough shot. And he used to get quite defensive that he wasn't rushing the Pioneer out. He was rushing it to somewhere where he could play a square split. Ah. I never thought this was the easiest croquet stroke to play. I don't mind this croquet stroke. I think it, I think it's quite a nice croquet stroke. I mean, I think the one thing I'd be worried about is just the length on black, isn't it? Just, yeah. That's the only thing that I'm worried about, really. I'm happy with the angle. Fairly happy with blue. So blue's short, mm. and black is good. Yeah. He'll be happy with that, I think. I think that's good. He should get a rush out of three back from there. I think he's under control. You can say that the outcome of that stroke is that the rest of the break should be under control. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'd argue yellow's a bit too far north. We'd throw it two yards further it is, south. It isn't it? And he didn't, it didn't need to be there, did it? It didn't. From where he put it out. No. Oh. I don't know. I wonder whether he's just... Um, yeah, he just doesn't seem to be quite in tune, does he, with his um, with his ratios? And but I think if he finishes this turn, there's a good chance that um, he'll be back. Yeah, good control that. He's got a rush on red. Yeah, up to blue. And you want to leave um, red a little bit south of Penalt. Yeah, I mean. Yellow, you could potentially rush blue a bit past the hoop, couldn't you, to the to the western side and sort of play a little takeoff to yellow. Or you could play it two and a half yards straight and play a stop shot and hit a three yard rush to four back. Yeah. Uh, and are you thinking the outcome of that will be a peel, or are you thinking it'll be the jaws? Jaws is yeah, more I likely. Yeah, I think it's jaws more likely, isn't it? But I think I think jaws is the most likely outcome now, isn't it? Even jaws you... is a good result, though. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think he's gone for what I said and rushing it, trying to rush it past the hoop and just sort of nidge it into the jaws while taking off to yellow. Yeah. He's got an angle. That's pretty good, I think, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to aim this up almost into the right hand wire, don't you? Do you think, yeah. I don't. I never know on takeoffs. You've got a good line. Is this a takeoff or a split? I'm not sure. This is a thick takeoff. Thick takeoff. Yeah. I always thought they didn't takeoffs didn't pull as much, but thicker ones can. Yeah. Okay. But the thin one doesn't go very much right. at all. Uh, the thin one, the peely won't reach the hoop with a thin one. No, you don't. You don't. You definitely want blue to reach the hoop, don't you? Because there's a good chance at the speed that it's going at that it will just sort of nestle and find the jaws, isn't there? Yeah. I think that's yeah. a... We should also note that the hill is, as we look at it, right to left. So as the ball's yeah. going to the hoop, it's going to but hill left is as well. It, is, are we on the hill anymore? Yeah, I think, we, think we've seen are. that there is a tiny yeah. bit still there. Maybe not as okay. much as yesterday. I don't know if he'll be taking that into account. I think he should be. Okay. Yeah. That's the jaws. That's good. It's a lovely it? rush to and, fall and back. Red's good now, isn't it? And I play for an Irish yeah. peel here. I yeah. don't rush peel before penalt. I go to red yeah. first. I nudge blue into the middle of the hoop. Well, I, that's what I was going to say. If you can get blue right into the middle, then it's, it's a good idea, isn't it? Make sure you don't put yellow in the way of uh, blue to rover. Yep. I'm sure he will have at some point made all these mistakes, so he knows what not to do. Uh, Robbie's always been very good from the first time he appeared, well, like, talking to all the top players yes. and soaking up. People have probably everything. told him what not to do as well. <laughs> um, he's very good tactically. Yeah. Um, 
Well, he's not. I mean, he's got loads of experience. I don't know how many ranking games he's played, do you? But he's he's been playing years and years and years, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's very experienced now. Played in his first at Robertson, I would guess, in 2010. Yeah. Um, so that's what, got one, two, on three, somewhere. four Robertson Shields he's played in, which is quite a lot. Um, so just got to make sure you don't put yellow on the line of sending blue to Rover. Oh, blimey, he's got a lot more games than I thought he might have. Nearly 1,400. 1,400 and he's won 1,167. 85% career winnings. Win rate, 782 now, triples. That yellow, it might be in the way, mightn't it? Yeah, it's too narrow, that for me. That could be in the way. Um, yeah, I mean, why why has it gone down that line? Is that just a mistake or does it, has he aimed it? I mean, I, I don't know why you'd put it there and not sort of another yard or two to the side what's the benefit know. of having it where it is no I don't know and I don't know why you'd rush red so far away from blue yeah, it only I mean, needs to be a foot away yeah, from you blue yeah you want to be tight don't you well yeah well is he is he wanting to try and get a forward rush once he's done this Irish peel surely maybe? not you want a side ball surely just in case you grovel through the hoop really I don't think you need you a side like ball that. well what, not, I don't like it I don't think it's necessary it's what he's doing though so he'd always put red on the same side as um, yellow and it's a side ball so it's good I think he's a little bit further away from blue than I'd yeah. like to be it's easy though isn't it it's... you don't want to rush peel this you want to just no, I've got nudge no, it into the jaw. no concerns about this shot lovely nice camera work as well so now you can line it up to miss the peg on the right hand side. Yeah. Probably by one ball. Possibly by two, given the fact he's seen the hill goes east on his takeoff that got crosswired. So he might give himself a ball and a half, two balls of leeway on the right hand side of the peg. Yeah. And you're just playing it with a straight croquet stroke, straight stop shot, and all your focus is on the length of blue. Yeah, it's all about blue, isn't it, this shot? That looks good to me. He'll be happy, won't he, with that? Yeah, that's okay. It's probably about as good a line as he could have sent it down. Maybe five feet away from the hoop. So, straight rover peel coming up. And red is always a deep ball here. Uh, I'm not sure it is. No. I might put a short straight ball out here and say I'm definitely Irishing. Blue's close enough that I can think I'm definitely Irishing here. Okay. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with a deep ball either. He's got a roll, so he looks like he's doing... That's a short straight ball. More something like what you said. But Not as straight as I would like it. His rush isn't pointing at blue either. I'm sure it'll be fine. But... Maybe that was just a under hit deep ball. Yeah. Well, I think, I think players do kind of get a bit obsessed with Irish peels. And I, I think people are playing Irish peels when they shouldn't be, maybe. But... Oh, now, I do like an Irish peel with Dawson balls. This is uh, interesting. Can, can he get a side ball out? Can he get a proper side ball out? Well, it's going to be seven yards away if he can. Um, He's mean, going to be nicely on top of the blue. That is my number one priority. We need and the camera from uh, corner one, really, and we might be able to see a bit better. Oh, there we go. So that's yeah. fine. He can easily get past the blue and put a side ball out and he should be able to rush to 18 inches straight it's not going to be a close side ball it's going to be good enough yeah well I was uh, thinking that blue was impeding yellow a lot more than that but obviously it wasn't so just all about pace okay. 
That's good. He'll be arishing that, I think. Uh. So he got away with that, didn't he? If he finishes. Well, I mean, it should be 2 0 Jose. Yeah. That would be quite a different match. Tom's had quite a lot of play on lawn two. I think he hit the lift and went round. I think Alan's missed his lift. So potentially Tom on a match winning turn. Logan's on the lawn on lawn one, but I've no idea what he's doing. I think Logan hit the lift. Okay. And he's now finishing his break. Well, do refer to uh, Andrew Gregory's text commentary as well. He's doing that for the other lawns. So the Irish peel went through cleanly. Part striker's ball stopped in the jaws, and he can just tap it through. And we're okay this side ball, the yellow. No need to cannon blue. You can just take off to red, rush it behind blue, and get a dolly rush to the peg. Yeah, that all ended up being a lot easier than I thought it was going to be where he rushed yellow to. I thought he'd got himself into a bit of a palaver, but he hadn't. A number one seed here going to take a 2 0 lead. It's tough now for Jose, isn't it? Oh, he's not played well, God. has he? No. And he's 2 0 down. And he's he said to me he was going out to enjoy it, but I've got a sneaky suspicion that he's probably not enjoying it at the minute. And looking back on this event, I don't think Robert Fletcher has dropped a game. And for those people remembering when he last won the Worlds in uh, England, he didn't drop a game throughout that event so far. This time, he's been enormously lucky. Today, I yeah. mean, looking at those results, the previous couple of days he's had five wins and five TP. So, he, you know, he's obviously been on form, but today, for some reason, something's just... He's gone off the boil. But it's the time to do it, isn't it, if your opponent's not playing well? Yep, yep. And a good rush to the peg. Um, so it's going to be a 2 0 lead for our number one seed. Oh. And we'll take a little break from commentary and I'll go and try and find uh, some old Just before you disappear, somebody's yeah? asking about the, uh, the hoop stripes. I can't answer that question, but maybe you can. So Dusan Terse is asking about following through into the hoop and, and fundamentally it's okay to follow through. The ball has normally disappeared from the hoop by the time the mallet hits the hoop so there isn't a fault. Um, and it's just, it's just to have a nice smooth follow through. Uh, obviously if you're playing an angled hoop you would need to get a referee to watch it if you're intending to follow through um, or if it was just a potentially hampered shot anyway. Um, it's more if it's angled, isn't it? If, it? if you've got an angled shot, you follow through. You might, you might, your mallet might follow through and hit the striker's ball if it, yeah, if it stays in the jaws, perhaps. If you're very close to a hoop, I would always play those angled ones with a stop shot. Stop shot, yeah. Um, but lots of people, I think David Morm is a good example of, he often follows through uh, into the middle of the crown with the mallet shaft yes. as a deliberate technique of running hoops. Right. Um, but it's not a fault because sort of the ball's all got, the ball's gone, gone through the hoop. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm we'll just gonna head off for up, five minutes. Start of the third game, hopefully shortly.
Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Great note, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Played well today. Yeah. Shooting well. Yeah. That's crucial. That's the biggest thing. Crucial. On these conditions and these lawns. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're just waiting for the third game to start. Robert Fletcher versus Jose Riva. Robert Fletcher made mistakes um, in that previous game, but didn't get punished for them. So he maintains his perfect record of winning every game in World Championships in Britain, um, having won his First one in 2013, with 23 consecutive games that he won. And here he's uh, added to that with his nine block games, followed by his knockout event so far. I really thought he was about to lose that when uh, he'd made a mistake at Penalt and um, Jose had the balls. But of course, it can be very, very difficult when you've been lacking play and then you get an unexpected opportunity to suddenly get the pace of the lawns and uh, be able to rush to your hoop and, and make it with confidence and, and feel like, right, now's the time to win. Um, yeah. It can be quite a thing, right? It can. It can. I, I think the, um, the biggest thing for Jose is, you know, he had a chance to hit the tea lady. Um, Robert had a lot of play. Um, and you just don't expect errors from Robert Fletcher. And so to kind of be thrown out there and expected to, you know, have a, a game-winning turn and um, level the match out, it's definitely a lot of pressure. Um, but obviously I'm sure he's kicking himself right now. Um, but you got to move on and get to game three. He's very experienced, so I think he'll be good at putting that behind him. So we've got a super shot ball coming out, as we would expect from Jose, often referred to as Pepe. I think yep. he prefers to be called Pepe. That's right. Now, where do you, where do you like your super shot ball to be, Pete? Um, for me, that's a little bit too far um, north. Yeah, it's a bit further than Fulford has been put in his. It, I think it depends a little bit who you're playing and how well we think they're shooting. Absolutely. Um, there can be different reasons for playing super shot balls. I mean, these guys are super shots, and so it's not a case of wanting a ball that's easy for after they've they've missed third turn and hoping the opponent misses fourth turn. This is uh, this is very much about wanting to have an opportunity to go round. That's right. In the third turn, so yeah, these this is exactly what Matt was just saying: is that now that red looks a bit long. That's right. Because now he's got a long ball to hit if he's going to have any chance. Um, and, this, and this is the response you'd expect from a, a super shot that far north. Um, yeah. Just just to give Jose a soft shot at something that's, you know, 14, 15 yards away and um, most likely going to give away a double um, with whatever line of, line, of, line of play it takes. Have you had an appetite from the other uh, we, we haven't. Yeah. Wixie's going to go and get us an update from the other lawns shortly. So, against most players, I think um, Jose could afford to just join with these balls in the middle of the lawn, but Robert Fletcher is a, a different animal. That's um, right. <laughs> you really wouldn't be wanting to give him this shot <laughs> for free. No. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you expect nothing but a hit. Um, the question for Robert is, is it going to be center ball or not? Um, he, he's, he just hits absolutely everything. Um, 
he, like like you said earlier, he's had a couple of errors, um, but from what I've seen, um, even while I was playing, he's still shooting lights out. Um, so even though the unexpected errors have happened, the, the shooting is still um, superb. Yeah. I had an enjoyable uh, sit down the night before last watching Robert Fletcher and Reg Bamford on adjacent lawns practicing at Surbiton. And they were both taking 13 yarders. Uh, Fletcher was shooting at balls and Reg was shooting at the peg. Um, Reg was using his swing machine and that seemed to improve him a lot. Oh, yeah, it's a great beautiful, shot. right in the middle. Great shot. Um, that would have nearly reached hoop six, I guess, if he'd have missed that shot. Yes. So yes. That, it would have been leaving a perfect double. It's almost no point in going that gently if he's going to leave a double, I'd have thought. That's right. Just go but, for it. Um, yeah. um, but obviously he's played it really well. Yeah. Now he's been a bit unfortunate, I think, to leave that ball right by the peg. Agreed. It's. I think he'll get away with it here, just moving it off the peg um, while maintaining his rush on blue. But um, you know, it very well easily could have gone just south, just north, and, and been no problem at all. So I think he'll manage um, with the issue, but it is a little bit unlucky. Yeah. And means so he can't get it any closer to two, of course, on that straight. That's right. So yeah, I was surprised by uh, Fletcher's shooting in the practice. He seemed to be hitting only about 50% uh, of his 13 yarders. But I've noticed that when he's actually playing matches, he takes his time just a little bit more yep. and seems to have a much higher hit rate. Um, I think it's very unusual for a top player to not practice in the way that they actually play in matches, um, from what I've seen previously. Yeah, um, you know, speaking on myself, I, I definitely go a little bit faster um, in practice than I do um, in a match. but. I think in practice you're really just trying to get a groove swing. Um, I think a lot of players focus on results, um, and obviously the results are important, but in, in the grand scheme of things, as long as the, the swing feels good and you know what's happening, um, you can feel contact and, and realize what's off, then um, the results aren't always you know, as cut and dry as they may seem. Um, mm. I've had bad shooting days that... Oh, that's a shame. Wow. It's not going to be happy, That's is surprising. It? Mm. It's not if you've seen the first few games, the first couple of games, unfortunately. Uh -oh. It is the kind of thing that's been happening. He's been having a bit of hoop trouble, has he? Mm. Okay. Yeah, so I just went down, so Rob has hit the lift uh, in the third game. So we're just getting an update from Wixie here, so he's talking about Robert Fulford. Yes, yeah, Rob Fulford yeah. has hit the lift, and uh, so he's potentially got a go match winning turn Okay. for two and four back. And Thomas is on a, a, TP, uh, a TP, again, a match-winning turn. And he's, I think he's done the full-back peel and he's now approaching free-back. Okay. So they could both be 3-0 in the next 20 minutes or so. Okay, so we're expecting a nice, uh, well... Could just be a four ball break from Robert here. Um, would you expect any pops, Matt? I doubt it. Um, you know, 2 0 up. Um, you know, your opponent's had very little play. I think with a, a, a shot with the match on the line is, is enough here. Um, I, I really doubt it. Could be wrong, um, but I, I expect just a ball to, to four back here. You think he'll just be thinking about this win, or will he be thinking at all about practice for his coming matches mm. if he if he wins this? That's a great question. Um, I think he'll be considered um, considering just focusing on the win. Um, right. You know, like you'd mentioned before, he um, he's won every match so far, and I think he's had plenty of time to to get a feel for um, whatever he might do later on in the tournament. Mm. Um, at this point, it's just trying to finish this off and get on to the next day. So I think that was an interesting little rush on red there. He didn't look at all disappointed with it. A lot of players would have tried to rush that a bit further so they could stop it closer to two while still getting their rush to one. 
he looked very comfortable with just rushing it to there and having a perfect rush to one, arguably on the basis that having made that hoop, he knows he's got the balls, he's got the feel of the lawn again for, for starting this turn and um, I guess he's very confident that he'll make hoop two by rushing yellow to hoop two. So different styles for different players. That's right. I think you could argue it both ways, to be honest, because he's not, he's not played well for Robert Fletcher in this match. So you could argue, OK, go to four back, let the opponent miss and just crunch off a TP and say you're playing well. Or you could argue, actually, I'm going to try and do a sex duple to really get myself back in. Might need to do a sex duple tomorrow. That's fair. Um, I, I think the biggest thing... Um, that was a bit unlucky. Um, I think the biggest thing is on these hoops um, and being the first day that we've had a chance to use the quadways, um, mm. I think the biggest thing is just getting really comfortable. Like, you know, finishing a turn, no matter what that turn yeah. is, whether it's a, a standard TP or um, a delayed TP or even if he did try a sextuple. I think that um, if you do try a sextuple and you fail and Jose gets a chance to get in, gets a little bit of momentum, then things could change very well, quickly. I'm going to say this, and I hope that I don't regret it, but from what we've seen, I don't think he's going to need to do a sextuple in this match to win it. Agreed. Uh, but it might he might want to as preparation for tomorrow. Yeah. Or, like you say, he might just think, right, I want to win 3-0, get off the court, get home, forget today happened, and come back and play well tomorrow. Absolutely. Pete, do you think he... Um, the thing you mentioned earlier about the fact that he's now... Um, 23 consecutive wins in 2013 and, mm -hmm. and now um, however many wins consecutive in this tournament. Um, do you think he has any of that uh, as a thought right now as far as just keeping the winning streak alive or is it all about preparation for the next match? I, th I think he's aware of that record. Yep. Uh, in fact, I joked with him about it the other day. Um, when he just won his first three block games and I said 20 to go yep. and he laughed. Um, is that, a, is um, that a, a record? Oh, it must be, surely. Right, OK. Yeah, no one else has ever won a Worlds without dropping a game. Oh, sorry, so, I thought you meant winning ranking games. No, no, so we're talking about the right. fact that he's won all his games in the Worlds in well, the UK. I think Chris earlier so, said that he, the last world he won, he didn't drop a game. That's right, the 23, that's right. 23 okay. consecutive games right. then, and, and he hasn't dropped one yet this game, at okay. uh, this Worlds, rather. Um, so, would it be in his mind? Not particularly. No, I don't think it will affect his tactics. If anything, if he reflects on it, it would just give him confidence, I think. Absolutely. Um, I can't imagine he'd even be thinking about it while he's on the lawn. He might think about it when he comes off and go, oh, that's cool. But when he's on the lawn, I don't think it would even be something that he considered. No, I, don't, I don't think he's thinking about it on the lawn. I'm just questioning, really, if if his tactics, you know, whether to do a sex duple or a oh, standard TP yeah. is based on the fact that, no. OK, maybe I, mean, I want to make sure that I win this game and, and win 3-0 and just get on, get on with the day. Hmm. So well, he certainly might just want to win 3 0 and get on with it because, uh, you know, as I say, it's not been the Robert Fletcher that we expected. Uh, but I don't think it would be anything to do with uh, a 23 game winning streak. No, that's fair. Yeah, I personally am not expecting him to set up for a sex two player. I imagine this would be a ball round, but. I thought he might try a pop or two. Um, and have we seen him try a sextuple this tournament? I, I believe all I've seen is um, him set the tea lady. Um, Sets so the tea lady for TPOs. That's right. Yeah, yeah. to have two balls. I off. mean, we were, did you see? Did you catch any of the last game? I caught some, some of, of it, it, but not, we but not quite, a lot. I mean, me and Chris were quite surprised that the he turned down the sextuple very early. Um, he he got the one back peel um, before hoop one, uh, ran hoop one to a position where he could then hit partner up. and we was just expecting that he was going to roll it in front of two back, you know, and get his get his break going. And uh, and now actually even at that point he just decided that he was going to pump, try and pump red over to the middle of the lawn and set up for the TPO. So even in that 
in that instance, he wasn't particularly interested in the sex, sex duple, even though he got appealed before he won. Yeah, I think that's pretty much staying in character with what he's done so far this tournament. Um, you know, he's going for as many appeals as he can on on on, um, on partner, and at the same time, really focusing on finishing the TPO and then taking two balls off the lawn. Um, the more appeals he can get, the the more of an advantage he has in that one ball game. Um, but if you do a six two four, you know your opponent doesn't get any more shots. I absolutely agree with you. Um, I think it's just the the added risk that. Um, yeah. You're putting yourself under by trying a sex tuple. Well, he's obviously got the pace of this lawn very nicely. Um, I was interested as he approached hoop two that he sent the ball reasonably deep there, and considering that north of hoop two it's very brown, very quick, and slopes off a bit. I, um, I'd have been feeling quite nervous yep. <laughs> sending the ball. Where he sent it there, but he his, just looked from fairly today. Confident. That is his preferred way to approach hoops. Right. There's been quite a few where you just think, oh, he's just going to, you know, approach it and put the ball the other side of the hoop. But he he does tend to pump them sort of eight or nine yards down the field, even on the odd number hoops. Hmm. I mean, he, in the last game, he approached hoop five, and the uh, reception ball ended up at hoop six. Right. Looks like no pops, or not unless he's going to rush uh, yellow across, which would be unlikely because he's left the balls to the east of five. He'd be putting things to the to the west if he was considering any uh, quick attempts at pops. So, anyone that's wanting to focus on a four ball break, this is uh, a nice example, very under control. Nothing difficult. It looks like something that anyone in the world could do. Of course, yep. that's not true. But <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the strokes, they all look easy because he's keeping everything nice and tight, that's close right. together. I think for the people that are trying to improve on their four ball breaks, it's, it's great to watch somebody like Robert where you see the striker ball move very little. Yeah. Um, the striker ball is hardly moving anywhere. Um, that's due to his extremely um, good rushing capabilities. Um, and you know he's running hoops to controlled positions where the, he then maintains rushes to where they need to be. Absolutely. And with the striker's ball moving so little distance, and that meaning that uh, it, it can't go far off where he wants, a lot of people uh, say that you should play rushes and stop shots because if you're attempting to just play rushes and stop shots, then if you rush slightly too close to your target position after the croquet stroke, then you haven't got room to play it. So actually the top players don't use extreme stop shots all the time. They tend to play uh, more, more like drive strokes, um, gentle drives a lot of the time. Well, apart from Robert, who loves to play a stop shot, <laughs> it's weird, quite a few times me and Chris have been saying, God, he's got to play a stop shot now, and then and then it suddenly occurred to us. Well, actually, maybe he's just rushing to a place where he wants to play a stop shot from, because that's what he wants to do. Well, I don't but know if you I guys don't know if you're up to speed on his mallet, are you? It's uh, that, stop shot on orientated. It's it's it, built as a stop shot machine. It it certainly produces very good stop shots. Yeah, that's you know I had a conversation with him about it. Um, looks like Tom Balding yeah. has taken uh, uh, game three. three. Um, he's on to the semi three no. Um, so, obviously I'm biased, but that's two Americans uh, moving on, so um, really happy to see that. Um, but with what I was mentioning before, you know, I got a chance to talk to Robert about this mallet, and he actually was able to go down in weight um, from what his standard mallet weight is. And he still has the ability to play the pass rolls he wants to play or the, the long full rolls or Hogan rolls that he might need. Um, but he's able now to produce a stop shot that's 1 to 12, 1 to 13, which is just remarkable. Wow. Um, and, you know, he was mentioning that to us on the sideline, and we then watched him run a, run a break, and um, you can clearly see that the stop shot is just remarkable. And he wanted to do this um, trying to get ratios that benefit you for a sextuple. Um, right. Now, like we talked about earlier, I don't think he's pushed for that tactic in this tournament as much, but... Um, 
moving forward, I think that's something he's looking looking to try to accomplish. Is it quite lightweight then? It's my lap. I think it's two pounds eight ounces. Right. Um, yeah. And which I think he was two twelve prior to that, two pounds twelve ounces. Yeah. Um, so he was able to cut off four ounces and and still maintain all the shots that he wanted to maintain. So, mm. um, it's really interesting, and um, I haven't got a chance to hit with one yet, but um, it's definitely intriguing. Well, apparently so, he's becoming a manufacturer. So if you want one, anybody, you, <laughs> apparently there's going to be a chance to buy one at some point in the future. That's right. right. Yeah, I think if he is a mallet that light, you have to be fairly powerful. And I know that he goes to the gym quite a bit. You can see the muscles hanging off him. Um, so yeah, that's, that's interesting that a lighter weight mallet might give you better options if you're very strong. I don't know if it's strong. deceiving as well, but it seems quite a short head. I don't know how long it is, but is it just... Is it, it, the normal standard seems to be about 11 inches now, doesn't it? So yeah, it looks... It, it looks short, but it, it looks like just, a 10 inch to me. Yeah, it might just um, be deceptive, yeah. But mm. it very well could be 11, I'm not exactly sure. Um, it's definitely got an interesting shape to it. Um, with the holes in a, in a circular mallet, you just don't see that very often. Of course, I tend to be fractionally biased when it comes to mallets, because <laughs> seven out of eight of the players uh, yeah. today in the main event have, yeah, have brother, got my brother's mallets. He so. popped his head round earlier, and I said, how many? And he said seven. It's, um, it's definitely Only the best mallet I've ever used, yeah. no question. My so, brother's? Yes. Right. Um, nice to hear. You know, the, the main reason that I like it is um, with starting to play a lot more GC, the, the pop you get on jump shots is, um, I don't think there's any, a mallet that comes even close. Um, I don't know what makes it that way. Um, maybe your brother could enlighten us a little bit, but it's it really is incredible. Um, the distance that I was able to gain on jump shot capability just from switching mallets. Wow. Um, and so, you know. That's interesting. I, I think I went from somewhere around 10 yards as 10 to 12 yards is a, a, a possibility and now it's somewhere around 18 to 20 yards wow um and so it's almost doubled just from the, the change of the mount um now obviously the accuracy from that distance is very difficult but just the the possibility is is remarkable so in britain we call this uh an msl because Dave Morm used it a lot, rather than an NSL for a new standard leave, an MSL with a Morm standard leave, uh, where he's leaving this ball here on two, he's going to end up leaving yellow um, at hoop four, and his own ball's off the east boundary. Um, so I'm just wondering whether it's worth talking the viewers through the exact position he would have aimed to have got red on that stroke. Um. Yeah, so um, really what you're going for with a with an MSL um, for the mom standard leave is a position against that left wire. Um, some people actually put it in the jaws, um, but I think D David Mom would even tell you against the left wire is ideal just because it's not rushable to one. Um, and a lot of times when people take the, the long lift from Bebok and they hit in, they don't get a rush to hoop one. And a lot of times they're able to rush down to hoop two load hoop two with a pioneer and rush the hoop two ball up to hoop one and this leave gives you, gives you the benefit that if they do hit in and are unable to get a rush to hoop one it's very difficult to rush the hoop two ball to hoop one now you can see from where this ball is at it's it's not easy to rush to hoop one um, but you can get it fairly close um, and I think against the wire prevents any rush to hoop one at all yeah so I agree with that, and often he will leave his own ball so that he has a rush to hoop one on his partner ball. Um, but also, just as a f tiny piece of finesse, it's nice also if Red is able to shoot into corner four, because that way, um, even though it doesn't rush to hoop one, because that way if you were to fail hoop one off your partner ball, then Red won't get a lift if they've, taken the, if they've lifted yellow and taken the long shot down into corner four. So um, there's a sort of fairly exact position where Red won't rush to one, but it will be able to hit corner four. That's really interesting. Place to aim for. Lee's not in a great spot now, is it, for this leave? 
No, and the it's yellow okay, looks like it's a, a, a little it short. Sure. Yeah, I think uh, there's sand and yellow out there that I would be least happy with so far since it's made one back. Yeah. Um, they, that really was short. And, and the ideal position to be approaching three back is, of course, from the other side of yeah, the hoop. It's on the it's from, side, isn't it, really? Yeah, you, you really want to be approaching this from the east to just drop yellow into the right place, whereas now he looks like he's having to push it beyond beyond the hoop uh, to then rush it back after the hoop, I think. Yeah. But, Ben Robert Fletcher, I would uh, imagine that he will be fine. He's got great touch. It's a great shot. Yeah, that's exactly where he'd want it. Just got a little replay there of that stroke. Where's that oh, gone? I think that's, that's gone, gone, isn't it? It's gone further than he wanted. It's still possible, isn't it? He just needs to nudge it across. Yeah, I'd still expect him to land this. Well, that's, His that's reaction all... was quite extreme. Yeah, it's just gone further than he'd like, and uh, you know, to be this good, you have to have a, a level of perfectionism in you, I think. It's um, a bit like he's going to get a rush to the east boundary now, though. No, it, he'll be able to roll, roll blue over. It'll just mean that things are a couple of feet closer than he'd have liked, potentially for the short shot. And I don't think he's moved yellow quite as far as he wanted to on that stroke. Is it visible? Oh, wow. So oh, wow. He's our angle here that we're looking at now can show that yellow is very visible. Yeah, yeah he's moved it. He's actually moved it too far. That's, my eyes are, have deceived me. Um, so it's going to be interesting what, what he decides to do here with, um, with his two balls, knowing that Jose has a 8-9 yarder from... Um, from the end of a ball. Oh yeah, mm. Blimey, that's... Yeah, what would you do with uh, blue and black now, Matt? Um, this is interesting. Mm. Um, looks like he's going down to corner two. I'll be completely honest with you. Um, I think I would do something similar to what he's done. I'd come over to the west boundary. Um, the question is, where does he put these balls? Mm. Um, yeah. You know, this is a pretty pretty tricky corner here. And let's assume Jose does hit. Um, lifts red, hits yellow. You want it to be as difficult as possible to get something going. But at the same time, if he misses, you want to have the ability to still somehow either maintain a, the ability to get a leave or even build something from it. So I assume that he thinks Jose's going to hit and he's going to set a very defensive leave. Um, but at the same time, you really don't know. Well, he's certainly having to think. <laughs> and has he come over here because yellow is just open? I mean, is, is he, he just didn't have anywhere to go? Is that basically what's happened? I, I think that's the case. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a wide separation with these two balls. Um, the question is, where do you go, though? Um, you don't want to give Red a, a shot at the corner ball if he puts a ball in the corner. Um, and you really don't want two balls on the west boundary here, either. Well, I think he's looking at potential of uh, going into corner four. So he leaving could... blue on the west boundary and going to corner four? I mean, it, to be honest, it wouldn't even surprise me if he took off from blue into yellow. Um, to just try and move it. <laughs> wow. I mean, he's you know he's given a ton yarder. He hasn't got much to lose by playing that takeoff. Right? That's true. Um, but yeah, he certainly doesn't want to be giving Red an even shorter shot. But That's right. <laughs> leaving the balls. But if he did play that takeoff and missed yellow, then, you know, it's tricky. Disappointing position, though, isn't it? I mean, 
mean, he had a, very he had disappointing. A break, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. You know, he'd be yeah. disappointed with where he's ended up. Yeah, this is not what we've come to expect from the uh, world number one. I think we've mentioned it a few times, you know, no, no danger of breaking down, but he just didn't have the control to produce the leave that is required. Well, I think you mentioned it um, earlier, Jack, he had tons of control until the um, the shot sending blue uh, yeah. over after two back, yeah. and then the rush on yellow at three back. Yeah, Both so those shots were pretty poor. Pioneer, maybe that's what caused it, you know, yeah. he just didn't get his three back pioneer where he wanted it, and uh, it was maybe three or four yards short. It's caused this. Well, it looks like he's going to be leaving he, blue on the boundary right here. It looks almost like he's lining this up at red yeah, for some reason. It I does. can't quite understand what's. Of course, he hasn't had red yet. So. Strange. Can he create something that I can't see what he can do by hitting do red here? here. No. Just I mean, he can rush red down towards yellow. But what would that achieve? He He's going to end up in bulk, isn't he? Rush it off the lawn. What is this? I think this is going to turn into an extremely defensive leave. Don't see how it can be. I think, uh, you'll, see, I think you'll see red left on the right where it's at. Yeah. And black in corner four. Maybe red a little bit further down the line. I mean, I think leaving black in corner four leaves yellow an even shorter shot doesn't it than red would have had a yellow i think he's and accepted the, the fact that red is going to hit yellow yeah red and yellow is the shortest shot isn't it that's right and so even if he gives a shorter shot as long as there's no build um and it yeah. just turns into a leave i think he's okay with that i mean yeah. he, he might be thinking if red hits yellow off the boundary jose's got a take off to play to corner two um if he joins up so he's got a the interesting thing here is black in corner four, um, you know, if, if I'm playing red and yellow, I think I'm taking red and instead of shooting at yellow, I'm shooting at black. Um, I, I think he's going to join up. Well, he's moving red out into the lawn now, it looks like. He wouldn't be doing that unless he was coming back to blue, surely. I'm officially confused. Well, I think <laughs> I think what he's thinking is if the red hits yellow, it's going to be off the east boundary. And Jose has then got a take off to black and blue, which are in corner two, to get anything happening. Okay, so it's just sent that in a couple of yards. And now, is he going to yeah, shoot? Presu presumably blue, shooting yeah. back off the boundary, is he? Not at blue. That's what he's looking at. Did he move? Is blue on the line still, or did he move? He didn't move. He's left he? blue on the line. On the line. Yeah. So he can go north of it and get a rush to eat one. But by going north of it, he wants to leave a rush for blue, right? Yeah. So, so sorry, I'm in south. That's because I'm sitting yeah. the wrong way. <laughs> but it looks yeah. like he's going. South. He looks like he's going into the corner. He's going. So he's going north. Yeah. No, he's not got a rush. Oh, and he's, just, he's just out of the corner. On the north boundary. Well, that was an interesting response to having misplaced yellow, right? I, no, I wouldn't have predicted this as a leave no. after he'd mis misplaced yellow. This is new to me, a novel outcome. I really don't necessarily um, like corner two um, with both no. balls here. I think we can all agree, regardless of what happens, it should be expected that, that Jose's going to have a pretty good chance to hit yellow from the end of A ball. What um, I, yeah, exactly. And then a, a takeoff, this, this allows yeah. him to have a build. But corner two is Corner two is tricky, deadly. Isn't it? You've yeah. seen it, Pete. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've had a disaster there. Yeah, yeah. and that is the That's corner the only to thing be in. I can think that yeah. he's thinking that yeah. Jose's got a takeoff to play. It's gone a bit brown. He might under hit himself and leave a seven yarder. He might over hit it and go off the lawn. That's true. And even if he hits black, you know, although he's at hoop two so he could you know send black out to two and get a rush yeah. on blue to one it's actually not easy to do that when you're on that skating rink although it'd be moving uphill from from the black to blue um, okay so we're getting the expected shot here shortest shot nice and flat as well this, this stroke i think on this lawn 
And Jose is a very good shot, so I would expect him to hit this. I don't think he'll be feeling very confident having played the match that he's played so far. Mm. But if he can hit this and get a ball going, then it's not a great position to be in, though. 2 0 down. Breakdown. He knows if he misses this, it's probably his last stroke of this world. It could be. He's, he'll be expecting that, so um, full concentration. Wants to smooth through the ball into yellow. It's harder than mm -hmm. I thought he was going to hit it. Yeah, he naturally has a lot of power. Yeah. Don't it's, think it. Yeah. yeah. Which side did it miss? It looked like he missed on the um, south side. The south me. side. Yeah, he yeah. did. Uh, yeah. And now Robbie Fletcher looks like a genius. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well. He still has the, um, he has no rush. Um, it'll be curious to see what he, um, what he does out of this corner. Yeah, do you think he would just uh, take off from black to red? And pump, pump red out a bit, getting Not his rush on yellow? Or do you think out. he would? I think he could just take off from red, couldn't he? Who you think he might just take off from each of them? Yeah. Well, sit blue in a bit, a couple of yards, go to red, concentrate on getting your rush. I mean, if he makes it one, he thinks he's doing whatever he wants, doesn't he? Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah, I think he'll. I definitely um, think he'll pop blue. Uh, excuse me, pop red out a little bit, um, getting the rush on yellow, just to allow him to get to have a rush yeah. to. Um, I think he's going to be playing a croquet stroke from red though. I yeah. Think it'll be a takeoff. No, I don't think it'll be a takeoff. Would either of you consider the big croquet stroke from Black sending that down near one so he has two balls for after one? Well, if you've seen me play, Pete, you know that I would do the croquet stroke. <laughs> um, I, um, I'm not very fond of takeoffs, and I, I'd like to get this thing going. So um, I probably would play a, a wide-angle um, pass roll, sending Black up towards near hoop one, mm -hmm. um, just north of hoop one while trying to get to red. Um, so another possibility, of course, is to put black over to midway between red and yellow kind of thing, so that you've got two balls over there after you've made hoop one. Um, that way you're playing a, a straighter croquet stroke. It's easier to judge the length of going to red. Um, and you know that if you make hoop one, you've got two balls together to use to come back to well, two. He could, yeah. he could take off to red, think, oh, I'm going to rush red into corner four. He could well try to land north, somewhere north of red and cut it down, that's true. I think that's probably what he'll do. Hmm. Or else I think he'll just take off from red and nudge it in a bit. Well, lots of possibilities. That's right. <laughs> One thing I am confident is that Robert knows his own game well enough to make a sensible choice for his own game given his feel of the lawn at the moment. There is a slim possibility that he might play black by mistake. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, he's left on rush the wrong way. <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly confident he's going to play blue this stroke. <laughs> <laughs> well, he might forget. <laughs> I'm going to join Pete on this one. I'm fairly confident that blue will play. <laughs> I think it probably will, but I'm just saying, there's a, there's a chance. There is, there is. Yeah. We can't disagree with that. Great thing about croquet is there's always a chance until they've pegged out. That's right. But all sorts of crazy things can happen in this game. Okay, well it looks like he's worked out which ball is for hoop one. So Remember that's a good need start. To play blue. I feel like the weather's closing in a bit. We've got a little bit more wind now and we've got some clouds forming. So, let's see whether we can get this done before the weather turns for the worse. With these uh, lawns being fairly quick, the wind can actually affect the movement of the balls as they're going down the line if it's going across 
uh, the wind. You can really see the turn on the ball sometimes. So it makes it considerably tougher to play, not just because it's affecting the mallet. That's right. And he's thinking through these various options we've talked about. Will he play a takeoff? Will he spit black to one? I can't see him playing a will he roll, stroke. Will he roll black towards the other balls? I think it's a there we take go. It's a the take only sensible option, isn't it? Well, depends on your game. Yeah. It's choosing your... Well, you could try and play a croquet stroke and be really short of it and leave yourself a... Yeah, seven you yard could be. Or could be. There is another possibility that you could potentially rush your low to red, but that does look harder. I think with a hoop, though, he wouldn't consider that. Yeah, it could um, get cross-wired, could it? If you cross -wire, that's a disaster. Yeah. looks like he was not trying to get anywhere north of red. That just looked like he wanted to be as close to red as he could be. So he's taken it, by taking it down that line, he could just give himself a little bit more room. It's not um, that close. It is close. Well, yeah. Closer. Yeah, but I think his, all he was intent on was hitting red yeah, in the next stroke. Okay. He wasn't interested in no. rushing it anywhere yeah. further south. Mm. Um, Maybe because hoop six was in play for absolutely getting somewhere else. And I definitely think we're going to see red somewhere west of the peg here. Um, he's going to try to get this ball well out, mm. trying to maintain his rush on yellow. As we've talked about with his stop shot, I don't think he's worried about. Um, obviously, he has to judge the pace right, but he's not worried about overruling this rush by trying to get red too far. So it looks like he's pushing up a line to be kind of peg high, would you say? Yeah, it looks... it might even go north of the peg. It's hard mm. to tell from this from this angle. Um, the crucial thing, of course, is he must get that rush on yellow to one. That's right. Red just being out on the lawn is probably plenty good enough for him, but... the blue ball here is his absolute priority. He's left that quite shy, I would say. Well, it's it's pretty pretty pointing in the right direction. It is, yeah, it is pointing the right way, but I would imagine if he had the opportunity, he would have a second go at that. I agree. <laughs> yep. It's not bad, but it's, um, he'd have liked it to have gone a couple more yards. Yeah, he's been playing these shots, and he, and he up until this point, he, he hasn't been trying to keep this yellow to the east of the line of one and two, so that it's he's hitting it towards red. He's just approaching the hoop with a stroke most likely to get in front of hoop one. Right. Um, so it'd be interesting. Look, looks like he's doing a similar thing. It, is. it does, doesn't it? Rather than getting a rush towards red. Yeah. So again, he's yeah. he's done the same thing. He won't be hitting yellow towards red when he's making a roke after the hoop. Mm, and that's interesting because if I were, is there any chance he goes to black? No. Only if he leaves himself a very short rush to it. I'd have thought. Not with that rush. Not with that, no. He's looking at it though. <laughs> or is he just looking at yellow? Oh, he's going to be going to red, surely. Yeah, I'm surprised by where he put yellow on that approach. It's not what I would have advised someone to do. The things with these lawns though, is if he hits yellow in the middle, it's probably going to get to black. You don't need to thrash at them. So he might just look at it and think, well, I can hit that in the middle. 
Yeah. My personal view is that Fletcher has a somewhat different mental approach to m many of the rest of us players in the event um, from sort of turn upwards. For Fletcher it's about what might go wrong and avoiding that because as long as he avoids some really bad low probability outcome then he'll be fine. Whereas for players lot more like myself um, that thrash about a little bit more. It's about getting good outcomes sometimes. Yeah. Um, so is he going to play this shot so from black? Quite surprised that he tried to play that powerful strike. It, oh, it looks gonna, like now he's he kind of stuck from in black to put it to four back, put it to three, go to red. Do you think? I think he's going to go back to red now. I think I he agree. played that with the speculative idea that if he came close to black. I think you can roll yellow it. behind too, can't you? Go to black. You can, but you're Go leaving yourself a longer a longer stroke to get that rush on red to two. I think he'll do that, but you can take off from red if you've got yellow down here. You can, yeah. That's that's certainly true. I think that's what I'd do in this position. Just roll roll yellow as your reception ball behind two. Try and get black across to hoop three. Go to red, hopefully get a rush or a tonk somewhere down towards hoop two and then settle for running the hoop to yellow and see where you end up. Well, you've called it, Jack. Well done. Yeah. I've been sitting there all I'm day. I'm surprised. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're a better predictor of what he's going to do than I am at the moment. I, was, um, I thought he was going to go back to red. I agree. I really I thought think, he would I go to red. And... I don't think going to red is particularly easy. If you go to red now, you need a rush on it. If you play this line, mm, you don't necessarily true. need yeah, to rush that's on it. true. It's, it's nice having this ball properly behind two like this, and that's, that's the benefit of going to black. It's, yeah. Oh, I think he'll be, you know, he'll be thinking he can play this croquet stroke now. He'll just be trying to get a few yards past red and get some kind of tongue towards two. I mean, playing it this way, of course, it does give him a standard TP. Yeah, exactly. He does. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that will really have been that much in his mind, to be honest. It's I think more it would a joke, have been. But, uh, <laughs> I think that would have been in his mind. Yeah. So one good croquet stroke here to give himself an easy rush, and you expect him to be uh, finishing relatively easily. I think that's the thing, isn't it? This line of play, like you say, you've got to play one good shot. He doesn't you? want to go into red, though. Going into red would be bad. Yes. Yeah, but it's not awful. You can still take off to the hoop. That's the line, like. It's not a good line, is it? I think he's gone south of red, but not with enough power yeah. after that. He that would blue definitely, was on a bad line, wasn't he it? He would definitely want that back. Yep. That's I mean, good. He's really, he's got a rush out the peg, it looks like to me. If he can make hoop two, then black is absolutely perfect. Mm. But he needs to take it. Taking off to this corner doesn't sound very fun to me. Well, he's only taking off to the so hoop, and I think the... that's before it gets and quick. How were you okay. running your hoops today, Matthew? Did you find that the uh, when I was watching earlier in the week, it seemed to be that you needed to smooth them through, as Keith would say, rather than having a whack? Uh, did you have any... Um, you know, Any cause I, for concern today? No, I, you know, I had a couple of mistakes early on, um, just to the, due to the fact that, you know, the hoops we were playing prior, anything that's not a severe angle is, is still very runnable with a smooth stroke. Um, with these hoops, as soon as you have um, something that's, you know, anything outside your, your normal angled hoop, it's, it becomes difficult. And so I, I was playing them a little bit more aggressively. That's... That's a little bit short. So this is the kind of hoop I was wondering about. Is this, is this a smooth it through or is this a power? I'm powering this through. Yeah, so I think that's what Robbie will do. He's been doing that. He's done that a couple of times already. So what do you say? Is that a 30 degrees? That looks about right. That's a good 30 degrees, isn't it? I think he'll hit this pretty oh, hard. Well, five, five feet, 30 degrees. I wouldn't be surprised to see the hoop that's move quite Virtually a this for the game and match. He did, did hit it hard, but just not in the right place. He hit it hard, and that is a big, 
There's a big change in this match potentially. Absolutely. Because it's <laughs> a bit early. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's I mean, two nil down. Perfect. Yeah, straight. Perfect. Perfect. Will have been well, well, yeah. He will have been knowing that if he ran that hoop, then he wouldn't get another straight. I think that was the right line of play, though. I think he did the right thing. You know, if that take had been another foot, it would have been a no-brainer, wouldn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Who's this? Kevin Tree. Yeah, guys, if you've got any uh, comments or questions, do put, oh my do word, put them on the chat. such a shame. He really... I thought that... Uh, Having been sat there thinking he was out of it, to get another opportunity that can sometimes bring players alive where they're freed up uh, from this sense of frustration with just this exuberance of having another opportunity it can sometimes change their mind frame. Mm. But, I, don't, um, I think he's lacking confidence now. He's not played well this match. And uh, I'm not sure he's even had a successful four ball break I might I might be wrong there but he, he seemed to play fairly well in the first game um, well, I spoke to him this morning and he said if he plays like he played yesterday then you know if Robert misses then he can win the match and he said he wanted to go out and enjoy himself uh, you know he plays croquet to enjoy himself and uh, unfortunately I don't think he will have enjoyed his day today mm. so far there's still time but it's getting harder, I think. Oh, yeah, he's had another mess out of rugby there. So that was a 12 yarder. You don't see many of those. And that, you know. based on the replay, it looked like it was half a ball left. Um, mm. Mm. Would you be taking this shot or would you be taking with black that's just that fraction short? I'm taking the shot at black. Yeah. Um, even though it's definitely a harder build, it's. Uh, when my confidence is low like this, I really just want to give myself the best chance to hit, and I mm. think Black does that. Mm. Yeah, I'm slightly surprised by this shot. Mm. I'm not. I think I agree with this. I think if you miss Black, you're just giving the break straight back to Robbie, aren't you? If you that miss was this, close. Yeah, that was, was a good very swing. close. I think he might have hit Black at that same accuracy. Yep. But. I mean, do you expect Robbie to miss six yarder? Not in a month of Sundays. Um, he might he's still do. Got a but, rush to uh, hoop two from corner four. Yeah, that he's was close. He's not going to get a ball far out. Mm. I think Joe. I think, in my opinion, Joe, they took the right shot. Narrow margins, aren't there? This yeah. level, when we're. Yeah. Managed and just nick that one on the front. So he's got a bit of an angle to push it back over to three by the look. If he wants to, or will he just Yeah. Will he just play a thin takeoff? I think he'll I think he'll move it a couple of yards. You'd think so, wouldn't um, you? But yeah. he's not lining up like he's gonna. Well it makes I think it makes an easier stroke with the hoop in the way. Um yeah. Move it t two to three yards while. Yeah. So we'll be going to red here, of course, so you can stop red out a little, get a thrash on yellow. This looks like more than two to three yards. Hmm. It does look like more. Wow, he's really moved that a lot. Taken off to give himself a double. Now it looks to me like he's in a position where he may not. He may have to rush yellow into the corner. Probably doesn't particularly want a corner for a cannon when he's through two. <laughs> no, most cannons you do want, but this one does not uh, solve many problems. Hmm. Oh, he could pick off Reg. <laughs> hmm. Mm. Well, so another match winning turn. 
It should be. It should be. I think we're all expecting him to make it too now, aren't we? I mean, I won't quite bet my house on it, but no. I'd be very surprised if he put Look, this I've down. I've already had two instances today where I said somebody was 100% to finish a, a game and they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> that just means you're due. <laughs> Looks like we've had Robert Fulford uh, finish the match 3-0. So um, this turn here by Robbie Fletcher is a chance to have all four quarterfinals matches um, with 3-0 finishes. Yeah. yeah. So that confirms the, uh, the stream game for tomorrow on Dawn 3 will be Fulford versus Balding. Hmm. No, no main event on Lawn 4 tomorrow because Lawn 4 will be used for the final. So if you tune in tomorrow, I'm sure the Americans will be... Uh, Pleased to see Tom Balding on the uh, on the show lawn. Absolutely. So one longish rush here to hoop two. It's a dolly rush, isn't it? It's perfect, isn't it? As long as it missed the peg, which it does. Yeah. A bit short. Quite close to it. It's quite close to the peg. That's a good shot. I think he'll be happy with that. Now, are you planning to go back to Red Deer? Oh, I think he might have chosen to have that again. I don't think he'll be particularly pleased with that. Are you going to so? go back to red after hoop two? Would you go back to red? I think he'll give himself the opportunity of it. Yeah. I think he'll be putting this yellow down near this brown patch of grass again. I think you want it, don't you? Ideally, hairy. you want a tidy red up. And he's going to tonk through the hoop and see whether he's got that rush back. But I, I think he'll go back to red. Yeah. If he gets the opportunity, yeah. But look at this line. It's it's very straight, isn't it? He's not giving himself a lot of room. Mm. Close to the boundary, but not on the boundary. But it won't yeah. be a rush to red, will it? I don't think. Well, these hoops, the balls can sometimes come out at quite an angle. Yeah. Even. You know, you don't usually get that with uh, you don't want it to well straight set narrow straight. hoops, but oh. no, look at that, yeah. he's, he's got the he rush, got rush back to, to red. red, yeah, yeah, that's nice, ideal for him really. So, uh, what would you say his percentage of finishing, excluding, you know, let's pretend we haven't seen him play today. Um, what would you say he's at this at this point right yeah. here? Ninety seven percent. Yeah, ninety five. I would have gone for yeah. yeah. Are you still in any events, Pete? I'm still in the Z, Jack. That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> And There's more freedom in that event. <laughs> are you playing, intending to play for the weekend, or are you going to be um, watching? Well, I think I might do a bit of watching. Yeah. Um, to learn what I should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what you should be doing, you just can't do it, you know, like <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> it can be inspiring, watching play, where you think, oh yeah, that's... That particular aspect of their game is much more consistent than me. There's a good thing to work on. Um, that little roll didn't look a lot, did it? But it's a lot better than the little rolls that he played earlier in the day. Right. He was uh, seemed to be struggling with his ratios. Okay. The ratios rather than the general pace. I think so, yeah. It, it looked like he was just, um, you know, under-hitting the backward ball. But mm. I wasn't sure if that was maybe something to do with his mallet. You know, he's not quite up to speed on his... Uh, mm. I think it's a fairly new mallet. OK. <laughs> so where would you be putting uh, red here if you could just place it with your hand? Um. With yellow that good, I really don't think it's. Um, I'd have a strong preference east or west of the center line of the hoop. I'd put it directly south, I think, of the hoop. Directly south? How yeah. far? Three yards? 
Okay. You just want to peel black, don't you? You want a nice easy peel, and then like you say, blue's good. You just want to tonk it. Yeah. I would run it off the line because um, you don't I want the back swing. Okay. And I would, it, it's nice to be able to play a straight peel. Yeah. I agree. Um, um, yeah, I mean, where he's got it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Looks it's, good. It's a lot closer yeah. than I suggested, but... It looks good, though. It looks good yeah. to me. So I need to just put uh, black out a little bit to the west of that. Tricky little shots, these ones, though, aren't they, I think? Because you want to approach the hoop well. But you want you don't want to send black too far past the hoop. So is it a full roll, or is it a half roll? Or I think it's a, a half roll. Little half roll. Yeah, a little half roll. Yeah. How's he going to play it? Yeah, so he's... It really is a half row, isn't it? Yes. And you, you see a lot of players of a lower standard reach exactly this kind of position and they blob hoop three. Yes, so they've got themselves distracted by... Or run uh, the hoop by six yards. <laughs> <laughs> or they run the hoop into red or something, yes. <laughs> Leave mm. yourself a four yarder that you then knock out a feeling position. Oh my word, he's run that hard. Oh. Wow, he ran that a l with a lot more pace than I'd expect. I think he was trying to avoid exactly what you were referring to, Pete. Um, that position is a very common position to blob the hoop, You're trying mm -hmm. to run it with too much control. And, um, you know, he just wanted to make sure he got through. Thought it might catch a little wire. He doesn't want to hit this hard though, does he? He wants a little nudge. He has it hard. <laughs> yeah. I'm not surprised well, at that, aren't you? So that tells me that he just didn't trust the lawn there. Mm. Yeah, I'm um, surprised. That is surprising. That's that's a good thing when you're a commentator. You say one thing and then they make you look stupid by doing <laughs> something completely well, different. I don't feel like he has made us look stupid. He's looked surprisingly... Yeah, uh, I think I was surprised that he just didn't try and just hit that gently. Yeah, it was the hoop stroke that really, I mean, he, really in, shocked me. In the practice this morning, he mm. did do a bit of practice around that hoop and found a hill uh, going from, left, from right to left as we look at it. So whether he was worried about that or not, I don't know. Well, this is nice for us, of course, because uh, rather than just seeing a standard TP with the balls on the blades of grass, we see a, a delayed TP, which can be just that, a little bit more interesting. So, um, he's got yellow exactly where he'd like it, so now we can see where he'd place red. I'm going to predict that it's going to be roughly level with hoop five, um, which is where I'd want it. Some players like it a fraction further north as well. Oh, he's red some this beyond the hoop. Now the reason that you usually don't want red in front of the hoop like that is that you're going to go to red from black. Um, and whether that's a takeoff from black up there or whether you're stopping black up there, either way you want red, um, you want to be going to a position that's north of red, whereas now he needs to get to a position south of red. Um, so it, we're seeing a few surprises from Robbie Fletcher today. But is is these are these shots? Uh, I'm not clear whether that is where he intended to play red. You know, I mean, we don't know, do we? Is that where we, he wanted it, or did he mean? We it don't to know what he intended, closer? but I'm surprised if that's his choice. I'm mm. surprised yeah. by his choice. If it's not his choice, then I'm surprised that he's that far out with it. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think that pioneer is. You know, when you when you know you're going down to black following hoop four, you tend to leave it on the short side as opposed to long. Just knowing the fact that a little short is okay. Yeah. Long makes it extremely difficult to get to. Well, long as well means if you're three or four yards short of it, you're knocking it quite a long way away from hoop five, aren't you? That's right. And a lot of times, what you tend to do is make sure that you get back there, and you leave yourself a, a four yarder at the pioneer. And I mean, red to me looks like you want to be rushing it towards the hoop from where it is to make hoop five. Yep. Is he putting uh, yellow to the east of east of four back I think here this will be a than... pass roll. This looks like a non-standard yellow to me. Oh no, okay. But it's much further south mm -hmm. than I'd expect. Yep. This is unusual, I would say. He mm. had it a lot further south earlier as well, earlier in the day, than I was expecting him to put it. So it's okay. obviously his his preferred 
So that line. that looks like a position where he wants to play a straight peel as a stop shot, getting a rush on yellow to six. As opposed to a lot of players would want yellow kind of level with the hoop so that they can mm. play the peel as a little he split. Put it anywhere, couldn't he? he could have put it yeah, yellow yeah, where he wanted absolutely. and he's chosen to he's put chosen, it there. Yeah, he's so that chosen is where spot. he wants it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So now we see why you, you wouldn't want red south of the hoop like that. Imagine that red was instead right next to the hoop, then he just has to take off a yard short of it. Hoop five can't come into play. And if he's um, four yards short now, he's knocking red quite a long way away from he'd five, be isn't he? knocking it away from five. And sure also, he won't be if, that he, far away. if he went into red right now, yeah. then he's knocking it further away from the hoop. So. Um, I mean, there's just small little things. We expect him to be absolutely fine. There's nothing difficult for him to cope with, but we wouldn't expect him to have to cope with it. He's and happy with it. It's gone, that's the other gone side down of the, the other side of the hoop, which I think is deliberate on, on his I'd part. I'd be amazed um, if that was deliberate. It probably was. It wasn't due to Hill. It said off based in on that the direction. But he yeah. based on the reaction. He left of black, didn't he? He did. So naturally you'd assume if you're taking off from the left of black you'd go past the left of red. But Yeah, that would be usual. <laughs> is he in a funny mind frame? He's given us something to talk about. I think that's what it is. I think he realises, yeah, this would be just too boring to play a standard TP. I, I need to give the commentator something to chat about. Let's see how much I can bemuse this, the commentator. <laughs> it's working. This red is going to go far now. This is going to go up to the peg, I think. If he if he sort of approaches this as he has done through the match. Okay. Well, there it goes. Yeah. You're totally right. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't want it there because no. because his ideal rush position now would be on top of the peg and. Yeah. Well, if he um, runs this onto the peg and can't hit a ball, he's going to look yeah. like a little bit of a whitey. I mean, the odds of it are very slim, but... Um, he is not hmm. found the peg. He's, he's managed yeah, to avoid the peg. One thing to say is, he is now <laughs> taking croquet, croquet closer to black than he would have been <laughs> if he had the same rush but closer to five. Well, yeah. Every cloud has its silver lining, but <laughs> would you really want to take croquet from this position on the lawn when you want to hardly no, move black at all? The, that is his hoop approach. That is what he. That yeah, is his, that's uh, his way chosen. Of yeah. Hoops, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. He he played it exactly as you predicted, Jack. I'm just surprised that that's his choice. I mean, I was surprised as well this morning, but now I've watched him, I'm not surprised. Do you think it's his best choice? Um, I don't. For a player of his ability, I think he could be running hoops and get in the rush. But mm. uh, I mean, I said to Chris, it kind of flies in the face of uh, usual sort of practice of not moving the striker's ball very far, because he's he's running the hoop knowing that he's got to move the striker's ball seven or eight or nine yards. Now, how close is he to black? Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. So that's a nice croquet stroke with the blue. Mm. Would you want red this far north? I mean, a it's lot too of far, isn't it? Uh, it is. I think it's too far north, yeah, because sending out a two back pioneer going to red, you've, you're going to be a long way from two back sending out that ball. He has got a stop shot. He has got <laughs> we, we, we might get to see the stop shot in action. Yeah. We're going to. So is he going to play this straight yeah. now, given this his choice straight. of yellow? Yeah. This is very similar to what he did previously. Okay. Yep, he's certainly playing that straight. So he's going to give himself something like a four footer on yellow. Um, that shows a Chris great, gets quite great confidence with uh, his rushes. Chris gets quite excited about the hill on hoop six. So if he was here, he'd be uh, he'd be telling us about the hill, but he's not here, so I'll tell you about it. Yeah, which way does it go, Jack? <laughs> well, so uh, it goes from uh, west to east. So if anything, he wants to rush rush yellow short. 
approach so that up he's the hill. approaching up the hill. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great shot. He's got his pail. He's obtained his rush line. Decent. He's not going to get a rush back to corn free though, is he? So partner will be going to two back. Yeah. Which is standard play. It is standard, standard play. way to proceed. Yeah. But he might have liked the yeah. opportunity to rush yellow to corner three and try and put yellow to two back, and rush red across, uh, rush black across. But he's not going to have that option. Uh, it looks like he's going to go into yellow on this uh, yeah. open row, okay? Presumably sending yellow off the lawn. Yep. So now where do we want yellow? Somewhere between three and six on this stroke? Yeah, I don't think it matters too much, oh. does it? Somewhere floating around. No. And I'll this is another thing which is going to make this look silly again. <laughs> so just going to turn to two back, is he? On some stop shot. Well, yeah, yeah, watch, watch this stop shot. So this is gets, what I'm excited to see. He could put yellow to two back so and not worry about it. He just wants to rotate back. If he, puts, no rush. if he puts yellow to two back with a stopping at black, that's a stroke I'm unable to play from this position. Yeah. But he's so. settling for Roque and Black. He's not trying but to. I, get I still a think rush he'll. I still think he'll go between Black and and Hoop. Black uh, and the Hoop. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And rush Black back to the end North of B ball. Boundary. Yeah. He gets peel and go into red. <laughs> <laughs> if he gets the other side of Black, I'd be impressed. It's. I, I think Matt's right. That he's going to go between gonna Black go and the Hoop. Yeah, okay. yeah. I imagine, he kind of needs I to imagine that way, he's, he? well, he's probably going to put yellow a little bit to the east of one, right? east of two back. Yeah. I so, wasn't convinced he was going to get past it. And you were right. But if he'd played that with a little bit more pace, he would have got past yeah. it, and yellow would have been close to two back. So I think he's played the he a lovely was too ratio. Good. It's a, well, it's a good ratio. He'd, he'd want yellow further on though, wouldn't he? Yes. He's just under hit it. They're hard though, it's aren't they? The stop though. shots when your your yeah. mallet is um, pointing, you're hitting the striker's ball, but the centre of your mallet is missing the croquet ball. Oh. See what I mean? I've so never that, noticed so that the, before. The I might be phased by it from now on. Well, there you go. Sure. There's something yeah. for you to worry about. Yeah, thanks, Jack. <laughs> okay. I think they're quite hard to get the stop. Right. So I feel like you're not actually hitting the the croquet ball. Okay, so he's sending black down there as well, so we're expecting black to be stopping the yard in front of two back here. Um, as an aim point. Blue, of course, being the crucial ball. Nice little rush on red to one back. So uh, it's that's a, a great very shot. nice stroke. Very, very nice. Yeah. So prioritising the break in that instance. Absolutely. He knows he can finish from here for it, as long as he keeps making his hoops. So, so he's going to uh, make this put red to three back and presumably then stick yellow up near Penault so that he can try for the rush back after two back and potentially get his peel directly after two back. You can't make peels if you don't make hoops. Indeed. <laughs> we have a question here from Christopher Rhodes. He says that um, Robert's pre-shot routine seems to have fewer elements than in past year's tournaments. What do you guys think? Yeah, so to my mind, Robert has changed a lot over the years. Um, I remember him back in the 2009 Worlds, for instance, one of the world's quickest players. He would zoom about 
just naturally tonked balls in the right direction. Incredibly impressive how, how quickly he played. Um, I was then really surprised by how much he'd slowed down, but 2013 um, he would go backwards and forwards with his croquet strokes particularly um, in a sort of rehearsal style, approaching the ball as though he was going to hit it, and then you could almost like press the rewind button as he moved back off the spot, almost like uh, time was moving backwards and he'd go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards before he played a stroke. Um, it worked for him, it was incredibly effective, um, but I mean that's an immense amount of concentration to do that hour after hour, game after game, so I prefer to see him with a bit less of that going on. I think it's better for the game for that not to be happening. It's more watchable for that not to be happening on, on trivial little strokes. He, he will now sometimes do that, but only on the really crucial strokes that are really, really critical. So he's still got that power of concentration when he chooses to employ it, but to some extent I think he's reserving his energy for when he needs it. And I think that's a better overall approach that he's got now, a more balanced one. So he's uh, a sort of an in-between stage now, uh, overall perhaps a more balanced player when it comes to these uh, pre-shot routines. Yeah, one, one thing that you know I found really interesting about Robert is that um, I played him in the semifinals of the 2020 Worlds um, in AC, and then I played him in the semifinals of the um, 2022 GC Worlds. and. He is, um, in 2020, um, in Melbourne, he was a pretty slow um, AC player. Um, not really slow, not, not um, where it was a problem by any means, but it was, it was definitely on the slower side. Um, and then when we played GC, he was one of the fastest players in the entire tournament. And I just found it really interesting that his change of pace between the two games, and it's nice to see him at um, a really consistent um, steady pace now with AC um, where he's just kind of you know moving along and it's not slow it's not fast it's just a really solid steady pace um, and it's nice to see for the game. Now, I've not seen I've not watched Robert uh, it's probably only the second time I've seen him but I certainly wouldn't describe him as slow. No not by any means of the imagination he's, he's definitely um, changed his pace and I think, like you said, Pete, he's changed a lot over the years as far as um, what works, what doesn't, and um, decides to tweak it a little bit and move on from there. So he's definitely improved on his pace. And he's not going to be happy with Red now, though, is he? That's his three-back pioneer. Yeah, I wouldn't be particularly happy. I'd certainly not be happy with Red, and I wouldn't be particularly happy with Yellow. You don't really want it behind the hoop like that. I think he would have been trying to send Yellow just a bit further on that strokes and an up so that well there's always the chance that you could rush this up and peel it isn't there I'll absolutely yeah and where yellow is it's uh that looks good not ideal mm. so i'm not sure he'll attempt the peel here he no. might try and draws it potentially on a full roll but, but it's he, interesting because his line now it's very difficult to get a line to rush this yellow south isn't it off the south boundary Yes, he may choose to just knock it out um, to the east a bit and take off to red. Yeah. Um, Which is doable, and it's, but it's a slightly more tricky shot than he probably would have wanted. Exactly, yeah. And these little things add up. Yeah. It's surprising how many little things we're seeing that normally we'd be making look trivial, and he's... He's still not. Uh, so he's going. So blue's going to the top, east of the yeah. hoop. So he is. He is wanting to rush yellow south. Oh. Okay. An interesting choice. So he's going to rush rush off the south boundary and croquet yellow back up into the box, as it's now known. Apparently. You think that he's going to? You don't think he's going to rush this into the lawn somewhere near two back? I think he's actually cutting this off the boundary, I, do you? I would assume he's going to oh, cut it looking. off sort of at the end of the bulk or something like that. But I, yeah. yeah, well, he's looked down that line, so... That would be the... I mean, then it's a straight shot, isn't it? It's an interesting ratio with his mallet, isn't it? So it's probably a half roll for him, but right, he's done what you said. Okay. 
different choices for different players. You've got to go a bit with how you feel with those sort of strokes. I would have um, thought the croquet stroke from the south boundary was easier, just because it was straight. Yeah, but I guess if you're trying to go down that kind of line, there's the risk of rushing it into the peg, which That's would be true. bad. That's true, and he is now approaching um, more along the rush line of red, isn't he? Yeah, um, and the disaster cause if you overcut it and you cut it into red, then that's yeah. ugly. Um, so this is uh, pretty low risk. So where's he trying option. to send yellow now? Just somewhere east, would, isn't he? I would say like a couple of yards to the um, west of six. West. East of six, east, right? Yeah, east. This is the north boundary. So it's confusing watching it from confusing. the north. Oh, and he's and not that got his rush on there. not a good shot at all. No. Yellow is fine, but red, it looks like he's got a rush pointing at about corner one, doesn't it? I can't see it. This is this is not good. If we can get no. the camera in uh, corner one. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like it was a rush it's straight at hoop one. Entirely the wrong direction. Okay, so if he makes this hoop. He's pretty much bound to finish, right? So well, it's again, all though, about this red is going to be going to the east of the line of three and four. Yeah. Because this is the shot he plays. Yeah. So he's not trying to keep it. He's not trying to keep it this side to get a rush to red. He's just trying to, to black, approach the yeah. sorry. Yeah. To black. He's just trying to approach the heat. So I'm happy with that in this position, but just because as long as he makes the hoop, I'm convinced he's finishing. Um, and he likes it there. He likes red there. And he's he's reached his hoop running position. He would have liked that to be a bit. He's already had one bit closer failure, and a bit he? straighter. He, yeah, he's, I don't think we're going to have another one. I think he's fine now. Yeah, I think he's got red in in a nice position for him. I think he's just going to. He might run up to fine. yellow here and keep this interesting for us. That's a great shot. Yes. He's taken enough hoop. Look at that. He's even got a rush to there black. There you go. Wow. <laughs> got oh, well. I said he wasn't going to do. He's done it. <laughs> that was, that's uh, a little bit yeah. spawny, but he's um, yeah. Yeah. He's decided to finish things so up. So his finishing now. percentage yeah. has gone right back up again now, hasn't it? Oh he's, yeah. He's yeah, yeah. Back up over, certainly over eighty percent. No, oh, very much so. Yeah. I'm not sure he'd be much more over 90, do you think? you think he'd be well over 90? Or? I think it's around 90 yeah, at this I'd point. Yeah, I'd give it 92. And I think yeah. this next stroke is the big one. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd go closer to 95 from here from what I've seen of him. He's not got to do anything with Fred, has he? So it's a lovely place to rush to. That's a little bit short. Just. I would have liked to have gone a bit further to rush the thing closer. Should all be easy. There's nothing tricky on this lawn and for any of the rest of this break. He's got to go nowhere near corner two, which is the fast part, or the east side of the lawn. Sorry, the west side of the lawn. If I can get my orientation right. Yeah, you've got to remember you're sitting on the north boundary. Mm -hmm. Everything's the wrong way. <laughs> but I do sometimes feel like the lawns are the wrong way anyway. At this, when I come to Nottingham, I feel like lawn one, uh, hoop one should be where hoop three is. Just because everybody sits this end, don't they? Well, just, yeah, I think might have confused the viewers by talking about Nottingham, but yeah, I think as far as I'm aware, Hurlingham has always been this way around. Oh yeah, I didn't get out there. Mm. I guess he'll give himself a kind of four foot broke out in yellow here. Oh my wow. word, his percentage has just okay, shot downwards down after that straight. Yeah. Wow. That's really surprising. And and that was mm. almost as if he didn't get any pull, wasn't it? That's right. I think he mm. looks like where he lined it up. I would expect 
that to have been the line where he lined it up, expecting the blue to pull in on the croquet stroke, the black to pull in from right to left. But it looks like it's gone straight. Yeah. Well, so what he's, we got, some, now he's then? got some work to do. He's got some work to do from there. So there's a replay here. And um, yeah. So just straight into the near wire. So, I mean, there are different ways of playing this, right? The, the normal method is just you put yellow a yard off to the side of the peg, and you rush red to black, and you rush black in front of the But you can try and cannon black uh, with the yellow. If you get a nice rush on yellow, you could try and cannon black in front of the hoop and just have uh, balls a bit, bit further north. And Add in another way. Um, how I expect Michael Heap would try and do it. Oh, from, yeah. Back from the, uh, you know, the good old days is uh, I'm pretty sure he would try and rush black in front of Penal before he'd rocade red. Yes, I don't think Robert, well, he's clearly not going to do that. He's, I don't think that's I think what modern players do, is he's it? He's just over rushed yellow here a little bit. I think he was, I think he was trying for the cannon and if it was just a yard or so shorter, then it would be a lot easier. Um, the trouble with this is that it to cannon black in front is dumping yellow because yellow is going to end up well north of uh, Penalt. Because he's going to hit black half whereas, ball. Yeah, whereas if he was just a fraction south of black with the same sort of cannon, then he could use yellow after the hoop, so I think that's going to change his mind now. Yeah, he's putting yellow probably a couple of yards out from the peg. It's a funny line though. It's going, it's um, going, it's going west of the peg, isn't it? It's got to get out of the way. Yeah, be west of the peg. That's fine. And then he wants a tight rush on red to black, which he's got. That looked close. It was very close. Didn't want to go into red on that stroke. So he wants a really tight rush on black here. Jose's going to be watching this with some interest right now because this is far from guaranteed. He's I got wonder a if there's any thought in Jose, in Jose's head that he just hopes that uh, Robert finishes. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I know. Pro probably not. Just I wouldn't have thought so, no. I, I definitely really don't, don't think so. He's a, he's a really strong competitor. He, competitor. he will still know that he can come back from this position. Yeah. And he would love to. I mean, every, every competitive element in his body wants to come back and win from dead and buried. It would be a hell um, of a comeback. Yeah. So how far in front of this hoop would you be trying to rush this? Because... You want to be playing it as an Irish, right? Yeah. So you want to be, I mean, ideally, you're, you're, you're rushing it really close in front of the hoop. From this distance, I'm going yeah. for somewhere between six inches and a foot. That's, yeah. That is close. Yeah, that is close. And like for me, it would be back, probably right? 14 inches in front. But yeah. He's going up the hill. That's, yeah. that's a good shot. That's good. I think that's How where far do you reckon that is? Like That's a foot and a half. Yeah, a foot and a half. Yeah, yeah 16 inches, 18 foot, inches. Yeah. yeah, 18 inches. Yeah. Red looks good though, doesn't it? It doesn't look like there's many spots where you can yeah, grovel through penalt and not be able to hit red. Yeah, it's only if the back of the ball is still in the hoop, right? Yeah. Virtually. But he's not going to be able to hit this. So what? So what's he doing here? He's just putting that as a backstop so that he can see the side of the balls. I'm not sure what he's done with his mallet. Though, he's eh? just, Is yeah, he allowed to do this? <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah. So that's exactly what he's doing. He's, he's using the the end of his mallet there as a dark surface so that way he can see the side of the balls. Yeah. Um, clearly going inside of the post because you have contrast between the post and the mallet. Oh right. Um, so it's just a background. Just, that's right. Yeah. I've never, seen, I've never noticed people doing that before. I didn't even realise you're allowed to. There's something else for you to worry about, yeah. Pete. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to worry about it, but <laughs> very interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is it. I want back to sail down just uh, a yard or two short of. Now, would you say he's got red 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 on the wrong side because yellow's on the other well, side? Well, yes, ideally, but but all that really matters here is where black ends up on under himself making the hoop yeah. and being able to hit red, right? Um, so uh, this is really. This is it right here. And how far is that going through? Well, he doesn't want it to go beyond Rover. No. Mm. <coughs> they're difficult shots to judge, though, aren't they, when they're this far away? Uh, it can be about how much wire it takes. Oh. And he's clipped the peg. <coughs> now, I'll tell you what, it's very unusual to see someone clip the peg and benefit from it, but. That yeah. would have been well beyond Rover, I think. I was going to um, say that. I think that's helped him, hasn't it? Even though it's nowhere near in front, it is. I mean, it's pushed off the line quite a bit, so he's still got yeah. some work to do. Um, yellow's on the right side now. Yep. Yeah, yellow's helpful. So black goes. So he's going to. deep, yeah. He's going to want a deep, deep ball, yeah. And the reason he's putting red deep um, is so that he can jump over black if. if uh, black sticks in the yeah. hoop, of course. Which is what um, uh, Alan did yesterday, reading the commentary. Oh, okay. He did a yep. appeal, jumped over it, and then had a, a promotion through Rover and rushed back. Okay, so that's that's a nice red. He's got his rush on yellow to black. So he's going to probably rush this a yard to the right of black, to the west of black so he can stop it in closer to the hoop whilst getting his rush on black. Yeah, that's good isn't it? Yeah, it's a great job. So he needs a rush, he needs one rush to get through to the semi-finals. Yeah, so now he puts yellow out to the side of the hoop so that he's got something to hit if he uh, kind of Irish peels black and Need something to hit, so he's just trying to judge where will he rush black in front of this hoop. Is he going to go for a tight position and have a, an Irish peel, or is he going to be a bit further away in a stop shot I approach? Think you don't try and rush too close, do you? I think you just want to make sure you're in front. A yard in front? Yeah, a yard. A yard. Yeah, make sure you're yeah. in front. Make sure you can have a go at the peel. I was wondering what sort of croquet stroke he's going to play. Is this a half roll for him or no, it's a sort of drive? Is it straight? Just hit it in the middle? Yeah. No cut. This has to be good. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's lovely. That is good. Mm, that's pretty good. Yep. Straight enough. Can't tell how far away it is. How far away do we think it is? It looks. It looks about Very a yard. Enough. Yeah, just over a yard. Yeah. Do you say? About a yard, isn't it? I think it? it's about a yard. Yeah. I think this might be a stop shot peel, or do you think it's definitely an Irish one? Well, for me, the yard is the sort of cut-off point where closer than that I'm Irishing it, and further away I'm stop shotting it. He's got a much better stop shot than me, and so like it might be shot. a stop shot. Yeah. yeah. You, Matthew? You're this is an that? Irish for oh, me. Irish, you, it's yeah. Irish. Yeah, I prefer the Irish. Um, mm. I, I find that when I do the stop shot, I, a lot of times I don't get the contact as good, uh -huh. um, and so the front ball normally sticks. Uh -huh. I get stuck in that, you know, jump shot situation. Um, do you ever uh, orientate the ball with the the the, the, um, the, the milling? What's yeah. it called? The milling. Yeah, but you get the bit where it's on the yeah the centre of the milling. The centre. Yeah. yeah. I normally do that with these balls. There's no milling left, so it doesn't really matter that much. Oh, okay. um, they're These old are enough balls. Set, though, today. This th this court has on them. This court, um, yeah. But a, a lot of the courts we've played on, because we're using the old Dawsons, a lot of them have you know smoothed out the milling, and so 
I, I actually haven't been paying any attention to it so far this no. week once I saw that. Um, I look at it at the beginning of a game and see what kind of it's uh, not milling is left. I've ever done. Is it, do you do that, Pete? Yeah, I do these yeah, days. Yeah. I don't think it makes a lot of odds, but yeah. at least that way it's one, one less value. It might be worth doing it on this, might it, if you want to hit it dead straight. Yeah, I, th I think straight peels, it's it's going to stay pretty true regardless. I think it's the, the ones that you have pulled that it okay. starts to it really have an effect. Well, he's playing it straight, so he's allowing for no pull. Um, no, you wouldn't expect him to. No. No. Is it a stop shot? Uh, oh, oh my, my word. word! I think it should have been the stop shot. <laughs> that's. I think that's it, isn't it? That's flicked I off mean, the outside wire. I mean, that's is that a disaster. Oh, that, there's the replay. And that blue that was that blue was way off the line of the hoop there. Right. I mean, that's, sorry, we could so have. It's, a, we, it's going to corner two. We could have and, another four hours yet then. <laughs> And what I thought was 97% when he was when he just approached hoop three, um, or was approaching hoop three. I'm watching this replay one more time. Has become a zero percent chance of finishing this turn. So in the um, last game, um, Jose forgot that he had a contact. Um, we forgot that he had a contact. And he played the balls yeah. as, as they lay. Right. He, he hasn't got a contact this time, but I don't I suspect think, that I he's... I think he'll remember his lift this time. Yeah, but is, does he want it? Or is he just going to play it? I don't think he wants it, does he? Oh, we've got a question there. Um, I think it's... Uh, why is it called an Irish peel? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Is it from someone like Duff Matthews that used to Irish them through? Um, I'm not sure either. Um, Certainly for a while there were a lot of Irish players at the top of the game, so I imagine that was one of them back in the days of people like Duff Matthews. I suspect if um, Keith was here he would be able to answer that question. Hmm. So we've got on the screen seven hours this match coming up to for potentially a... For a potentially 3-0, three three nil. Nil. yeah. But there's potentially a lot of players I'd still I'd quite like to see Jose take a game <laughs> just to prolong it. So, what time are we on then? It's five o'clock. So he's got an interesting choice here, hasn't he? Because he I can't see exactly where yellow is for whether he can easily get a rush on yellow to one, but he could play yellow onto black without his lift and then stop black up the long, getting a rush on partner to one. But I think that's too long to justify. Yeah, no, given his play so far, you? he's got a one foot think He needs to play red. But that hoop's just going to come into play a little bit, so you probably will want to cut yellow to one. Um, well, I mean, this day has not panned out the way that I was expecting it to pan out. I thought that uh, both of these players would be finishing in, in two turns with very few errors, but... Yeah, you do. You, might have been a match you predicted might be error free. Yeah. Um, For some reason, I, I think the only thing I can think is it must be the hoops because a lot of uh, a lot of the games this morning were fairly interactive. Uh, I know the other matches finished three 0 but there was some interest early on. Well, they were reset for today, weren't they? Yeah. I've gone to the quadways now. Um, a lot of different did you players have, have different views on hoop hoops. Failures, Matt, I did. Um, I didn't have any in games two or three, but in game uh, one I had a um, short approach um, at hoop three, tried an angled jump, um, and I think I could have played it with a flat stroke yesterday yeah. um, on the previous hoops, but tried an angled jump, was... wasn't able to score, and um, looks like Jose's it's pretty now deep. Now he's failed this couple of times, hasn't he, in his last couple of attempts, so this is big for him psychologically as well as game-wise. He, he needs yeah. to he needs to just smooth us through with his standard on, stroke. Jose. He's, he's naturally good. very good at the ball straight. Yeah. Lovely. I feel like applauding that. Now he wishes he'd have okay. uh, put, put yellow where Robert would have put it. Because <laughs> if Robert had run that, if he would have had yellow right beside him. <laughs> But anyway, it's fine. He can hit black, can't he? Just yep. needs to uh, yeah, yeah. rebuild. It's, it's a bit of work from this point, but uh, he'll be happy to have made the hoop. Yeah. 
So um, just... imagine for a moment that he manages to rebuild this break. Mm. I mean, not be taken off to Yellow Hair trying to get a rush north and so on. Mm. Um, would he then be thinking about? Presumably he was, he's going to stop at four back rather than one back, but in doing so, would you think about peeling blue after five so that by having the opponent for peg and peg you could have something like a um, an MSL where the balls didn't rush to the peg so that even if they hit they might not finish? Would he be uh, thinking about I that, don't do you think? I think he will be in this instance. Oh, this is a doesn't... chance of getting crossed Oh, this oh, looks why? bad. Yes, no, it looks yeah. bad. It looks, it looks bad. That is not helpful. Can you see, Jack? I think that is pretty blunt. Line. Jack's just going out to check on the line of these balls. Um, he's having a good look at it, so maybe there's something. Yeah, that's. It's just a perfect crosswire. As a perfect crosswire. Okay. So what do you do now? Here for hoop two with red. Um, you could try and run hoop two. You could try and run hoop two. You could try blue. And get blue. He probably doesn't want to come near blue. I would suggest. No. Um, I mean, he could hit blue, but no, I don't think he should do that. No, <laughs> I don't like either of those two. I options. think you've got to just join oh. up, haven't you, and just cross yeah. your fingers that Robert misses and try and carry on. Oh, yeah, I mean, the good question is, are black and blue wired? No. I think, I think you want black to be playing so that you get another stroke. So I think you leave yourself a rush on yellow to black. You force black to be the ball that's shooting. Even though black is the shorter shot, you really want black to be shooting so that you get another opportunity. And is there any, um, is there any possibility that Robbie might walk on the lawn and pick black out? I don't think so. I don't think no, so. I, think no. I don't think so because I think he will know that he likes his odds with a 17 yarder yeah. after a ball has gone round, even if it's flawless. Oh, so it looks like he's leaving this as a rush. Well, presumably Up he's thinking he if he do. left the rush to black, he would give black a double, which he doesn't want to do. So, do we think that? Blue can hit black here. Yeah. I think that might be just north of a hoopy. I think he might be able to go just north of six. And I think that if that's open, Robbie might take blue at black. Um, which, because it wins him the game. Yeah, I think blue at black makes the most sense. Whether it's open or not is a whole separate story. Well, can you see it? It's technically, it's not wired, but for all intents and purposes, it is wired. Okay, fine. Okay, so this is a nice safe shot for him. If he hits yellow, he'll have a lo lovely leave, and if he misses, then it's very difficult to dig these balls out. So maybe if it was open, he would be, still be taking this shot anyway. It's, I think it would be interesting if it was wide open. Mm, missed it. He's not been hitting everything. That's so what's the line then now? Mm. Are you playing red or yellow? I'm playing yellow. You're playing yellow? Okay. It's not what I would do. What would you do, Pete? I think I would play yellow on the basis that I can make my hoop with a rush back into corner one. Okay. Start digging the balls out, get up, you know, send red out a bit from corner okay. one, getting a rush to up to blue and so on. Um, He's playing, oh, he's, black. he's playing red and black, but this is positive even, though. He wants the balls, doesn't well, he? Well, it's positive, but even if he hits it, it's not like he's got a break. He's still got. To he do will a have lot a hoop free part now. He's got a lot of work to do and hit black and. Oh, you know, yeah. he's clipped it. Just he's a clipped good shot, it. Though. I mean, it's it's useful. If you knew you were going to hit it, then it's probably the stroke you'd play. But um, this crosswire's back in play. It shows some confidence of the shooting. Yeah, the crosswire's back in place, says Jack. I like that comment. Yeah, he's got to be careful of one here, but he'll be presumably going just, just beyond one to get that rush on yellow up to the north. Uh, 
and that's that looks good. That's good it? as long as he's got a backswing. He's I going think to take he's, that straight to hoop two. I think he's, yeah. I mean, I think on that you would have been aiming to get red to have a rush on yellow, halfway between. I'm surprised he two went and blue, of the hoop, so that you'd get you? one or the other. I think he wants to be tight on yellow for, yeah. for this rush, so I think that was sensible. Oh, yeah. it was sensible. I was yeah. just surprised. I thought he'd give oh, himself yeah. more room. Right. Yeah. I wonder if he'll just leave blue in the corner for a few a few goes, just because he knows that's the ball that Robert wants to play. He's thinking about it. I mean, what he could do here is put... put yellow deep going to blue and he could stop blue up to four approaching the hoop that's what some players would do that's and that looks not like a high what percentage line though is it I don't think I'm so, I, I think you just approach the hoop I think you? he should probably just approach the hoop I think that's what he's, he's going to try and approach the hoop and he's rush a, yellow to blue isn't he yes it? that's what he's but lined up to do Oh. He's going to run the heap. Oh, that's held into a perfectly straight position. I don't think he's going to get rushed to blue. You don't think he will? I don't think so. Well, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you if you make enough predictions, eventually Someone you get like right. Someone might be right. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you do now? Are you, are you uh, teased no, us? Teased us? Yeah, he's, he's teasing the commentators. Teasing the commentators by looking over at blue there. Um, I would not fancy blue. Oh, just as well he didn't go for blue, I think. So he should be perfectly comfortable on this three ball break. Um, he's had enough play. He's seen enough all day. He's not had a lot of play oh, recently. Oh, and I'm surprised that he's going to blue here. It just makes this next joke a bit bigger. I, I think I would have been just having a three ball break without blue. Where's yellow? Where's yellow? Yellow looks like it's directly it's, in the line. Yeah, yeah it could be in the way. This is. Yellow looks like it's in yeah, the way. Yellow is in the, somewhat on the line of going to black. Of course, he wants to be a fraction north of black and not south. South of black, thank you, Jack. And <laughs> I've been doing that all day. Let me guess at <laughs> east or west. Uh, um, somewhere. Well, if you say one, you somewhere got to the west. Of, yeah, to get this rush. So I think he wants to go north of yellow. Oh, but yellow's certainly in play. He's going to be. Oh, he doesn't want to go north of yellow, does he? You think he wants to come this? I think he wants to go south of yellow. Yeah, south. Oh, that's me getting my north and south <laughs> oh, mixed up okay. again. I thought, no, he definitely wants to go the hoop two side of yellow. I think he'd be happy with that. Yeah, I mean, blue's yeah, yeah, not great, yeah. is it? But red, red good, was the important. Yeah. The main thing was that he missed the yellow ball. That's right. Um, now he's going to be he's going to be making this hoop, assuming that he's rushing back to yellow, isn't he? So he doesn't need great control as such. He just needs to rush somewhere off the north boundary. Yeah, and even if he doesn't get a rush pointing north, if he gets a rush pointing anywhere south, then he'll just ignore yellow for the moment. Yeah, and, and um, there's a lot of room behind yellow if he needs to take off, isn't there? Yeah. Well, yes, though this is the speedy area that, that is, is the corner that difficult you're scared to. Of. <laughs> well, it's difficult to get a rush point in the way that you want if you have to take off across that line. This looks nice to get a rush to. Oof. Yellow. That's okay, so he's got a rush south, hoop. like you said. So yeah. Ignore yellow. Definitely ignore yellow at this point. I think there are a bit mm. of nerves there, aren't there? Just, he just needs to just settle down. Yeah, he just needs a break to just remind himself that he's still in it. Exactly, he's he will settle his nerves with yeah. every heap here if he, if he is feeling nervous. I, th I don't think he'll be having any thoughts right now about peeling blue. Are you um, able to uh, speak Spanish? So I asked Chris earlier because um, there's a few Spanish viewers and they, they wanted some commentary in Spanish, but I can't speak no, Spanish. Nada, sadly, nothing for me. None here. I can hardly speak English. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So given that he's not getting this peel on blue, what are your thoughts about the leaves at this point? He's just going to hate Robbie misses, isn't he? I think, I he think just... that's all you can do. Um, you know, I liked your idea, Pete, um, of peeling blue and then possibly an MSL that um, makes it where you might have one more shot. But I think you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself when you haven't played all that well so far. Um, at this point, just get comfortable, get a ball around, and just hope for a miss. Um, so we expect a diagonal spread. What what is his standard? I don't know. An, an, I, an I, don't know. Uh, I think I, I've seen him uh, throw an NSL out, but um, from what I remember, he used to do diagonals um, in it was either 2020 or 2016 that I last saw him play, and um, he was using a lot of diagonals. So um, I'm then, not sure what his standard. He could is. still have an MSL, right? Because he, if he puts black. Uh, on the back of hoop two, then black doesn't rush to rover and it doesn't rush to the peg. So it's actually quite tricky to finish still for blue, right? If blue hits, how does it get black away from that position? Does it have to cannon it away to get a rush to the peg? Um, yeah, I think, I think it's just a long peg out, um, which obviously as Jose you want. Um, if he hits in, but I, I think I'm going to force Robbie to take the. Um, I'm going to set an NSL, force Robbie to pick up the hoop two ball, and know that it's going to be an on time triple if he misses. Now, obviously, being up two nil in the match, Robbie's not feeling the most pressure in the world. But at the same time, um, one miss and you're back in it. He could leave black on the back of hoop one, on the basis that. Robbie's pretty much bound to play blue, right? Yep. And at least that way, if Robbie misses, he's got a much easier start because he's got that ball there waiting for him at one. Yep. And, I mean, pretty immune as Robbie seems to be to pressure, he will still know if he misses this, he's leaving the ball on one, he's expecting to lose that game. Yep. Um, without Jose having to... Uh, Rush a ball 15 yards to hoop one. Um, I'm not convinced any of this will be going through Jose's head at the minute. No, right now it's probably no. not, but ball. I think once he makes hoop six. You think it will be? I'm not convinced it will be. I, I mean, think... he might well make an MSL, but I'm not sure it's for the reasons that you've said. Yeah. I, I could be completely wrong. It, I think yeah. he's just going for, you know, get trying to get back in the match. Yeah, well, right now, all he's thinking is, let's, poor, let's get this it? ball round. That's poor. Yeah, he was worried about this brown patch, wasn't he? Yeah, he's worried about blue is, though. He's got to get from yellow to blue. Yeah. So he's yeah, but, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that, because this is a horrible area, up, up north of two and, and closer to corner two, and, and he will know that, so... Um, I mean, he's put yellow in the space where he can run six to it, can't he? Yeah, that's good. So, again, he yeah. can potentially take off from blue if he needs to, to the hoop. But he will be trying to get past it to rush it Absolutely. closer to the hoop. Yeah, and I'd expect that he will do. I think he's fine there. Mm. But things like this uh, make, you know, making Ooh. a good leave when you're playing breaks like this. That's short. With balls like this all, you know, in sort of non-standard positions, making leaves gets harder, doesn't it? Yeah, he's not really he's got a break at the minute. Still not really in rhythm, is he? He'll have a break when he runs this hoop, won't he? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the point. When he runs this hoop, he'll run this to yellow, and then he'll think, "What leave am I having?" He's gone for a roll. I thought oh he would have gone for a takeoff there. A bit short. There's it's a in bit, front. There's pressure on this hoop. You want a hoop straight? He's. He needs to run this, yeah. or it's game over. I think. Oh, lovely, nice shot. lovely stroke. Now there's surprisingly little audience here. I'm surprised by this. It's quarter final. You got the world number one playing. Um, I would have expected there to be more of a crowd and a little round of applause for that hoop. Well, yep. it's quite late um, now. It's five o'clock, so some people will have gone home. There was there was a fairly decent crowd earlier in croquet right. terms. <laughs> yeah. I think 
Oh, well, there is one number watching online. Yeah, I think the team uh, in the hut have got details as to the viewers. So oh, okay. They've got. Yeah, so it looks like we've got a 133 oh, concurrent yeah. viewers. Well over 100, yeah. And uh, nearly 600 have watched some of this match. So, so anyone watching, here we go. Send, us some, send us some comments what you, think's, uh, okay, what you so think Jose should be doing. This is the first key thing, is that he's taking off from blue rather than putting it to one back. So that's... So he's not going to be having anything like an MSL. I mean, if he has a spread, if he has a spread, he needs blue in the middle, doesn't he? Because if black's in the middle, it's a pioneer for Rover. Mm. Would you disagree with that? So, so which ball would you want at the peg? Blue. Blue's for Rover. You'd want blue, yeah. I guess that's true. Um, that's, it's small percentages, isn't it? Because if Robbie hits, then he's got two balls together. He's going to rush to Rover, and he's going to make it, and he's going to rush to the other ball. Well, you'd expect finish. that he right. would. Yeah. But. that down the line. Probably wanted the rush to yellow there. Because yellow is not close mm. to two back. He's not quite settled, is he? No, it looks like he doesn't quite have the speed. Yeah. Mm. Um, and this morning, I, it, I think it seemed fairly obvious that they was both under hitting a little bit because I think yesterday maybe the lawns were a tad quicker in the afternoon. Yep. Uh, so I don't know whether he sort of noticed that this morning and is now thinking they're not quite as quick as I thought they were. Um, I mean, you said he, he's been in play, but he's not had a lot of play this afternoon. No. Uh, OK, so he's got quite a long rush here. It's the best, best part of three yards. He's hit that really nicely. Really nicely. Yeah. Tomp that to four feet in front of the hoop. So blue's gonna, blue is going to be at the peg. Yep. Yep. So he's having, um, having a diagonal spread with blue at the peg. I guess it's sensible. Mm. Oh my word. That went down a hill, I think. That is angled. Smooths so, it through. That so, was confident, wasn't it? He played that fairly quickly. Look. Look confident on it. Um, so if we're if we're song. having blue in the middle, I think. Do you think black wants to be quite deep? I think it needs to be sort of almost on the boundary, doesn't it? Well, I think Fulford would have it on the boundary. My personal view is that if Robbie hits, he finishes. Yeah, so finish anyway. I would want it a bit off the boundary to make my yeah. turn easier and almost put more pressure on Robbie, saying, "If you miss, I'm gonna finish." Yep. But um, if it's on the boundary, Robbie does need to rush to it. If it's a couple true. of yards in, he needs to rush seven yards, you know, within seven yards of it. After Rover, I'm talking about. Well, yeah, if it's yeah, if it's on the boundary, he wants to rush to within seven yards of it. That seems about fair. Um, but this is the end of the third game with him winning the first two, so he's got the pace. I mean, he should be fine with that. Yeah, I, and I think the question, you're right. I'm just I mean, saying ultimately, the extra question. Extra little percentages, isn't there? Yeah, there's a little. So the percent, so there's a balance in the percentages, isn't there? Here, because it's it's what you take away from Robbie by having the ball on the boundary compared with what you take away from yourself by having yeah. it on the boundary. I personally think that by having it off the boundary, you give yourself more than you give Robbie. And you put more pressure on his shot. So, to be clear, when you say off the boundary, you mean it hasn't reached the boundary line. Yeah, you've taken it away from the boundary line if you've rushed it over there. Rather instance. than off yeah. the lawn. <laughs> Good point, yeah. Yeah, you really don't want to croak it off the lawn. 
That's a poor tactic. <laughs> okay, well, he, he doesn't even have the option now of sending this off alone to, I think, to still get his rush on blue. I think Robbie probably would. Yeah, 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 with his ridiculous stop shot. <laughs> a super lightweight mallet. <laughs> Okay, so it's, that's quite a, it's quite an Enlon black there. So he, that has two effects. First is that he absolutely has to nail the position of blue now, because otherwise he's giving away a, an eight yarder. But the other thing is that Robbie may shoot at black, um, because it is, it is probably going to be the shortest shot. Um, Okay, but the first thing is he, he has to get this blue in the right place. Yep. Might even be putting this under the peg to help ensure he knows that Robbie wants to play blues so as long as blue isn't able to hit black. Doesn't matter if a little bit of blue is poking out for black, Robbie would still play blue. And I think that's fine, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's fine. this is similar to the diagonal spread he made before, and it's very diagonal. Do you think blue rushes to one properly there, or is it against the peg? Can you tell, Jack? Yeah. I don't think it'll matter. I think we're going to see, see uh, Robbie play blue no matter what. Oh, yeah, interesting. I, I think, regardless yeah. of. Um, whether it rushes to one or not, he's going to play blue. Mm. I could be wrong. Um, he might take the line of play knowing that if he misses, it's harder for Jose to build, but... Um, yeah. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see Jose set his rush to one. Well, I mean, if the closest that Jose can rush blue is the line of five and six, then, oh no, we can see it clearly on the monitor there, he can clearly rush that to one, so yeah. Okay. But if it were against the peg and the best that he could do it would be to have a seven yard roll up, then it, then it wouldn't surprise me if he'd played black, to be honest. No, but I, I think if he, if he Certainly had from no there, he rush to be, one at all, yeah. he would just set this up for a rush to one on the east boundary. Right. Um, knowing yeah. that it rushes to two. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Is there any danger of giving Black a double with where he's going here? Because Black is definitely open as it lays on yellow and red. Well, I think as Matt's saying, Robbie's going to play blue here. Robbie having a double with Black, uh, we think, at, at that range, is not going to affect the choice of which ball he's going to play. He's going to play blue. He's going to think, oh, I hit this shot and I win. I would be extremely surprised to see anything other than blue from the end of, um, from corner three. Oh, okay. Yep. Do you think, how long do you think he's going to think about this? So I would think about black for a while if I had his shooting capabilities. Yeah. Um, it's I, a I little bit shorter, so I agree with you that I think he'll shoot in the corner four. Yeah. Um, I think this is just oh, it's a an quick easy decision. decision. Yeah, quick decision. With as good of a shot as he is, and the match on the line, uh, knowing that if he hits, there's a really good chance he finishes. Um, I think this is just. Not to mention, it gives um, if he does miss, it gives Jose a delayed TP. Um, most likely a delayed TP. So it just makes sense. He's not shooting from the corner, do you? I don't think yellow's um, quite on the boundary. Uh -huh. So I think yellow's just yep. a hair and Good long. point. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he is shooting at yellow. Yeah. Okay. Maybe he thinks there's just a bit of a hill on the boundary itself. It's helping to minimise that. Yeah. I don't like black really there. I think it's too in the middle, isn't it? It makes it too easy for Robbie. You can just. If he does hit, if he doesn't organise the rush to Rover, he can just use Black Carney to make Rover. 
and if he does break Rover, it's very easy to then rush back to the peg. So I think Black should have been closer. There it goes. Oh, he's missed again. I mean, yes. it's an unusual. It's quite a sequence of misses he's had in this game he alone. Did go from right? left to right. Yep. Is that held at all, do we think? Possibly no. a fraction, yeah. but he's missed the ball by enough that that's not all hell. No. His last lift shot did um, go that way as well, so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Even with a bit of hell, I think he was already missing. Yeah, um, I mean, that, that, I think that missed by, by around a ball. Um, um, yeah. Half a ball to a ball. Okay, well, this is your opportunity to uh, get on the scoreboard here. <laughs> Bringing this back to 2 1 would be big. Um, Um, Toby, we see your question here. As someone just tuning in, surprised to see only third game. Lots of errors throughout the match. Uh, yes, a lot more than expected. Um, that's from both players. Um, Jose's definitely had a, a few more, but um, there's been errors from both players. Like I said, a lot more than anyone expected, I think. Um, and now Jose's got a chance to, um, to have a game-winning turn here. Yep. Yeah, the first game was pretty much three hours which I don't think anyone would have expected now he's he's played that with a little bit of a half roll or, or something he didn't play that as a stop shot and he he could if he'd chosen have played that with a stop shot and had read out a little bit wider he could have had it out a little bit more towards hoop three which is what I would have suggested that he would do because I think that after this hoop if he wants a standard TP, he should go for a Hogan roll. And if you're going to go for a Hogan roll from corner four, so after this hoop, he can rush back to the south boundary and he can stop black up to hoop three, um, or just send it to hoop four, depending on where he's rushed it to. He can then send blue up to hoop three, coming to red. Now, with where he's put red, the peg is somewhat in play, Whereas if he put it across a little bit, then he gets a slightly easier Hogan roll, a little bit less risky, and he can naturally come down a slightly straighter line where he then rushes red across in front of hoop two. Yep. So it's it's all small, but these little tiny things slowly add up. So I'm a little bit surprised there that he it chose, like he's taking the rush over there. chose to put red. Yeah, so he, so he is going for this Hogan roll. So he's rushed Black to a position where he can just stop this out into the lawn a little bit um, and turn around and hit blue. Hopefully. So this will be his hoop four pioneer with Black. So go on, Jack. Hopefully not in a position where it's between blue and red. Absolutely, yeah. On this very lawn uh, <laughs> against Jacques Fournier in the final, I saw... Uh, Robert Fulford put a ball out where it was perfectly in line. Rob then played as Hogan Rowe, went full into the ball and then gently hit his 20 yard with the ball at hoop two and carried on. Um, but it's not the desired line of play. Um. So, <laughs> it looks like he's doing a takeoff. Yeah, um, I mean, he's just trying to get a rush on blue, isn't oh, he? Word, huh? gonna... I know, he is. Well, well, that ooh, is in the way. Oh, now, that is horribly in the in way. More. He can cut it. Maybe he can cut it. He's got it. Yeah. yeah, he's cutting it out away from black a bit. I think I would have sent that much further on in lawn. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't and stop just that played further on. Like three or yeah. four yarder back at blue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you almost yeah. have to play that just leaving it south of foot don't you? Just to make sure it's out of the way. Yeah, I mean, surely the whole point of this play is that you've then got your four ball break. Well, and he might think I don't Black think... is his suit four pioneer. He well, might he, be happy with that. He might be, but he can't get a ball to five and still get no, a rush to he four, can, can he? can swap the balls around there, can't he? No, he, he can't, because after two, you can't rush into corner four and put that as no, a hoop No, but you can rush, pioneer. rush into corner four and then put out a reception ball. Yes, that's true. Rush yes, five you can. and then stop it across. Yes, rush, you can. Rush yeah. back four and stop it across. Yeah, it just makes the hit four approach a little bit more ugly. Yeah. Anyway, so we small, just, we small just watch this shot and yeah. then we'll get to a, a question that's been raised by uh, somebody who's not up to speed on um, AC. Ah, right. Okay. It's quite a key shot, isn't it? This he, is he, a big, big stroke. He's putting out blue as a hoop through Pioneer and he's, he's yeah. wanting to make a roke on red. And he needs the pace to be right here. You can over hit these sometimes. 
on, on these quickish conditions. Okay, well it's a good blue. It's okay, isn't it? It's, it's, okay. it's a pretty decent He's gonna stroke. make her okay, isn't he? But you can see if he'd got red just across another yeah. yard or two there, then he'd be in a lovely position compared with this. He's got a longer Slightly stroke now concerned. and he's rushing it away from the hoop. Slightly concerned about blue as well, because it's on the east, it's on the wrong side, isn't it? So he really does need to be able to rush red across now. If, it, if blue was in the same position but on the west, if he doesn't get a rush of hoop, out of hoop two, he's got a roll that he can play across. Yeah, so so we've got some um, players watching that uh, haven't perhaps played the advanced game that we're playing for the World Championships here, where they're probably not used to lifts, extra lifts. So in this game, when someone makes one back, as that would be for GC players, hoop seven, or four back, so that'd be hoop ten, um, then at the end of that turn, the opponent is allowed to lift sure. the ball of their choice um, and play it from bulk if they choose to. They could still play it from where it, from where it lies, or they could play from either A bulk or B bulk, which is why we have things like diagonal spreads where you get the balls both a long way apart from each other but also a long way from bulk with a ball at the peg and a ball um, over uh, on each, each of the boundaries. This is what I was worried about um, before he made hoop two now. It's blues on the wrong side so he's got a difficult roll. Well he could. He wants to get yeah. red into peeling position doesn't he and ideally in an ideal world get past blue so that he can rotate it closer to the hoop. Now, if you would imagine blue was in that same position, but mm. on this side, this roll is very, very easy. I actually like how he's played that. He's played that really well, hasn't he? Yeah, in he's played that tight, really, though, really well because he's got the rush on blue. He's got, I mean, it's a cut rush, but I think he would have wanted to play that just a little bit harder to make this next stroke easier. But, but I, to I, have, like, have I like red. red position, I like red on yeah. the on the. Um, on the south side of that roll, as opposed to trying to do the pass roll going to the north side. Yeah. You know, you give yourself a chance at appeal here. Yeah. Um, even though it's not close and it's no guarantee as it would be had you swapped it around, um, there's no guarantee you're going to get it into peeling position yeah. if you go for that closer position. So yeah, this sure. guarantees a free attempt. Um, well, also, he can run past red and try and rush it back. So Absolutely. Yeah. Don't hit it. It's so nice. now he's in good position. I mean... I yeah. still don't like black. I don't like black at all. I think he could I have done a lot fine. more with black. I think it's fine. I agree. I think I he, you know, black. he had the hook and roll. He knew he had the hook yeah. and roll in his bag. You know, get yeah. black in a place. He's uh, rushed back to a position where blue's in between red and the hoop. Yeah. So he can't attempt so the that's, that's the standard TP gone. Yep. Um, no way to, no way to peel that now. So. There's no, there's no bisques this, in this game, is there? It's uh, level advance. Level play, yeah. So that, that's, uh, the lifts are sort of a, a mechanism to try and even the game out, essentially, aren't they, between the player that's in play and the player that's not in play. Yeah, it's because, uh, so it was introduced because, you know, 100 years ago, whenever it was, the top players were able to just take round a four ball break consistently, and then they could cross wire the, the opponents at hoop one, cross hoop one, and lay up in the third corner, much like you get with sex tuple leaves these days. And the opponents would get one ridiculously long shot. If they missed it, they'd take the ball round again on a four ball break, and, and the player would win. Well, that wasn't much of a test of skill between the top players to really find out who is the best player. So they introduced the lifts and that means that uh, that's why triple peels become um, there's a lot more emphasis on triple peels because um, firstly you're given a much shorter shot rather than from hoop one into corner three you're given them something like a 17 yard shot instead which the top players are much more likely to hit um, but it also means there's this emphasis on trying to finish when you're for one and four back, rather than just a four ball break, you're trying to do the triple peel, like we're seeing Jose now. So yeah, this is following Jack's line of play here, is that he's going to switch these balls around, so he's going to be sending 
black across towards hoop five he's not on his get approach. It hoop five, though, is he now? He'll get it. Well, he could do on the, with a stop shot, but he's. Um, yeah. He could just thing. grab Robert's mallet real fast. This yeah. would be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's fine with a stop shot. He okay. can get this within a yard of oh, the hoop. Oh, it's not even a stop shot. It's a try. Well, he's. If yeah. he had played a stop if he'd shot, played he a stop shot, he would have been fine. fine. <laughs> yeah. So. Is Blue just off the boundary? I don't think he's going to be getting much of a rush. No, not with that. No, the ball is. So, um, looked like it came out so to the yeah. west side. Just doing a triple peel is not uh, worth, you know, it doesn't make it any more of a win, does it? It's not worth, uh, you know, double or anything like that. It's just the fact that you finished the game in that turn without letting your opponent have another shot. Absolutely. And, uh, and big, when you're playing someone like Robert Fletcher that's renowned as such a good shot, cutting down their number of shots is a crucial way to try and win a best of five. Um, so it will we'll push hard at this triple peel as a result. So the normal way is a standard triple peel where you peel the ball through four back after hoop three. Obviously he didn't get that opportunity. So now he's got a more difficult turn to play if he's going to finish this game in this turn. But he's more than capable. Yeah. So he's he's going across to black on this stroke and he's trying to put blue up closest to red, preferably just a little bit north of red, so that he can peel red after hoop five. He's going to use black. Mm, tad short. And that's, that is a bit short. He really wanted that to go on another yard or two. Um, he wants to peel red through four back, getting the rush on blue across to six. So in order to do that, he he's playing this approach shot with black coming up to hoop five, and he really wants a forward rush out of the hoop. Now, if someone said to me, what's the best measure of top players? Well, he's nearly over approached that hoop. What's the best method of testing quickly whether someone's a really good player how often they're getting their forward rushes they stop just short of the and of the uh, line maybe of the we should there. just explain as we've clearly got some sort of people that are interested that are not familiar some of the terms so a ru when we're saying what a, a rush is is a roke isn't it but it's a roke that you are using to try and hit the ball that you're okay into a useful position yes um, so if you've got any more questions. Yeah, so Marcus has pointed out, if this goes to a fifth game, it's not finishing tonight. Manager's time. nightmare, exclamation mark, he writes. It, yeah, I mean, if they only get through four games today, um, then they might have to start a little bit early tomorrow to still have a best of five for the semis. They yeah. don't want to go from best of five quarters to best no of three semis. That's just not going to happen. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, three but we're games. still only in. Yeah, we're still only in game three at the moment. This is one's got some way to go still. Another two um, after this would be challenging. I don't know what time it got dark last night. Hmm. Must be between eight. Yeah, so eight we're at um, seven hours thirty-eight on the on the match right. time, and it's been two hours eighteen minutes in this in this game here. So, um, I think right now Pepe would be very happy if this goes into tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so it's so, interesting where he has black. Yeah, he's lining this up. He's he's putting black down a line that says, I'm not confident of getting this peel. I'm going to peel this, um, getting my rush to one back. You still have a one back pioneer, though, don't you? I you would. Can just pe you can just exactly. take off. You can still You've peel still it, go into the one ball at one back. back. I would be putting this close to one back. I think this is too defensive. I can't see any. Um, positive yeah. or any reason why you would put black mm. as an escape ball. I wonder whether hoop six is in his brain because hoop six is right in the way of where he would ideally be placing black here I think. So he's had to, he's had to choose which side of six am I going to put black. Yeah, he's, yeah. And he's putting it to the south side but really he wants black a bit north of one back. You know, a yard or so north and a couple well, of yards out. To he the could be putting it there as a as an escape ball. Oh no, he's. Hmm. 
I think that's a really nice shot. Yeah, I think what this allows him to do is, is is push red to the eastern side, and which gives him the angle he needs to to try and get this peel. Yeah, he could he could play this well. Can he really get the rush to six? So it's going to be quite a cut rush, isn't it? Uh, I, I think it will be, but you know, I think what he's going to go for here is just to get jaws out yeah. of red. And so I think what we're going to see is him put red at quite an angle just to give him a chance to go for this peel. Yeah. Ah, uh, actually, That's good. Take a That's look good. at what he's going to do here. I think he's actually going to peel and escape to the eastern side to give him a better chance to get the rush. It's going to be a longer rush. He's going to be going away from blue. Correct. But if he was doing that, he would have cut it the other way. Yep. Yep. He would have cut it. He would have cut it towards six, but he cut it away from six. Yep. So this, this so now makes it even longer. I, I think based on the mark that he just made with his mallet, I think yeah, he he's, did make a mark there, didn't he? Yeah. But in that case, why did he cut red in that direction? That's an answer well, I don't he have for you. Straight in okay. front. I don't know. I agree with you. I think he would mm. have cut this to the west. Mm. But this this position highlights quite well, doesn't it? That you know you talk about yards and feet in association croquet is where balls are going and and a lot of the time it doesn't it doesn't make yes. a lot of difference but in this case if blue was you know a yard or two farther farther north it would have been a completely different situation and yes. it would have been easy there's hmm. a replay there it got the the near wire and you can clearly see this is basically a rush to five um, yeah and he's that's, cut this very well play. yeah he's played that well but that was I think that was horrible at this stage to be having to play that. I he could have taken a different line of play there. He could have hit red and pushed it across towards six and tried for the peel after six. I think making I like sure point. making sure that you make hoop six. I would have I would have put more emphasis on making hoop six easily. But he, he's got a four foot, well, three or four foot hoop. Um, oh, look at that, it's a beautiful compact stroke that he has, it just hits that ball in a straight line when he's feeling confident and I think he's started to feel a bit more confident again, he, he thinks he's his gonna body finish language game, has improved I think, I think. he thinks he's going to finish this game yeah. he's, he's had a lot of good peeling turns in the past, he's done plenty of sex tables um, he knows how to finish games so, so he's aiming to rush peel red, isn't he? Yeah. To the north boundary, perhaps, and then play a croquet stroke and send it down to two back. Yeah. So I think he's gonna black. he's gonna just play a takeoff from yeah. blue here, right? Really. So he's just he can sort of become his pivot, hasn't it, for the temp for the time being? Yeah. But he really needs this rush peel because if it just stops in the jaws, he doesn't have a ball at two back. Mm -hmm. So Blue would then revert to being his two-back pioneer, which is obviously a long way from two-back. So he, this is really important I now that he gets this I don't think there's any danger, but that, there is a hill that goes from west to east there. And uh, Robbie had a position where he was trying to approach a ball uh, to rush peel it, and he, he got very parallel there. Looks hard. Mm -hmm. No, it's great. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think that looks good. Yeah. He has to be happy with that. Yeah. Just How hard is he going to hit it? Hard. I'm always hard. tempted to hit this I think hard, he's gonna, I yeah. think he's going to hit this really hard. Yeah. That's okay. a good shot. Once just, again, is, is it's just smooth. Away? Yeah, he didn't thrash at that at all. That's good. So it was a good takeoff, wasn't it? From Blake? Yeah, yeah. Might have to thread this between the uh, hoop and blue here, six and blue. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. This is. I tend when I get in this situation a lot of times to actually just aim the front ball at blue, knowing <laughs> that pull's going to happen. Yeah, you know it's not going to go there. On a flat lawn, you can trust the pull. Yep. Yeah. When it's a little bit more hilly. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not, a completely different yeah, story. Yeah. But on, a, on, I mean, on these type of lawns that are extremely flat, then you know Matthew you're going to get. Matthew doesn't play pulled. on hilly lawns. That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> okay. So, oh, and he oh. has hit blue. Okay. So, so yeah. He... So blue probably now becomes his two-back pioneer. So. Um, <laughs> 
well, does it? Actually, no, I think, I think I'd red. prefer I think I'd prefer it to be red because that way you get to rush back after two back, don't you? I don't think there's a lot of in it, isn't it? But blue's more in front, isn't it? There, there isn't a lot in it, yeah. Sure, that hoop, didn't he? Yep. Hmm. I think I'd still shoot it black. Well, black might have just become his two back partner. <laughs> Hit blue, put it to three back, rush red to black. Yeah. Yeah, so he probably wants to. I mean, he kind yeah, of needs a decent crowd gauge to take if he has to yeah. interesting. Yeah. Just gonna the thing I don't like about it... I think this is probably sensible to just play a takeoff here. Yeah. The thing I don't like to come, come into black first is your croquet stroke now that you're pa playing from black. You're trying, to, you're trying to do two things. You're trying to get a really good rush to two back and a really good three back pioneer. Whereas putting, a, putting blue to three back and getting a rush on red to black the, the rush you're trying to get on red, it, it doesn't, you know, you're rushing to a ball, so it doesn't have to be quite as accurate. Well, yeah, I like your line of play better, Jag. Um, and, it, and I think he's rushed too close now to red. Um, so I don't think he's going to get a three back pine there. I mean, I might be wrong. I think he's fine. Okay. I think he's going to get a decent three back pine there. It doesn't have to be amazing, it's just got to be somewhere down there, yeah. right? Uh, uh, even if it's two yards shy of the hoop, that's fine. But as long as he gets his rush to two back, I still think he's finishing here. It's okay, isn't it? It's, he's got a good rush. That, that was the priority, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah rush to two back. Exactly. I mean, the ball that I don't like here is blue. Um, In terms of having a break, it's fine, though, isn't it? In terms of trying to do a peel after two back, it's not very good, but... It's bad for that, but it's also bad for positioning red whilst going to blue. Well, you just try and rush sort of a bit south of it, don't you, and croquet red up and... Oh, so you wouldn't even be trying to rush in front of... Not now, I think you'd just rush south of blue and croquet up and then presumably get a rush south again to go to back. Hmm. How long is the soup? Yes. Uh, just feet. over a yard? Yeah, 45 feet. Well, if he, he plays the same hoop track as last time, he'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, that's mm. unlucky. Uh, well, it, it takes out any... I mean, now blue looks quite good, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really want blue up next to... I was never now, that worried about blue after two back. So. <laughs> but he is positioning red from a long way, isn't he? And if he yeah. wants, if he wants his uh, delayed double peel, then it's getting harder. I suppose the thing about having a not very good three back pioneer is you say it's fine, but you do want a rush out of three back, don't you? You want your rush out of three back, so, so there is some emphasis on it, yes. Having a good three back pioneer is worth quite a lot. Yeah. Well, okay, that was a good it? that was a good stroke. I yeah, think. I think red's great. I mean. Personally, I would have been really wanting to go past blue so I could rush yeah. it to the south bound. But I and think stop that's how he up. played it, isn't he? He I played it to rush it across and I take think, off. I think he's achieved exactly what he was aiming for in that stroke. Yeah, it's just not what I would have chosen. Because blue is a long way from four back here. He's just going to take off to black. This is a nice, easy take off. It's a bit shorter with blue being further south. but. Blue is your fallback pioneer, isn't Blue's it? Blue is your fallback pioneer. It's quite a long yeah. way now, away from fallback. Exactly. But I yeah. don't think he'll be worrying. He knows he can play all the shots. Yeah, he certainly can. But the thing that marks out the top players is how easy they make the game look. Right now, Although he's achieving it, and he yeah. still looks like he'll finish, he's not been making this look easy. 
well, there's making it look easy Ooh, and there's just clip. having to play easy shots, isn't there? Because the best turns that you see people play are just the ones they're just playing easy shots the whole time. Exactly. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. It, and it looks easy because it is easy. And they keep because it Because they're easy. very good. They keep it. They keep everything nice and simple. So can he get a rush? Is he brave yeah, enough so to try and get a rush? Yeah, yeah, he'll be fine. That's yeah. a good yeah. shot. There we go. So that's it. Has he got a back swing for this? I think he's having to cut this the wrong way because of the hoop. No, it's fine. It's, he's cutting it to red. Oh no, it's fine. You're totally right. On that point, I, I had a person once tell me after a, um, a golf croquet tournament that, man, you're a really entertaining and exciting player to watch. And I said, thank you very much. And then I had an AC tournament and somebody said, <laughs> man, you're a really exciting and entertaining player to watch. And I said, that is not oh, a yeah, golf that's not, that's not what that I'm not what I'm going for. <laughs> I wanted to bore you to death. That's right. <laughs> so black's gone a long way south. Too far, I think. Wow, yeah, that really is a deep black. Normally you just have that a yard or so beyond the hoop. Um, um, because that tells me he's really because, confident he's going to get this yeah, wheel. Because if red sticks in the hoop, you want to be able to just punt it through the hoop wow. slightly and stop it down to Rover, getting your rush back to Penelope after a fall back. Now, how far is Red so, going through? He wants it. He doesn't want it to go far through, does what he? What type of stroke does he play here with Blue this far? It's a full roll, think, isn't it? I, I think, think so. this is a half roll. I to play get a half roll myself. To get, to get Red to Rover. I don't want Red at Rover. Now, we know he's going to get the peel, but will he get the perfect rush to fall back? Surely he's getting the peel, right? Yep. Red's lovely. Yeah, that's a lovely red, and I think that's a lovely yellow as well. It's Probably just a little bit angle. long. I mean, he'd, he'd like to be a bit... Oh, no, it's, it's short. Red's probably good it's enough short. that he's not he's not going back to it after four back. Well, with black there, I think he should. Um, but he needs a rush on black, doesn't he? Right, it's a short taper, so he so will do. with this cut, he will have picked a spot, not in front of the hoop, but somewhere off to the east side to rush to. Yeah, well, that's a good rush, I think. It's chosen where to cut that to. So one slightly tricky approach left. It should all be easy after this. That's a good shot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Solid. he's got any doubts now, has he? He knows he's finishing. I I'd like to think that is true, yes. He's looking solid. He's playing, yeah, he's uh, he's playing at a decent lawn, pace. He? He's, just, he's, he's playing just at his normal, normal pace yeah. now, yeah. He's just settled. He might not be in the fifth if we get that far. <laughs> but I think for <laughs> now in the fourth, I think he will be. Yeah, Tudor, I, I, so I agree with you. I would have played it with a full roll and tried to keep red closer to penalt rather than peeling it through to to rover i just i just think trying to peel it through to rovers you know if it goes halfway between peg and rover what do you do you know you've either then got to rush it back up past black or you've got to try and rush it in front of rover no i think you can also rush it out to the side and just stop stop it back on a little split getting your rush on black well not if it's between the peg and rover if it's between peg and rover you can rush it to halfway between one and two yeah and but you can send so, it back but, but then you're sending it from a long way away again aren't you and you're not sending it down the line you know if it's yeah, if it's sure. near penalt you're just playing a straight shot going down the line yeah he's got the croquet strokes so oh, you've given a chance of it being nicely down there Courses for courses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's fine, isn't he? He's, yeah. he's moved red nicely, so it's slightly on the same side as blue. So that's in a positive. lovely position. And this is what the crowd wanted, a bit more of a match. The others have all been 3-0. And um, it's game on. That's right. And Robbie will be feeling this because... He's had multiple opportunities to close this match out and he's been missing his shots. So this is going to hurt a little bit. Absolutely. Well, I mean, that peel, he'll be disappointed with that, won't he? The rover peel, it was 
striker's ball off the outside of the wire. I mean, yeah, that was pretty shocking. Yeah. He's pretty high percentage from here, isn't he? I've said 100% twice, and I've said that I'm not going to say it once, and now I'm going to say I'm not going to say it again, but he's, he's, he's close to getting there. What are you on, 99? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with a, with a uh, rover peel. Yeah. <laughs> So in the old days, people would always put out a deep ball here. By deep, I mean well beyond the hoop, down towards the down towards bulk, where you could jump through to that ball. But here, he knows he's going to be playing an Irish peel, where he sends both balls through the hoop in one go. And as a result, he doesn't need a deep ball. Um, so he's got both blue and black as quite shallow balls as options to hit after making the hoop. Ideally, you would be having both those balls much closer to the hoop so that they're more easily hittable and so it gives them a wider range of angles from which he can hit things. So it's quite nice to have one fairly much in front of the hoop for if he's, the back of the ball is still within the jaws and the other one off to the side in case he just trickles through the hoop. That way you can't really go wrong uh, on this peel. So these balls are a little bit further away than he would ideally like but he's in really good position here for finishing maybe sending both balls through the hoop and then hitting blue or black assuming that he's able oh and that's fine as well he stopped his own ball in the hoop red's gone a long way though hasn't red's it? remained on the lawn is all that's crucial i think because he can get a rush on one ball he can hit blue now, get a rush on black to red, and get a rush on red back to the peg. You're right that it's, you know, being that far south, it's got to be a more accurate rush back without rushing it into the back of the rover or something. But I think he'll be very comfortable right now. <laughs> I'm very pleased with himself. You just need to stroke it, don't you? Get the right weight. So, one good rush on red here, and... Robert Fletcher's run of game wins finally comes to an I'm end. Quite surprised at how far the red Worlds went, and, the, and yellow, yellow must have hit the wire, did it, and just stayed there. Yeah, it just seemed to stop dead, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, strange. Yeah, that was a slightly. I wonder if there's a bit of an undulation or ah, something approaching that okay. hoop. Okay. Doesn't want to rush the centre of the I don't like blue this though because he's hoop. cutting it towards the hoop. He's going to this be, is what I try and avoid. He's going to be trying to go through that gap between blue yeah. and the hoop. It's a big gap. And but it's easy to overcut it into the back. If you're, cut, if you're cutting a ball to yeah. the peg I want to be cutting it away from the hoop. Indeed. It's not a very good rush. He's not going to forgive himself four. if he doesn't rush this right. Wow. Shot. That was yeah, a great there shot. There we go. That was a really yeah. nice rush. Oh, a little ripple little of applause there. there. Yeah. yeah, deserved it. Deserved it. And from this distance, what is he? Three and a half yards from the peg. Um, just over three yards. So he's pretty much nailed on to hit this. So he'll spend a while lining it up. And then the crucial thing that lesser players sometimes make the mistake of not really concentrating on keeping their mallet straight on the peg out. As long as your mallet, you know, it's as though you're playing a, a really straight drive stroke because the ball will pull in the direction that you've sent your mallet. If you send you your mallet down ball. the wrong line, then you can pull that front ball off the line that you've spent so long lining it up for. Oh, and he's playing this immediately. He's you don't super want any confident. Ball on the peg out, do you? You just want to hit it so straight. Two referees both battling over who's going to run on to uh, check that this red hits the peg. I think this will be a round of applause if he picks out. I think there'll be a little, little round of applause, yeah. And rightly so. He's stopped at least the game run of Robert Fletcher, which will have been his first goal <laughs> coming into this, is to well, take it one game at a time. Yeah, one game. You know, you. You can only win a best of five one game at a time, so... Yeah. Lovely. Oh, I don't 
don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's going to miss no, uh, a five foot peg. Yeah. Very good. That's a big round of applause. Oh yeah, and he looks really pleased. There's a little fist there. Vamos, isn't it? Is that what they say? Vamos. Does yep. that mean come on? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. Come on, quickly. Come on. Yeah, Vamos. absolutely. So I don't know if Chris is still at the venue, but I'll see if I can find him because I'm sure he'd like to come back for the, uh, the fourth game. I haven't seen him for a while. Okay. Well, Jenny was on pl in play not that long ago, so I assume that means they're still here. I think he's. He does do a bit of coaching with JSA, doesn't he? So I wouldn't be surprised if he is still here. So in that uh, previous game, we saw a super shot opening um, by Jose. So it seems likely that uh, Robert Fletcher will be putting the first ball on the lawn in this game. I imagine that, that it's often the case that the winner of the toss of the coin chooses to go in these days. Um, do you think we'll see a super shot from Robert? I do, I do. Um, you know, he he does switch it up every once in a while. You see him go east boundary, um, you see him go super shot, um, but I think with having the opportunity to win that match didn't quite come through. I think you're going to see a super shot here. I really do. Um, okay. Where do you think he would like it exactly? I think he normally goes, um, you know, a yard to a yard and a half north um, of hoop five and about three yards west. Um, okay. Um, so we'll answer, I'm going to answer one last question before I leave. Marcus Evans says, who's your favorite for the match now? If there's one player you don't want to let play themselves in, it's Jose. Um, I still think it's hard to say anybody but um, Robert Fletcher. Uh, you know, it's number one player in the world. He's not happy with the performance he just put up in the last mat, or in the last game. Um, I think he's going to come out strong here. and um, Especially if he hits third turn, I think we'll see a ball around and Jose knows it's his, his last shot if, uh, and we, we can expect Robert to finish. Um, but I am going to go grab a bite to eat. I'm sorry to leave you alone here, Pete. Oh, good. <laughs> um, and uh, I hope for a cracking into this match. Um, I'll be watching, and um, I'm excited to play whoever comes out. Right on. All right. Thank Thanks. you guys for watching. Thanks for the co-commentator. Of course. Okay, so Jose is just trickling at this ball. He's missed it this time. So that will be a double from A bulk for Robert. Um, Openings have changed a lot from 30 years ago when uh, virtually all openings were starting with the first ball going off the lawn. Um, Robert Fulford started using this, uh, what we call the super shot opening, going around on the third turn a lot. Um, it's gone slightly out of favour recently in Britain because we're not allowed to do that in the same way in what's called super advanced play. Um, but for this advanced play, um, I think it's really the best tactic for the, for the really top players. So it's nice to see this being played in these kind of conditions. Oh, and he's just flicked blue. It makes such a difference. So of course, if he's if he had the choice of which ball to to roke there, then hitting yellow would allow him uh, less distance on his rush to hit one. So he just wants to sneak beyond yellow without roking it on this stroke. He'll be sending blue up a little bit towards hoop two, still keeping it well away from bulk. Um, 
but if he can get a good rush to hoop one, we kind of expect him to go round on a three ball break, and that way he knows what ball his opponent's going to be playing, because if Jose would have to play red that's not yet been played into the game. So this is all about getting that nice rush. Marcus asks, who is favourite for the match now? If there's one player you don't want to let play themselves in, it's Jose. Yeah, so Jose has not played as much as some of the top players um, recently. So Marcus is right to point out that getting Jose played in, he's a highly, highly dangerous player. He's been as high as number three in the world um, in the past. He's managed lots of sextuples once he gets the feel of the pace of the lawn, he really can be good. Um, I mean, my blunt answer to Marcus, he, he will totally expect, of course, is Robert Fletcher is still very much the favourite for this match, not just because he's 2-1 up, but because even if it were 2 all, you'd probably put him as favourite. Um, but it's great to see, ooh, and he's really over-approached that hoop by a long way. That's another really big surprise from Robert there. What? Not sure where that has come from. So Jose will have the choice of blue from B bulk or a double of yellow and blue from A bulk, which is a longer shot but where he'd have a double. So Robert could shoot into corner two or he could run away to corner four or to somewhere... Um, over on the east boundary, that's a long way away from things, or for that matter, the west boundary. Um, but that was a very surprising. I mean, he's whew, he's five feet at least away from where he'd be trying to stop Black there on that stroke. It's a fairly standard stroke to be approaching the hoop. From the boundary or near the boundary, so it shows that these lawns have some really good pace in them still, even though um, we're approaching six o'clock in the evening. It's normally started to slow up a fraction. Perhaps he took that into account, he thought maybe it's just slowing down a fraction, but yeah, there's still some life in these lawns. Um, Okay, so he's gone into corner four, which is arguably the most defensive position. He will reckon that Jose is not going to be shooting at black. Uh, he's going to be shooting at this double or at blue as it stands, because it's so much shorter than shooting at black. And therefore, by putting black into corner four, um, it just maximises the work that Jose needs to put in before picking up black. So the standard thing would be to make three hoops and then pick up black, send black out into the lawn, send black to five, go into the pioneer at four. So, quick decision from Jose there. Didn't seem to want to look at the double. He just thinks blue's close enough. Maybe he knows this lawn enough to know this part's flat, whereas shooting up the lawn is Maybe there's a bit more variation, or he's a bit less sure that it's flat. So, there's some music started up in the background. Jose's not being distracted by anything. Lovely strike, really good. He's getting a bit of applause now that he wasn't getting a little while ago. I think the crowd has started to recognise this has really become a proper match now. Um, Jose's got his confidence back. Lovely to see. He's, he's always been a phenomenal player, really. Um... So he's going to be rolling this up to 
to get a rush back on yellow. So this is more than a half roll. This is the kind of stroke that a lot of players don't get enough roll into their stroke. And they leave the back ball short. Jose's not making that error with his ratio, but he's not past yellow enough to rush back to one. He might have a rush to black, though. Um, he's, looking at, he's looking at cutting it to one. Mm. Tricky. Okay, so this is, in the context of the match, this is a massive stroke coming up right here. This is really crunch stuff, because if he lands this ball in front of the hoop and runs the hoop, then you expect him to go round. He's got a lovely hoop put to Pioneer. If he doesn't, then... Well, he's got a shot at the hoop. If he doesn't, then that hoop two pioneer is going to be shooting at his yellow ball. Um, I expect him to run this. Hopefully, he'll just smooth it through. Oof, that was ugly. Hammered it into the far wire. Okay, so I can see from here that Robbie doesn't have a double. Although Red's popped out a little bit, there's a proper gap. Robert will be regarding this as a single ball, blue on yellow. If he hits, of course, then he's the one that gains the three ball break. He's the, he's the man that's going around. If he misses it, then it gets a bit more interesting for how Jose's going to pick up his break. a few shots. He's going to really want this. And just clips it on the front. Straight off the lawn. So he will leave black for the moment, he will stop this up to hoop two, make hoop one off of red and carry on with a three ball break until he gets to hoop four I predict. Um, after hoop three he can then send a ball down, take off to the ball in the corner and send that out to hoop five, getting his dolly rush to hoop four and that way he will then have a four ball break and full control. Welcome back Jack. Mm. I couldn't get Chris back down. He's uh, sitting up there in the conservatory. A bit chilly for him this afternoon. This yeah, evening, it's just sound a bit so colder, isn't it? He won't be returning, but I'm sure he'll be on duty in the morning. <laughs> I don't for know the he'll fifth be. Game, well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who he'll be with. I don't know. I mean, I think uh, he would have been with Keith, obviously, but Keith's gone home early. Not like Keith to go home early. Yeah, well, he's. Uh, had a bit of illness, didn't he? Yeah. He usually does, you know, have a couple of pints at least, but anyway. There was some cheering, wasn't there? So I don't know who that was when Robert hit his lift. Do you? I, I can't. It's not Kevin Beard, is it? It must be another Australian. Did you see them? Did you spot them cheering? I, no, I was just concentrating on the stroke, actually. There, um, there was some cheering, was, but I, the, I, it looks the, like he's got an... I don't know what other Australians are in the event. The crowd has started to get a bit more into yeah, this now. It's, it's a bit it's, late, isn't it? There's nothing else yeah. going on. Well, it's the one to focus on, and it's the only one that hasn't been 3-0, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. Now he's looking at this as though he might go to black. He's got the rush he's to it. He's got a rush to it. See where well, it ends up. I mean, if he if he gets a cannon, then lovely. But otherwise, he's still leaving a ball near the corner. It doesn't make a lot of odds. He's going to rush it into the corner, isn't he? Right, looks good, doesn't oh, look it? Look at that. That's perfect. It hits the flag. Now, yeah. He could be back in crunch mode now, couldn't he? Just crunch this off within 45 minutes. Mm, Jose was happy though, very happy after he'd obviously just taken that uh, game. He was uh, 
speaking loudly in Spanish. I think that must be his wife who's been sitting there all day. I didn't realise that until he was just coming off and he was talking to her. So, oh. uh, yeah, he seemed pretty pumped up. Yeah. But I yeah. noticed that he's failed hoop one, so. Yeah, that was a shame. Didn't he see it the start of it, his eyes well, at the bar. Yeah, so it was a super shot opening. Uh, um, bye. Well, so Robert had put out the uh, super shot. Okay. Um, yeah, Jose had trickled at it and missed. So have you addressed... Robert had failed to get going. So. Sorry, have you addressed Marcus's question? Yes, I have. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's clearly Robert, isn't it? Okay, so this is somewhat unusual to have a cannon in corner four when you've got a, when you're for hoop two and you've got a pioneer up there. So, what are you trying to achieve with this uh, yeah. this stroke? Are you sending red well, to three and get rushing you can the do other two ball things, across the you? lawn? Yeah. You can either get red as a really good pioneer and settle for a, a takeoff from black to yellow, or you can rush. Black and grey. It looks like he's trying to do both. I think I he's. Don't think uh, you I can think do both, can you? Well, I think he's good enough that he will get red somewhere close to three. Yeah. I think black will end it up might being be a his... bit short. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a bit, a bit short, only slightly, and he's got black far enough across that he can now roll it up as yeah. a second pioneer See, thought, coming to yellow. I would have thought you'd been um, better off just sort of getting red out a little bit but making sure you rush black off the, off the west boundary right. sort of fairly close and and have black as your hoop free pioneer but i mean if he played the same stroke but just a bit harder then black would be closer yeah. to yellow and red would be a better pioneer right? true so um yeah if he just hit that with a few more yards of pace then he'd be in better shape but oh, apparently the cheering was from stephen and lachlan I'm guessing what that that's what that comment meant. Right. Who's Stephen? Is that Forster? It must be Stephen Forster, must it, I guess. Mm, yeah, if, if Fozzie's here, he'd gone to Wimbledon earlier, but yeah. <laughs> okay. So quite a big croquet stroke this and this mm. marks out an AC player being able to uh, play these kind of strokes accurately. Wants blue nice and close to yellow, I keep nice control. Don't want any big hoop approaches. A lovely stroke. Can't imagine there's going to be much for us to say about this break. I've got a feeling it's just going to be. He's just going to be doing what he wants to do. Yeah, so this what is going to be. <laughs> well, this is going to be a ball round, right? So yeah. he's got choices. He can either play a really, really tight four ball break with zero chance of going wrong Yeah. where we can talk about where he's putting his pivot and so on Yeah. and how and he's, he's, how he's shuffling from. the balls yeah. I mean, that, this yeah, is I mean look at this position, right in front of him, no one's going to fail this hoop that's where he wants to run every um, hoop on this break from, yeah. from there or he could consider doing some pops I don't know, is he a popper? I'd well, I've never really watched him. I've never seen him. Gosh, so look at that. Know. He's just moved black a little bit. That's absolutely fine there. It does look like the hoops in the way of I getting to red. So maybe the Australians on the on the YouTube feed could tell us if uh, if Robert's a popper. So for anyone that's watching that doesn't know what we're talking about with this word pop, it's short for appeal on opponent. So. You might think, well, that sounds like a strange idea. Why would you peel the opponent through hoop one? And of course, uh, it it makes the leaves that you have and the opponent's ability to do a triple peel um, it affects those probabilities because they have less hoops to make in order to achieve that triple peel if they were to then get a ball to four back. And as a result, it can affect which ball they choose to play and how long a shot they might choose to take uh, following your leave when you've stopped a four back. Now, as I was coming out the bar, I said hello to Robert Fulford, and it does appear that he is watching this game quite intently. 
I'm sure he will be mm. because Robert is a re Robert and Chris both mm. really like to watch the opponents to know their current strengths yeah. and weaknesses. And I think he's he is taking notes in case there is, you know, a match between the two players in this match and Robert Fulford in the final. I think he's watching and uh, absolutely taking notes think, as it was. Well, I think he'll also be taking heart <laughs> because yeah. Um, this has not looked like the Robert Fletcher that we used to see, and there have been errors. But it could just be errors. an off day. I mean, it, yeah, you know, we said earlier, off day. yesterday yep. and the day before, he crunched off his previous matches. You know, hasn't lost a game. Yep. TP's all over the gaff. You know, so Absolutely. it might just be yep. one of them things. And I wouldn't be surprised if this was 26 TP now to Robert. Well, sure. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so Tim Murphy's uh, Tim Murphy's kind of saying that Robert's not a not an avid popper so I don't think we should expect any any pops in this turn I think it's just yeah. a, a ball to four back I mean he went to four back didn't he uh, in the last game and we was we was wondering whether he's going to go to one and four back one mm -hmm. back or four back and I think the fact that he went to four back in that game is probably fairly strong indication that that's what he's going to do now. Well, given how he's played in the previous game, I'd be absolutely shocked if he's now stopped yeah. at one back. Um, yeah. But players do like to prove commentators wrong, so... Well, <laughs> at the start of this turn, I commented that he'd be leaving the ball in corner four until... Uh, until he was yeah, for hoop right, four, yeah. and he and immediately really got, got a rush across <laughs> after hoop one. Yeah, so, welcome to my world. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so he's got all the balls. He's got everything he wants right here. He's not going to be having any pops because he would have already sent the balls over to the other side of hoop five if he was if he was going to be doing any of that. So lovely controlled turn we're having here. Um, he's going to be making five more hoops and then having a leave. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be a diagonal spread. Yeah, I mean, again, the Australians can give us some Oof. intel that I'm not on top of. So what is... Look at that yellow. That is dreadful yellow by his standards. Yeah. Okay, for world number 80, that might be, you know, well, vaguely okay. acceptable, but that should be two yards or five feet in front of hoop six. And to be that far out, I mean that's at least two yards beyond where he wants that ball. That's his stop um, shot coming to uh, haunt him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I hadn't the, realised uh, that Wixie is um, in some kind of competition to see how many times he can say that stop shot Oh, well, we've been match. talking about, that's all we've been talking about. <laughs> There's nothing else to talk about, is it? Stop shot. <laughs> the, um, yeah, can any of the Australians uh, help us with uh, Robert's preferred leave I, like I say I, I don't know what his preferred leave is so. if he could make any leave what would it be there you go Tim Murphy says it would be a diagonal spread leave a DSL ok so yeah a DS as a lot of people refer to them so he's putting out his early two back pioneer. This is a standard play after hoop five. You keep a nice tight break. Um, and he'll put red across to one back. But with yellow there, I mean, Ooh, that's, that's another bad that's stroke, you see. Of yellow, isn't now, it? as soon as you've got a bad hoop six pioneer, I think there's a good argument for not putting a ball to two back. Send a ball up to one back, get a new rush on your pivot, down to your ball at hoop six. And this is an example of why, because even if you're the world number one, you can happen to play one bad stroke, and then you don't get a decent pioneer at one back. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, his, yeah. his break involves rushing red four yards to make one back. Now he will be fine with it. Yeah, and, let's not get you know, too excited about it. But yeah, I mean, but, as but we these say, are errors we're not used to seeing, right? Little percentages, isn't it? You know, it's just a little bit harder now than it yep. would have been. But every um, little percentage adds up. When you're yep. playing a best of five, and you have a percent in each break, well, that's five percent. That's that's noticeable. Um, 
but he's going it's to be just so surprising of a player of his ability well I I don't think he's quite himself today for some reason or another I don't know yeah but anyway he's you know he's absolutely fine he's got a dolly rush on yellow to red so the break is not at any risk he's uh, staying with Reg isn't he now right. Reg unexpectedly went out of the event yesterday yeah do you think that could affect him at all I mean he's been expecting it to so. be himself Robert Fulford well, and Reg thought, Bamford. if anything it was a, a boost to him to to know that one of his you know likely competitors is out yeah yeah know. yeah unless Reg made him sleep in the I don't know maybe Reg <laughs> made him sleep in the car last night <laughs> Interesting house, I think, because he's got Robert Fulford staying there as well. Oh, so right, all three okay. of them have nice. been staying yeah. at the same place. Yeah. Well, oh well, house. maybe that explains yeah. why Robert's still here. Then maybe they're car sharing or something. But I think Robert would be here anyway, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. He would be happily watching this. Nice to see uh, Robert Fulford's family join them today. Yeah, there's a few kids, isn't there? The Rothman family's here. Yep. You're, you haven't bought your family? No, I'll try and keep them well away from Craig. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so he's putting red out to the peg here. So this is fitting nicely with the diagonal spread. This is what... This is the method that most players use to he's have a diagonal not got a spread. Rush pointing in the right direction. No, he's though, not has got he? yellow pointing the right way. He's going to have to employ an incredible stop shot now, here. Like, now, this now you're having to go on the stop shot. Well, I just thought I'd beat you to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jack. <laughs> so he'll send this across as far as he can towards three back. Probably be a little bit shy just to hold for it's the black. black looks like bit. black might potentially be in the way, mm. is it? I don't know. It's not probably think, not in the way enough, is I it? I think it might he be. can go send yellow just past the south of it to get it pretty close. Um, Yeah, there are different methods of making the same leaf. Robert Fulford prefers to have, be making two back off the opponent ball oh, yeah. and rushing back after two back, rushing to the peg. Um, okay. I find that more tricky myself, and I think most players do, but Robert obviously has occasionally managed to make a diagonal spread or yeah. two. Well, <laughs> I mean, I think, I think that might indicate he's the outlier because uh, the commentary that I've been listening to seems to... Yeah, you know, Chris and Keith always seem to be suggesting that you do want your partner at two. I mean, I can't. Yeah. I well, this is Chris's method. This is Reg's method. Yeah. This is basically everyone except Robert Fulford's method. Um, I'm so. not sure if I have a. I was thinking about it after they sort of kept mentioning that, and I'm not sure if I have a. A definite method or not. I don't know. Oh. It's probably good, isn't it, to always try and make the leaf the same way? It's probably. Well, yes and no. I guess you'd want each possibility in your kit yeah. bag, don't you? Yeah. So it can be useful to know about the different methods, depending upon the orientation of the balls and what you're up to. Lovely. And the positioning of black there is quality, isn't it? And approaching that hoop and leaving black just off the boundary, that's a... Well, unless he wanted to rush to red, and it's not well, very good, but if, yeah. he, if he's happy to rush over to the corner four area, then it's fine. He's a... <laughs> You're right. He's over. He's over hit it by a fraction, but there's a confidence there with with doing yeah, that. Yeah, I suppose it's again. It's um, sort of. It's a foot, isn't it? You know, if it was a foot further north, it would be a perfect rush to. Yeah. Red. He has gone to red. Mm. It's so interesting, isn't it? Because mm. I don't really fancy this, you know, because you know you've got a roll black in. Ideally, you want to mm. get past red. Yeah, you want a pass you know, roll, don't I you? Think, it's not very nice. Yeah, I think yeah. I would have just been going to corner four area and put him. So put I him think he's, I think he's over rush black. I yeah. think if if he'd rushed that five yards less, yeah, then yeah, he can just play an split, easy he? split, yeah. can't, doesn't he? But he's rushed it so far that he's got to play an extreme well, pass he's roll. He's got an extreme pass roll, that's, so it That's matter. an incredible stroke, isn't it? Look how far. What's that ratio, Jack? That's oh, an yeah. amazing stroke he's yeah. just played. I mean, no one will have noticed that, I think. Yeah. I think that was a remarkable was. stroke. 
I can't play that strip. You certainly can't yeah. play that sort of shot with a trimmer. That's one, <laughs> one, side down, one downside of a trimmer. <laughs> well, I imagine... And by trimmer, I don't mean a peat trimmer. I mean, <laughs> I mean a mallet. A Dave trimmer mallet. I'm absolutely convinced that Robert Fletcher could have played that with one of my brother's mallets. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's the mallet. I think that's okay. the player. Um. <laughs> So, so this is the sort of play that you'll get typically from a what number ten or twelve in the world. He's got the balls. He's got the balls round and so on. But normally, at this level, I think black is a poor ball because he would want that well, quite a bit closer to red to really finesse red, right? I'm not sure the, the closeness to red is an issue. I think the issue for me is more that it's too far north. So, you know, you you have to be putting red towards the peg and you have to be coming north of black to rush it over to the east boundary to where you want to lay up. Because if you just, if you don't do that, you're rushing black off probably north of the, north of peg high by the look of it from this angle. I might be wrong. Hmm. But, but he's played his approach where he sends yellow yeah. well down the pitch. Now, oh, he's, he's gone past yellow there, but yeah. if he had a rush, do you think he'd rush yellow to the boundary and no. leave it on the boundary? No, you're always just doing what he's doing, aren't you? You might rush it a little bit closer to red. So I think there's a difference here. I think that Fulford, if he got the opportunity, would be leaving this ball on the boundary. Oh, for sure. He right. might, he, but he wouldn't rush it there. He'd croak it across. And uh, I, I have heard Rob say in the uh, Fulford say in the past that he might put that ball off. You know, well, he once has a done. year or something. Yeah. But, He's done it in a world's final against Red for yeah. Cheltenham. Yeah. But but he he rare. kind of accepts yeah. that that, yeah. that that is a risk and. Uh, yeah. You know, for the once a season or once every two seasons that he's hap that it happens, that's a price that he's he's happy to pay for having it consistently on the boundary. But but you don't have to croak it there, right? You can rush it across if you get the rush. You can rush it across and just take off back. Yeah, but I don't think many people would do that, would they? Because you're then trying to get to red. I mean, it looks like red's perfect. He's it, not even yeah, touching he's, it. He's he's leaving <coughs> red exactly where it is. So. But if you if you rush across to the west boundary and then take off back I don't know you, it's not very precise is it especially if you need to do something with red or you know nudge it or or not nudge it perhaps if it's where it is hmm. I don't think many people would think that was the best thing best line of play I don't think many people think about choosing it um, well isn't that just because because it's you know, not a good thing to do. Well, I yeah. mean, so I saw on, what was it, day one, I believe it was, um, I saw Fulford do exactly that, rush right. the ball off. He wanted, I think Oppo was for, I think Oppo was for two and two at the time, so he rushed the ball off the lawn, took off back and put effectively red in this position against the peg, glued it to the peg, rushed off. Right. So I had this lead, but where a ball wouldn't rush to two, you know. Um, right. And I thought that's a, very sensible kind of yeah, way of you've doing got a, it, what, safe. 14 or 15 yard takeoff, which I suppose is yeah. one of them shots that's not difficult, but when you're trying to you know, get on top of it to put it on a peg or something, yeah. you know, it does become more difficult. Okay, so quick choice from Jose here. Right. He's, he's moving yellow, and I think that's the right ball. Because this looks pretty ideal, doesn't it? I mean, I think that blue and black are where, he, yeah. where Robert would want them. It looks like they're yeah, it's max more distance, or less on really, the maximum it? distance yeah. spot. Yeah. I think it, Robert will be more than happy. And Jose, of course, could have chosen to lift red, but if he lifted red yeah. and he hit a ball and knocked it off the south boundary, then it's just a bit harder to make hoop one than if the, his other ball is yeah. near the peg. So that's why he's chosen to lift yellow here. So he'll be shooting at black. Um, I think he'll fancy hitting it. The way he was, he was very pumped up after the last game. So could 
could, if he misses, then you could expect this to be his last joke of the game. I think if he misses, um, I think Fletcher's finishing. I'm, I'm fairly set. I mean, I know he's not been yeah. himself today, but it wouldn't surprise yeah. me at all if he just comes out. Yeah, and you expect him to finish. In two yeah. turns. The odds are that he finishes. Yeah. So a lot, of, lot of pressure on this stroke. Shot. Oh, lovely stroke! Oh, he's getting proper now, applause now. It is a good job. This now is a good he's, match. Now yeah. he's done that. It's a good job he lifted yellow, isn't it? Yes, it is because he's got that red right there. Where, you, where red he, is in the middle of the yeah. lawn, and if he'd if he'd have played that same shot but with red, exactly, his pickup would be a lot harder now. Yeah, that's really made it clear. So, what? what uh, well, yeah, let's make it one, but I'm getting excited now. What's he going to yeah. do? You know. So where would you put Black here? Well, this is what you know. This is what I want to know. What he's going to do? Yeah. I don't know. So I, some players would think, oh, well, you pump it up towards hoop two. I think you should put it out between red between hoop three and the boundary right. as a hoop three pioneer, early hoop three pioneer. Seems to be what um, he's doing. And get a rush on blue towards red, and then pump blue towards two, and away you go. That's, oh. a, that's a line. Oh, that's, that's a line to get a rush, but oh, it's in well, danger of going done? off. What's he done? It's in danger of going that off. Is, and he's, he is he's looking. He's, it's quite a long way on, actually, when you look at the camera. Oof. It's a lot worse. It looks a lot yeah, worse. Yeah, with the camera being. But, I mean, I suppose the thing yeah. about putting black to hoop two is that if you're interested in a TPO, you're not putting the, the four back ball. Hoop two. This this way round, blue's go blue, which is for four back. He's going to hoop two. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in the TPO, croquet and black to hoop two from from where it was, go into blue, trying to get this same rush, but accepting you might just have a roquet and taking off. Is yeah. is okay, I think. I mean, he might still have a, a TPO if he wants one, right? If he, oh, if he wants, if he one. gets the yeah. rush across. I mean, Do you think he would want one? On this lawn against Robert Fletcher. I just. I just wonder, Chris was talking about, and, and one of our Spanish viewers actually earlier mentioned that he might at some point lay for a sex tuple, so I just wonder whether that's what he'll be doing. Whether he should or not, I don't know. Laying for a sex tuple? Yeah. Really? Uh, but, but with a, with a, 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 a partner Jaws did one back. But, I don't know. So... Mm. I think that given how Robert Fletcher has been shooting, he's missed several strokes. I think he just wants a ball to fall back. Yeah. No fussing. No, he doesn't I mean, need any. I mean, he's behind in the match, isn't doesn't he? Doesn't so need any pops. It's he not just, well. Oof. You say that, but you know, it's, we're ball to one. <laughs> we're getting ahead of it. We're getting excited. <laughs> You say he doesn't need pops, but he is behind in the match. It's not like Robert's first ball. Robert was first ball round in this game. He's 2-1 up. He's hoping for a miss to win the match. Jose might be thinking... He might be thinking Robert might hit. And if he hits, he's probably going to... Jose's probably going to lose. Well, not probably, but, you know, he, he might lose in the next turn. So is, is Jose got something else up his sleeve thinking oh, well actually I don't want to let Robert hit one lift shot and, and, and have a chance of winning so you think he might take a more sort of positive mindset well, trying maybe. to take it by the scruff of the neck so I mean, a lot of players talk in. about that but at the end of the day it comes down to percentages yeah sure I, but he's kept himself in the match and I oh, just yeah. I just yeah, wonder yeah. whether he'll think do I want to do I want to uh, you know give away a, a 17 yard lift shot that is potentially going to lose me the match without trying to do something that right. might might hinder that you know I don't know right I mean it is more under his control if he goes for a sex tuple in terms of yeah. it would be his error rather than Fletcher hitting right so there is a positive mindset aspect yeah. uh, to try on I mean, that, but but I mean, and he's done quite a lot of sex tuples. He's a great player, but under these conditions, what are his realistic there odds? There is pressure, but let's think about what Robert Fletcher might do in this situation. He might well go to one back, and his play is TPO, isn't it? So, is there an option for Jose go to one back, make you leave with just quiet down because he's here. Make you leave with partner in one back, mm -hmm. 
you're knowing at the back of your mind that this TPO is still on offer if you want it. Yeah, it's a backup option, isn't it? If the if the sex tuple's going wrong, you switch to the TPO, yep. peg off two balls and go, right, I've got a sudden hoop lead or whatever it well, is by that stage. Well, he step. should be easily, I say easily, player of his ability should be able to get two peels, shouldn't he? Especially if he's rush peeling one back. He should be able to get another peel. Yeah. Um, it's certainly an interesting option. If you were out there advising him and he just well, said to you, Jack, I'm totally... To run that hoop. <laughs> <laughs> if you're playing doubles and, and, no, yeah, and he yeah, said to you, look, Jack, I'm well, feeling really blown this slow right now. What should I do? What would you advise yeah. him to do? It's hard, isn't it? Because I don't think... You can't, unless you are the one playing the strokes. Yeah. You, he, so he's fancying the TPO, isn't he, from that? Well, that's a weird place to put blue. It is weird. That's... that's not a TPO. It's not tight position. He's, he's, yeah, I don't Black's like blue. I mean, you you either want to be both feet in or both feet out with this peel, but you don't you don't want this sticking in the drawers because then, well, I suppose you can still have your leave, but it all becomes a little bit more. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think I want to say what I would tell him to do because if you're not the one playing the shots, you can't. You know, as Mark Avery points out, you know it's easy for us sitting over here in the cheap seats to oh, tell it's everyone great, what it? they're doing and what they should have done and why they've done it wrong. You know, but if yeah. you're not the one out there, yeah. Um, you know, but if I'm playing, you know, if I go back t 12 years or something to when I could actually play the game, you know, I'm just thinking, well, I think I need to do a bit more than just going to four back. Mm -hmm. um, but but people like, you know, people like Mark. Maybe don't think like that. Maybe Jose doesn't think like that. I don't know. Okay, so there's a sort of interesting choice though. He's put blue as an early hoop six pioneer. I presume it was trying to sound that a little less far than that. Has Matthew left his cap here? I'm not sure. No, Matthew's got a, a red um, cap, hasn't he? Might be Chris's. Um, oh, yeah, okay. So. I mean, he wants to be making six off Oppo if he's going to have uh, a one-back lead. Well, I'm not clear at the minute whether Blue was a pivot or was it an early hoop six pioneer. My it's sense neither, is that it? he was... No, it's neither at the moment. I think he sent it further than he was intending. I think it was an early six, hoop six pioneer. Yeah, it was that's what I think as well. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so he's got the position for a one back leave if he Yeah, and he can just rush back to blue now and have a tight black instead for yeah, hoop so six. Rush and north after the hoop and, and croquet yeah. black closer to six and then rush blue south to red again. Yeah, if, you, if you're going to have a one back leave, you want a really good hoop six by in there. That bobbled, didn't it? Don't yeah. yeah I don't it know wasn't, if that was the stroke or the hoop. Mm. But that's not the kind of thing you want. That's not what you want when you've got this <laughs> rough hoop six no, by near. And the it's moment. not a confidence builder. I think he will roll up. Oh, he's not going to. I thought he was going to roll up to blue here. Wow. So, does this indicate well, anything? I don't know. That's a pivot. Looks a bit isn't short it? as well, doesn't yeah. it? Because he's not got a rush down front of five there. So, hmm. things just. Not quite going where he wants them to, are yeah, they? At the, the, minute. the gears this, aren't quite greased, are they, right now? This is because he didn't run hoop far far enough, isn't it? Exactly. He if he'd run it a bit further, he could have yeah. rushed up to blue, had a really good hoop six by now, rushed back down to red, had a nice tight rush to hoop five, and it all look easy, like nothing could ever go wrong. Yeah. So yeah, was so it a bad stroke or was it a bad, uh, you know, a bad hoop blowing the hoop? I don't know. Doesn't look like a one back leave, does it? From here. It's looking ever less likely at the moment, but we'll find out yeah, right now. We'll probably find out in a couple of strokes. He'd be sending this down there too back either way, so we don't learn from this stroke. We'll, we'll only know when he's. Uh, yeah, okay, I mean, red out, really. Well, he should still be rushing red to blue, shouldn't he? No matter what he's doing. But given that blue, I mean, that's. Ooh, now that. That indicates. That indicates a, a stopping one at one back. Yeah, because yeah. black has gone. Way past. In the in the yeah. corner one quadrant, um, 
because black is the hit one ball. Exactly. But having said that, he's not rushed anywhere near a position to be able to put it to. Yeah, so he's fine. He's, he's fine with this straight. He's in just as So, so the key thing here that Jack's just pointed out, just to make it more clear for everyone, Jose knows that Robert Fletcher will be very keen to shoot with black because blue is already for four back. So if Jose is laying up in corner three, what and, and opponents are cross wired at one, then he wants black to be as far away from corner three as possible. So that's why black has, has been stuffed. I don't like right the red. I don't like this now. We don't he like didn't. red because we need yeah. it near black. He didn't to, rush red far yeah. enough, did he? No, he, you know, he needed yeah. to rush it north of blue so that he can stop shot it. Back exactly. And an, an extra yard, he'd have been okay. When he? we saw the the black on the camera there, it almost looked like it was hoop one was runnable. I don't think it's a shot that Robert would take, but I think Jose will want to move that black from where it is to ensure that uh, running hoop one isn't an option. Oh, and he's short on that. Now he might switch plans and rush to one back. Interesting. Yeah. It's what he's looking he's at. He's looking yeah. at it because. Yeah, so I think he's. I think he's just switched plans yeah. right here. You see, if he just run hoop six by six more inches, he would have been stopping at one back. So he's now. But just without knowing that he was going to get that crosswire at one, it's much better to just have a tight ball to four back. So he's hope. He, all he can do now is hope from for a miss from Robert, isn't it? Yeah. Misses lift shot. And well, and hope that he finishes his own TP, but that is in his That's own. That's on his mallet, yeah. yeah. So where's he going? Is he going to black or is he going to red? No, he should go to red, yeah. Much smaller shot, easier shot to play. He can rush red to black if he chooses, or he can hit black after the hoop, but. He's gone to black. Oh my word, he's gone he to black. Why? Well, Why would you do that? Red's in front of the hoop, isn't it? And, and he can get black into the middle. Well, it makes your leave a little bit easier, doesn't it? Well, but from where blue is, I, I think he want, he's going to be... Well, he's going to put it three, to three back now. Which isn't yeah, bad, because he's going to have all the balls over there, there yeah. isn't he? So he can have an NSL. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, NSL with blue on he, the... With, on with blue four. at hoop four, exactly. Yeah. But he's not looking at that. He's put oh. he's putting black into the middle. Oh, I preferred your plan. I think an NSL with blue at four yeah. because that gives us uh, down. No, he's oh, he's, he has found it at the last minute. Yeah, because the advantage of this is that he knows that if Robert plays, and leaving the ball at hoop four will give oh. Jose a, oh, he's not a standard TP. For he's a not found it. He's, that's a bizarre shot, isn't now, it? Yeah, what is he doing then? He's he's already given away a lift because he's run one back. D we don't know why he's put black there. Um, it would have made more sense to put black as a good well, pioneer for we three We know why back. he's put it there, we just don't know. We know he's put it there because it's his reception ball. Yeah. But we don't really understand yeah, but we don't why know he's why. done that. Yeah, because Red would have normally been a natural reception ball which would be so fine. So he's not going for an NSL which I thought looked fairly playable from the I, position that he had I and think, it yeah. does offer you some uh, sure. you know, benefit in that if Robert plays his hoop one ball you have got the opportunity of picking up a standard TP yeah. straight away. He's on the diagonal spread, isn't it he? And he's be, decided this is the way he wants to play it. Yeah, he wants. So he's gonna. But he this wants. is ugly still because he's got to go beyond red. Blue's a bad pioneer for three backs. So he's putting black yeah. to the peg right now, and he needs to. I go, think we've seen this all day. Red. You know, he's probably not in any danger of breaking down, but he just hasn't got the control that he wants, and it yeah. might well mean that he doesn't get a very good leaf. Well, it's a decent black. That's. It's but easy it's harder, to get that end of position. It's harder from than it could have been, or should have been, even for yeah. a player of JSA's well, exactly. ability. Yeah. So now he'll put red up near black, and get he's he's got a good red there yeah. because he's got a nice tight position for getting a good rush to three back. Um,
Yeah, any viewers' thoughts on uh, on this leave would be interesting because I, I think he's missed a trick with the NSL. I don't know whether he spotted mm. it or whether he, he he didn't spot it. But some players uh, don't like NSLs, though, do they? They uh, don't like that stroke from corner four, for I mean, instance. I don't know if I never. I might have seen him play that shot, but you know, I don't know when enough. I feel like it would suit him. You know, I feel mm. like it's a natural shot for him. Yeah. To play from corner four. Send I've seen him play it yeah, before, I, and he's it been It just fine. feels like he's, yeah. he can play that shot quite naturally. Yeah. You know, it's not a difficult ratio for him. For some people, it is a difficult ratio. It's sort of, it can be, but somewhere between a drive and a half roll, can't it? Which, is, which is tricky for some players. Um, I can play it with, with just a drive, so it's not that difficult for me. But and I feel like Jose could play it quite easily. But, yeah, I mean, he's, he's rushed that very close, hasn't he? Give it yeah, well, he away. wants to rush back on black, so... Yeah, he'd, ideally, we, he'd want blue a little bit close to the boundary. Because having blue floating around like that means he needs to rush two very close to blue to rush blue to one. Whereas if it's on yes. the boundary, you can just yeah. blast the ball off the lawn. Yeah. And then stop it to two. Yeah, getting he needs that a rush precise to rush now, one. doesn't he? Rather than, like yeah. you say, just crunching off the boundary and knowing you're going to be able to yeah. play a shot. Now, in a way, when you're playing against a really good shot, it doesn't actually matter as much because you can leave your own balls fairly close together and not think, oh, they might hit the ball yeah. that they weren't aiming at. Well, Whereas when you're playing a, a less good <laughs> shot, then in a way, blue becomes worse because you've got to leave your balls reasonably well, well I, apart. I thought that in the last <laughs> game because I I went out and had a look at Jose's leave, um, yeah. which was a diagonal spread, and uh, there was probably maybe about two and two to two and a half balls between his two balls as they lay. So in this instance, it would be blue at. Jose two balls and I looked at yeah. it and thought oh that would be a double for me you know <laughs> but, yeah absolutely but, but for somebody for like Robert you exactly. know he's probably fairly confident that if he aimed at the middle he'd probably be able to get through he would go through the middle exactly yeah I mean that's that's actually quite a long way apart there's a zero chance looks, really that he's going to aim okay, at red it? it's the very hard to tell yeah. north south but it looks like it's sort of north of the hoop five line so I think it's it's not it's south of the maximum distance. Yeah, but we point, know what it? Robert's going to do. Not, we know not. he's going to play black. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and unsurprisingly, he's going to... I mean, given that I think he wanted to be a bit further south... You could have been, couldn't you? That's what I was just thinking. Because yeah. hasn't, he hasn't taken a short lift, so Jose could have yeah. probably been another yeah. yard or two further south without any danger and he'd of... he'd still have been taking yeah, this shot. Robert yeah, Robert would be taking the same shot. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And when you're playing against Robert Fletcher with a shot like this, an extra yard is quite significant. And on that boundary as well. It seems yeah. to be fairly hilly. I've got no personal experience, but from watching today and from what Chris has said, uh, it does appear to be fairly hilly. So, you know, another yard or two might uh, might help the ball hill off if it's hitting. Yeah. If you're the if you're the out player. When when uh, Jack's talking about hilly, he means by hurling him standards, well, I know. which uh, compared and with most I, clubs, it's not hilly at all. This is what I said all. to Chris earlier. He, <laughs> call, he called the hill in front of Hoop 6 a cliff, and I said, well, come on, you know, let's, uh, let's be fair. And he's he missed liked it. it. I think yeah. he liked it, did he? I don't know. Let's have a look on the screen. It looked like he might have been a bit surprised that yeah, it Here comes the replay. Oh, he's a very good actor. Hmm. Yeah, that looked like it turned yeah. with about five yards to go, didn't it? Interesting. Yeah. So, I didn't time the last TP that Jose did, but it wasn't slow, was it? So, if he does a TP now, will game five start? It's quarter to seven. Quarter to seven. He yeah, should. I think that they'll at least start. Yeah. yeah. Half an hour probably for him to to do a TP, maybe 40 minutes, but he's not slow, is he? I think they need to crack on, yeah. Um, if they've got a best of five tomorrow, then. Yeah. yeah, so best of five tomorrow. Um, you don't want to be using any time tomorrow to finish this game if you can help it. No. We've got cameras, but That's we much, haven't got floodlights, yeah. have we? 
That's true. It's not like some venues that have um, a lit lawn somewhere. Oh, I haven't. <laughs> is there any in this country? I've never seen one in this country. Floodlighted arena. Mm. But I'm, I'm, sure, well, I'm yeah. sure America and I think the Egyptian. I've never been there. But, oh, Ray Hampton has one. We're being told from the production tent. So maybe they could move this game over there. Finish it tonight. There we go. Nick completely agrees with you. A leave with polarity has to be the right one, knowing that um, Robert was pretty much bound to play as black. So that was the leave that um, that Jose made on the, on his previous turn. Nick's talking about there. Yeah, absolutely. So he just needs to squeeze past blue here to get his rush to one. I think he fancies it now, doesn't he? He looks he looks like he's just walking around. He looks like he's just going to do what he what he wants to do to me. I mean, he had he had his dodgy hoop forward, didn't he, in the last break, which which did end up probably costing him, didn't it? Quite a fair bit of the turn didn't finish how he wanted to finish. Mm -hmm. But it's not a great rush, is it? He looks to me like he's just just walking around, thinking he can do whatever he wants. Mm. Hoop one's the key, isn't it? Maybe. If he gets through hoop well, one. if he makes hoop one, then he's getting properly away. But it's often hoop one, that, you know, you, is, you've got it? to rush to it. You, well, you haven't got a pioneer, even have you? just <laughs> stepping off the lawn and the opponent's coming on, taking one lift. Yeah. You can actually walk back onto the lawn, just feeling a little bit cold. It just feels different, doesn't it? But you don't have a pioneer for hoop one, do you? No. So that's right. you always have to rush to it. Yeah. Um, He's in front, and I don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, There's a chance the, he can run this to had, yellow. He's had some trouble with hoop one, though, so this is big still. This is, that is a good result. He didn't look happy with the stroke. <laughs> look, it's a bit of a fist there. He's fisted he's, it. He's, he's happy that he's through. There was a big grin there. Yeah, I there think, was a Jose grin. I think grin. he thinks that was a poor stroke. I don't know he, if we got a replay of that. Well, I think he was worried about that hoop because yeah. we've seen him but blob it a couple of times. Yeah. It was a longish hoop. And, and I think there was a real sense yeah. of joy seeing that ball go through the hoop. It did seem to wobble, it wasn't didn't very it? clean. It wasn't clean, no. But, uh, but he's got a pioneer now, so he right will result. be thinking yeah. that he can do what he wants to do now. Uh, now and what he wants to yeah. do is a TB. Now he's uh, he's not going to black here. You know, no, some players some should. players would would want to play that pass well to black, leaving blue just beyond hoop four, and play that big stroke for the standard TP but it still doesn't um, give you a standard TP though does it not on a plate you still well have not to, on a plate you because you've got to a rush, rush partner yeah. across but with that's... yellow there I mean it's it puts you off doing it doesn't yeah, it because it's think... not where you'd want it for the I don't think it's advisable I mean if you're going to play it on any lawns lawn. these are good lawns to play that shot on but I don't yeah. think it's the right shot to play yeah they're lovely quick lawns They've done a really good job, haven't they, this year? I think they're a little bit quicker than usual. Yeah, so I'm told. Obviously, I haven't stepped foot on them. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they look... A couple of times earlier, I was caught out because I was sort of saying, oh, that's not far enough. But, you know, it just carried on. So yeah. I think earlier okay. we thought they was maybe about 13 seconds. I don't think they're probably quite as quick as they were yesterday. Sure. Uh, and that's okay. probably because the sun hasn't came come out. Yeah, it's just a bit more moisture. Yeah. So and they I'm, should be just starting to slow up a little bit now, just possibly. making it that fraction possibly. easier, and that benefits Jose. Yeah, it's what is it now? It's yeah coming up to yeah. seven o'clock. So I'm not expecting him to do it. I'm just expecting the soft croquet here. Yeah. The croquet straight. And if anything, he wants this yellow on the corner four side, doesn't he? Yeah, so do you want to talk us through the two methods of having the, getting the started with his delayed TP here after hoop three? Yeah, we saw, um, uh, I've forgotten which player it is, but one of, one of the players earlier um, made hoop three and then took off to black in corner four. Yeah. So you, that way you're leaving blue at four back and you can rush partner back after hoop four Yeah. to set up for your pit. Or you can, yeah. if you don't fancy a 20 however many yard takeoff it is, you can rush 
you know, up, tried to run hoop three with a, a rush pointing southwards um, to make your next croquet stroke short. I mean, what I tend to do if I'm in this situation is just I just want to be able to rush blue sort of on the three four line but peg high. Um, and I've just oh, found right. that, that that's my best way of doing it. And then I can, what do you do? Where do you send it? Because this I is just leave it. I just leave it there. Oh right. Because. Um, you know, and so it, it makes your takeoff shorter. It makes your takeoff shorter, and then you yeah. make hoop four off a partner. Hopefully, rush back up to it. Yeah. Croquet partner into peeling position, rush, rush south. I've okay. tried all the methods, and out of all of them, that that is the one that I personally feel most comfortable with. Okay. Have you thought about rushing to hoop five and taking off to black? Yeah, I Send don't really like that. To, if I was going to do anything like that, I'd rush sort of off the east boundary. Mm -hmm. um, you know maybe 10 yards north of black and, and play a croquet stroke putting putting uh, a hoop five pioneer out going to black right um, but, but the, the I think this is the standard method and for me this is the preferred method because there's no risk of going off the lawn on the takeoff yeah and um, you know it, yeah it makes it a fraction more delayed in some ways but it keeps it very safe and I think for Jose's level of play, I think that this is the right the thing that route I don't that like he's going to finish. That was a poor stroke, wasn't it? He's left himself, what, a five yard of that? You are That's guaranteed to be put in yellow to fall back from a long way away you with are, this method. Because it's going to be well seen off the five, isn't it? That the way that I do it, I ideally want to be have a northward rush after four, and I'm putting it out from peg high or along the line. Of the peel, so I'm in front of four back, but I'm peg high, so I've got a, uh, you know, I've got to send it eight or nine yards. Okay, so now he's just playing a little takeoff from yellow. He's going to run the hoop, hit blue, and then he's going to send blue quite a long way up to four yeah. back here. I mean, again, putting you're putting hoop. blue out from such a long way away, aren't you? You are. It's yep. just. I don't know, you say this is the main way. and uh, I mean, I don't like blue. I want blue a lot yeah, closer sure, at this point. Yeah, sure, you want it right? closer, but, but you yeah, know, you're still that's, sending that's it out it from it. hoop three. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Uh, sorry, hoop four. I mean, his swing's fine now, isn't it? He just, he just he's walked just up and just hit that. You yeah. know, he, was, he had no doubt that like he was gonna, the mallet was going to go where he wanted it to. Different player the two games ago, yeah. right? I mean, that and, TV and, has settled down. And if yeah. anything now, Robbie might well be the one feeling the pressure. He's, yeah. he's not had any good turns. He's not been to, functioning to right, To his he? level yeah. in, this, in this match. And if Jose yeah. completes this, you know, he could... You know, he's had... Depending on what you count, two or three good turns in the last two games. Yeah. No, oh, this is properly match on right here. And it. Okay, so that looks a bit shy. Yeah. With blue. This to is me. what. This is what. Yeah. This is what worries me. I mean, you blue want, is just want, no good. Yeah, I mean, blue another four yards on would yeah. be good. Blue is just. Um, you know, it'd be better at oop six if any of it. You know. It if it's would, going to be there, yeah. it'll be back to have it six. I agree. Um, and he's not got a lot of space now to send this up. So Yeah, but he doesn't need a lot because well, he can't. <laughs> not from I mean, where Blue is, but you know, exactly. if you think if yeah, you exactly. if Blue is where you want it to, <laughs> to be, you know. Yeah. So what you may as well attempt the long straight peel attempt here, yeah, so, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, don't, would I you be doing what... that rather than trying to rush across after six or anything yeah, like that? I think I would try the long straight peel attempt. Yeah, um, I mean, again, we had a, a long peel attempt earlier in the day, and Chris was um, saying that this this hill's in play. So you know, he was saying you do need to account for this hill. So yeah. as you're playing this peel, it'll move from left to right. Um, so obviously, the longer the longer peel attempt, the more that play might. That, that hill might come into yeah. play. You see, what he could have done was instead of sending yellow to there, he could have sent it to six, right? And he could have gone right. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna have a nice tight pioneer for six, so that I can get a rush across after six and have I a think... decent peel attempt. He can position blue, 
before going to yellow, so everything's where yeah. he wants it for that rush across. I don't think Given where blue was, I think that would be a decent option. I don't think that is the right option, because if you don't get your rush, you're not getting your peel. Whereas if you do it this way, you can leave yellow in front of the hoop and settle for peeling it going to one back. So he might not even attempt the peel here, and from where he's put black, I don't think he will. I think he should have still put black to one back. Well, you can try and draw his yellow here, can't you? You can play the sort of pace where it might just trickle into the draw. I don't know, though, can you? I mean, he just wants it in front, doesn't he? Because if, if you hit the outside of a wire and it goes past the hoop, it's rubbish, isn't it? Mm. You've, got to then, you've, got, you've still got to get a two-back Pioneer out. You've got to have enough control to get a rush on yellow to peeling position, yeah, that's which true. is, you know, the, you're now the wrong side of the hoop. That was a nice rush, wasn't it? Yeah, so I think, I think he's, he's probably played the right line. He was never realistically going to get the peel, was he going to six? He might well have got the, the jaws in some cases, but I think he's done the right thing. Yeah, I think given where he sent blue, it would have been nice to put yellow to six, but it's a very unusual line of play. But I you don't are understand reliant. why it's unusual. Well, you're reliant on a rush after six, aren't you? So you're reliant on getting yes, your, you are. your tight rush and, and then hitting that. But you, you are, know, and that's why you want a tight position. pioneer. Yeah. But this way, you don't need a rush, do you? What he's done, Peely is already in front of. Well, yeah, but this way, you've had to rush to six and you're rushing to one back. Rush into one and you're putting your two back thing, pioneer out from a long way away. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose in terms of getting the peel, I'd suggest this way is better. Um, More guaranteed of the peel. You're prioritising the peel your way. You've still got two, two ball. You've still got a pivot and a pioneer essentially. Yeah, the more guarantees the break, doesn't the break. it? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. But I think he still fancies finishing. I mean, he gets this peel. He doesn't want to peel oh, it yeah. too far, does oh, he? Yeah, he's still finishing, isn't he? Like he's odds on to finish still from this position. Yeah, I but think it's ho it's horrible rushing to one back. I think on this lawn because you know if you overhit that yeah, a little bit, the brown, then you're yeah. on the brown. Yeah. I don't know if that's and you're going in, downhill. Is that as much in play now at this time? You know, we've just said that. Maybe well, look the at that! It's slowing. It is slowing down. That blue yeah. would have got there before. It would have got to two so back, that is, and that's that is. And six that will make it easier, short, won't it? That that pace short, that's come yeah. off the lawns now will. As long as the players yeah. can adjust, that will make it easier for them. Well, it's better for Jose as well because during play he's getting used to it as it's happening. Whereas mm. when Robert comes back to the lawn yeah, and he makes a okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's easy to then suddenly under-approach a hoop mm. or, or overcompensate and yeah. uh, over-adjust. We have got a match again now, I think. Oh, and, truly, and yeah. And a couple of hours yeah, ago, yeah. I, I don't think we did. No. Um, I think I made a comment about it being a turning point. You said, don't get over-excited. Yeah, excited. you did, yeah. But that was quite <laughs> an early, early point to call a turning point. But uh, <laughs> it has turned. Whether it was at that point or not, I can't remember. But. And yellow is good, isn't it? Because if you make one back and rush back to corner three, you can get black to three back. Yeah, it's lovely. So it's lovely to have peeled it by yeah, a foot, You really it? don't yeah. want to peel, in no. that instance, you don't want to peel it by two or three yards because well, then no. getting your three back pioneer is difficult. Unless, unless you've got Robbie Fletcher's mother. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> God. That one in again. Oh God. I don't realise that he yeah. was paying you. See, the there's always a route yeah. back to the stop shot. <laughs> he could just buy a very lightweight trimmer yeah. mallet and get the same results. Do you think it would achieve the same result? Oh yeah, it's is the it, weight is, of the mallet. Is that all it, yeah, it's is, that all it is, just the weight? Yeah, well, okay. and the length of the head. I mean, if okay. you have a short head, you get a better stop shot. Yeah. Well, and we if you've got a lightweight mallet, you get a better stop shot. And then after that, it's all about technique. That's all right, isn't it? As far it? as I'm aware, that's that, a good rush. And the end faces, I suppose, make a fractional difference. But otherwise. Well, me and Chris said yeah. earlier that uh, Robbie Fletcher might not have the best stop shot in Croquet. It might well be Andrew Gregory. <laughs> Andrew's got an incredible stop shot, and he's got a short he's mallet. Got, he's got a lightweight. A mallet yeah. that's older yeah. than I am, I think. Yeah, it's getting pretty worn out. <laughs> So he's got his rush to corner three area. And he yeah. does need it in corner three, doesn't he? He needs the space. 
Um, and he's come, and he'll be coming yeah. along the rush line. I mean, I'm sort of happy with this anyway off the north boundary on that surprises on me because I this don't think he's going to get that to free back I now. think this is fine. He, yeah. Does he not want a rush yellow to blue? Doesn't though? doesn't have to be right to three back. It can be a, a yeah, little bit. But shy. we want rushes, don't we, out of three back? We said that on the last. We do, uh, yeah. Know. But two yards short here, he's going to be fine because mm. he can knock it down. So. Um, Rush, rush on yellow to blue, isn't it? I think that's. I think that's fairly crucial here because yeah. blue is not Blue's good. Blue is not good. I is really it? don't like blue. Yeah. It's oh, that's a it. lovely. Yeah. So he's not got. That's a, rush a on lovely yellow. black, isn't it? And if that was in corner three, yeah. I think he might. He might well have had a better rush than that. It's a straighter oh, shot, isn't it? And when you play a straighter shot, you get more stop. I think. This is yeah. now a cut rush to peeling position. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, he slowed down. His body language changed a lot. He really didn't like that outcome, did he? I mean, he's still fine, isn't he? He just needs a takeoff. Yeah, takeoff, full concentration on getting this rush across to two back. Yeah, and I'm interested to see which side he plays this from. Yeah, it's. Yeah. See, I would always play that from the left-hand side. Would you? Yeah, always. Even though you want, you'd yeah. prefer yellow to move to yeah, the left. Yeah, I, I understand yeah. why he's doing it, but yeah. I just feel playing it from the left-hand side. It just feels normal. It just feels right. I understand what you mean about the feeling. I mean, he's different. moved it a foot, hasn't he? So whether it's a yeah, it's a oh. bit like the takeoff to a hoop, isn't it? You always do it from the outside, yeah. even if the ball's further yeah. out. But yeah. I would have. Played from the same takeoff as yeah. him, so I'd recommend. And he's played it well, time. hasn't he? He's got a perfect rush. To yeah, that is a so. really good, really good stroke. That can look easy. You can, you can he's often not notice easy, that. Hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, but but that was really crucial getting a good rush or two back, because by getting a good rush back, you know, if he if he was having an uncontrolled two back and he ended mm. up with a rush point in south, then the odds of him finishing would shoot down. Whereas this way. He really should be getting a rush north. Oh, yeah. why is he well, put blue there? Well, it's he's... come round. It was down a, li a bad line, but it's curved round, so it's going to be okay. I was going to say it's going to be okay, but he's oh. gone pretty much straight through that hoop. Oh, and my he's word. now got a rush that angle. points in the middle to the middle of the west boundary. That's an incredible angle to come out of these hoops. Yeah, these hoops are well so set. He needs a half ball cut. Yeah. Ideally. Yeah, he really wants us up the lawn. And he's and hit it centre ball and he's rushed it to the middle of the west the boundary. Bang so the middle. Yeah. this is not good, I wouldn't suggest, because he wants to be rushing yeah. yellow towards Pennot now, and he wants to be leaving it in peeling position, going to black. Yeah, well, he's he's sending blue down a nice line for. He's got to get past it, hasn't he? He's got to get past yellow. But if he gets past yellow, then blue's going to be fine, I think, isn't it? I Blue's think, probably going to be fine whatever happens. I think he's good at the stroke. I think this is going to be a good stroke. Yeah, I'm not worried about blue in this stroke. I'm worried about red. And it looks like it might be good. Well, that's a beautiful very, stroke, very isn't that's it? That's worth a clap. If, yeah, if the we crowd, were commentating, I would give that a clap. Exactly. I'm exactly the same. Yeah. That he, is a could, point. he could even try a death row there if he yeah, wanted to. I don't think to. he will. I think I that's doubt he will, an ideal outcome. He's got a rush yeah. pointing straight at Penal. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful croquet stroke there. And these are the strokes that you need to be a top player yeah. because, well, you know, whether you hit a, hit a lift or not, it's when you hit a lift, being able to play these kind of strokes to keep breaks going and to create triples and so on. Well, that has you know, this makes a massive. That, he's difference. under control now, isn't he? He's played one yeah. shot, and he's he is yeah. under, con back under control. Totally. There's a standard delayed double now. Oh, a standard delayed double. <laughs> <laughs> What's a delayed delayed double? <laughs> standard position for a delayed double. I oh, will extend it to. <laughs> Okay, so he really wants this forward rush, doesn't he, out of this hoop? Yeah, it's what so we've been talking about, isn't it? I think all week they've been ooh, talking about forward rushes out of that's a terrible hoop rush. five and three back. Right, so he overcut that, didn't he? He was greedy. 
what he needed to do there was pick a spot. He couldn't cut it to the ideal position, mm. so he needed to pick a spot that was angled in front of the hoop to rush that to, so that he had the room to stop it up, Ooh. approaching the hoop. And now that's gone, isn't it? there's virtually zero chance. Is there of any chance of hoop and Roke? Is that he'll I be think playing there for is. it? If if it's impossible he's, to miss black, yeah. he'll be playing hoop and Roke. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. I think that's what he's going for. It's quite far away from the hoop, black though. If it came well, out at the yeah. angle that his two-back hoop came out at, it probably wouldn't have it made a rotate. Missed, yeah. So he's um, he's benefited from that, hasn't he? Because he's got a much shorter yeah. croquet stroke now. So he's rolling black over to what, a yard south of six, and hopefully off the line. Yeah. And I'm trying to get a rush always, on yellow to, to right in front of the hoop. hoop. So he's going for past six on the west. Yeah. Tight to yellow. And black is similar to where he put it before, isn't it? It's probably further north. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit further north. It's okay, though. It's okay. But he does need to just tickle this, doesn't he? Just on on the left. I mean, ideally, he'd probably place black a yard closer to the oop, wouldn't you? This is a difficult shot, isn't it, I think? This little little, little tickle. Yeah. Yeah, little tap. But now the lawn's a bit slow, so not easy. Good point. And he's yeah, he's he's Look absolutely at that fine. Stop. I mean, it's it's definitely easier right now, and that's benefiting him. So. So you you're he expecting got him to finish now, aren't you? I am expecting him to finish. I'm because, expecting him to yeah. finish, but he's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. He's played a lot of these. It? He's finished from this position mm. time after time well, he over does, the years. Well, he practices six steeples, doesn't he? Exactly. So and he completes them in matches. This so he's had a lot straight. of these. This is an easy finish compared with some of the things he's done in the past. That looked very straight. That was nice, wasn't it? But he, he, I was a bit worried he wasn't going to get to blue, but he has. Yeah. Um, you see, that's a better distance for me peeling yellow. I prefer that to trying to peel it down to Rover. Right. Because he can yeah. he can just stop shot it down now, get a yeah. tight rush on black to penal. Um, I think this is a better position. So is this for two all? And he's had a lot of the play over the last two games. Two all, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well he is the informed player now. Yeah. Robbie has looked Suddenly fragile. Yeah. Well, you say suddenly, but I've been watching him all day, and he just hasn't been himself. Right. Do you think he might just be feeling a bit ill? Well, I've got absolutely no idea. I haven't spoken to him. I couldn't comment. You know. Okay. Uh, just unfortunately, it's just today for some reason he hasn't quite bought his A game. I mean, that was that was a shock yesterday. Reg going out if uh, Robbie disappears as well, and. I think yeah. Robert Fulford would feel like it's possibly Christmas time if he can get past Matt Essick. Um, yeah. And that's no mean feat. Um, so he's kept blue, this, made sure blue's well out of the way. It's not going to be in the way of sending yellow to peeling position in front of Rover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a strangely short blue, wasn't it? He'd want that a lot closer, I think. What do you mean? You I'd don't like it. blue I'd, where it is. Well, I just want okay, it close to Rover. It? A lot of people seem to have this no, peg high thing, I but he's I, already got the peel at I think it's fine because if you don't get a forward rush out of Penal, you've, you know, if blue's closer to Rover, you've then got a, a sort of a full roll and the peg might be in the way. And mm. I think this is fine. You're just, you're just protecting yourself, aren't you, from not getting a forward rush out of Penal? I think that's all you're doing. That's interesting. That was a. That's kind of a mm. roll. That yeah, is an awful I, line. That, was, that, that, was, that is a dreadful stroke, and, isn't it? And what makes it worse for me is it's on completely the other side to blue. Well, yeah, that too. Uh, but I mean, yellow's gone to the right, red's gone to the left. Are these balls rolled apart? Near, I mean, yellow is nowhere near hard thing? enough, is it? I mean, how far away is it? I can't tell from here. It must be. Two yards away or three. Just that, yeah, that one croquet stroke has suddenly made this an interesting finish rather than nailed yeah. on. Um, and that did go sideways, the red there. 
but like you say, it slowed down, so it, yeah. it didn't matter. He's got his rush to blue. Yeah, perfect. You need a deep ball now, don't you? So black needs to go deep and get a rush on blue to yellow. Exactly. But he's rushed on top of blue, by the look of it. <laughs> No, I think he's got. I he's think got he's got enough. It's room hard, isn't it, sometimes to gauge yeah. the depth? It's like sitting behind the goal when you go to a, a football match. I was going to say soccer, but <laughs> football, but soccer for anyone else. Soccer for the Americans. Yeah, the yeah. other nationalities. Yeah, when you sit behind the goal, you can see the action, but you, you're never quite sure how close they are to the goal or the halfway line. So he wants this. What? A yard or so, four feet beyond yellow, so he can just stop it down to level with the hoop. Yeah. Oh, I'd want to be a little bit close to yellow, but the key thing here is all about getting that rush on yellow, yeah, isn't mean, it? I mean, imagine if yellow was just in front of yeah. Rover. And where, where are you rushing yellow? Are you rushing it to a yard from the yeah, hoop or yard, closer? You don't want to. The don't yard want, again. You so. want to be able to. Now, why did he put field. blue down that line? Surely you want it closer to the hoop than yeah, that, don't strange, you? It's isn't it? He is picking some weird lines, but yeah. maybe it's just the, just the angles that he's comfortable with. Hmm. OK, there's a lot resting on this next stroke. He's made it as easy as possible for himself, hasn't he? He's got a dolly rush. It's Ooh, easy to under that's angled. That. That's angled. Yeah. That is, that is really... Un oh, he's not... He's, he's just taken off. It. Blimey. He's not even going to try and get it in the jaws and jump over it. That is a swing, I think. I would be trying to get this in the jaws, I think. So you've got an option, haven't you, to get it in the jaws but play black so that it comes north a little bit, away from the hoop. So I think you've got to aim this into the near wire yeah. so you can play split. It with Paul. So, so, yeah, so, black, so, so it stops in the jaws, yeah. you jump over it, and yeah. you should still finish because you. Because you can rush the black stroke. back as a first opportunity yeah. for a cannon on your next great case stroke, but assuming you don't get that, you can still then easily rush blue back. You can cannon it through, getting a rush back somewhere vaguely north. But and, in and this finish. stroke, red is he's going playing further it, yeah, away. He's playing it. I like this. Red is going further away from the hoop, isn't it? In this stroke, so it's coming. Yeah. It's coming away from the hoop, but straight in front. And, exactly. and the outcome yeah. that you ex that you're hoping for is that yellow, after the strokes, after the balls have come to rest, yellow is in the jaws of Rover. Yeah. And you're straight, straight in front of Rover, and you are expecting a full jump. You're not playing a half jump. No. You're you're just trying to clear yellow. Yeah. Just go over jump the top to the of boundary, it. Yeah. Um, and that is why black is where it is. I can't see. Exactly. Yeah. I can't see. Yeah. What, what sort of rogue had out of leaving, but black is in the vicinity, isn't it? So less experienced players than Jose here will often not allow enough pull. This can pull quite a bit just with this yeah. stroke. So you can Jose see where he's lining up. He's yeah. playing, so red's going to come away. Um, a bad outcome here is that it hits the near wire and flicks across and sort of ends up in front of the hoop, but a half, you know, like half in front of the hoop and half in front of the wire. Yeah, that would be a bad outcome, but you can still just jump over it, so that's, that's a good. good That's a good outcome. Now he needs a jump shot. I still think he's odds on to finish. I, I, can we zoom out a little bit so we can see where Black is on the uh, corner one camera? Oh, it's about, it's only a fraction south of the line between four and one, I'd say. Yeah, so, it, it's, so it's, it's just still over a six yard. It's nearly a six yard. So it's not not really a deep ball. Well, it's it'll be deep enough for him, I think. Oh, that's his wife there. Little, come on. She's walking oh, back from it? the club. I assume so. She's walking back from the clubhouse. Okay. <laughs> so I'm saying it's his wife. I've you can got get, no idea if it is. It's not. It's a woman that he was talking get, Spanish to. You can get twitchy on these shots, can't you? Yeah. This isn't a given. This is longer than you'd want, but, isn't it? If Black he's, was he's a, very good at these. If Black though, was a deep, very good if Black these. was a proper deep ball, it would be fine, wouldn't it? Look at that, lovely. Mm. Now that is not in any position to cannon yeah. yellow. So he. So, so what he's this playing is to all do about getting, is yeah. he's playing to rush, get a rush on blue, to the north of yellow, isn't he? Yeah. And then what he wants to do, he wants to play a little croquet stroke where he, he blue hits yellow so that it goes through the hoop, so the peel is made. 
yeah. and red at the same time goes south of wherever yellow is going to end up after it, after the peel is made. Exactly. And and describing it makes it sound complicated. It's <laughs> actually very playable. I expect him to finish. Yeah. But you sort of want this you want a half ball promotion, don't you? So the blue gets out of the way. You don't yeah, you don't well, want to rush right in front of the hoop because you want to be able to get behind the hoop as well. I will settle for right in front of the hoop because that way you know you're getting the peel and you just like you don't have that to have a perfect rush much the right in front of the hoop. It is. It's a bit further away than There's I'd like it. There's a chance it, now that Blue's going to be in the way of the rush, though, isn't there? <sighs> not a lot. You don't think there is? Okay. I mean, yes, Yellow's it can be. It could be Yellow slightly in the way, but you can deal with it. Yellow is in yeah. the front of the jaws. So yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not a gimme. This he is, needs this to hit is this further right away than you want. If basically. Yellow was yeah. in the middle of the hoop. If yeah. blue hits yellow, it's peeling, isn't it? Exactly. There's or if a blue are closer, yeah. There's a chance now that blue could hit yellow, and because yellow is not right in the middle, something bad yeah. might happen. Yeah, yeah. If yellow doesn't go through the hoop, there then he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, blue's in the way. Well, so's the hoop. <laughs> the hoop's in the way, and he's got a he's, eight yard. He has sent red an incredible distance there. He, he really didn't need to hit that that hard. That was... I think that that is nerves. Because the, he would normally not do that. That's that's very well, unlike him to play that. I don't know if it's nerves, but so you know... Absurdly hard. You know that you want to get south of yellow, don't you? You do. So... You do, but you also know that if you're playing a full roll, you're losing some power in that connection, even if it takes no wire at all. And so you know that you're easily getting past this ball with any kind of slight pass rock. Blue being there takes out the slim possibility that you can rush yellow through the hoop. Oh my word, he's missed yellow and... Uh, and black has the world. Yeah. Missing yellow so there. That was probably a um, seven, three and a half. So it probably was about an eight yarder, was it? Nine yarder at yellow. Um, and I don't know how close it was, it's hard to tell, isn't it? Oh, we've got a commentary that, commentary based on hindsight is quite difficult to digest, so perhaps we've been talking about something where something else might have happened. Uh, we'll try and avoid that, so thanks for the comment, uh, Nathaniel. So, can Robbie do a standard TP to wow. win the match? You'd, you'd usually say yes, wouldn't you? He's just you'd walking around the court. He's looking cool, calm and done. relaxed. Yeah. And the good thing about uh, Ofo being on peg and peg is you can have a plus one TP if you want. Yeah, I'm not quite sure that he'll be concentrating <laughs> on that right now, but it's a lovely thought, Jack. Uh, don't you want that in the fifth game, though? <laughs> it, it looks like he missed your lower uh, left, doesn't it? Oh, that was painful, wasn't it? I tell you what, though, you do learn from these things, and I think that next time Jose is bombarding a ball through Rover, he's not going to play it nearly as hard. Mm. I think uh, he will improve from this. Well, um, he's not lost yet. No, he hasn't, but he doesn't have a lot of control over whether he's going to win, I it's think. It's out of his hands. Yeah. It's the Australians are probably quite happy now. Yeah, I mean, this is the funny thing, isn't it? Is if is that because it's Robbie Fletcher, we're expecting him to just finish. Mm. Whereas, yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but based on the way he's played today, there is a chance that he doesn't finish. Yeah, where is it most likely to go wrong if it were to go wrong? <laughs> I don't know, but equally, hoop one. I would say hoop one because he hasn't got the feel long. The pace will have changed. Then he has to have an eight yard rush to hoop one. But it's easier now, isn't it? I mean, I know the pace has changed, but it's easier. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? He's hit that quite hard. Yeah. So he did want to play black, didn't he? Because that's his hoop one ball. Blues for four black. Yeah. 
Well, as soon as he makes hoop one, I mean, I'm not convinced he's going to have a decent hoop two pioneer either, to be honest, but... It looks um, like he wants to make hoop one off of yellow, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's the closest ball, so that's what I'd be trying to do. Yeah. But Maybe that also means that if he does send out a hoop two pioneer, it's going to be blue. Well, yeah, and that's fine. I think, I think all he wants to do is establish a break and then go, OK, yeah. I have a break, now I'll do a TP. Um, it's a strange situation because I, I wouldn't be surprised if he just makes this look incredibly easy. But I also wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't finish, and that's purely based on what we've seen today. I think the manager is probably hoping that he finishes. Yes, I'll from, bet. from a management from perspective, from the championship point uh, of view. Yeah. Because if he has a break round and then we're to stuff up somewhere, <laughs> Penelope <laughs> Rover unexpectedly, then, yes. if, uh, uh, then if, we'd be finishing about if Jose eight does win this, at two all. If Jose mm. does win this game, then uh, we've just wasted another <laughs> half an hour <laughs> <laughs> watching Robert not finish. <laughs> wasted. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so good isn't it that looks like a pretty decent this, this uh, indicates to me that this is going to be a precision yeah. turn the way he's played it he's just interested in rushes isn't it so presumably he's going to be going to blue before red after he makes the heat yeah I would think so from this position and then he's got a standard TP on a plate and, you, and I really wonder where it could go wrong, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, maybe it would, if it were to go wrong, it would probably happen in stages, right? We've seen him run hoop three far harder than I expected from a standard TP position and then just rush the ball back um, to the north boundary and, and then go to a delayed TP, haven't we? Yeah. Um, in the previous game, and he failed to finish. So it is possible. We've seen him do it in the previous game. I wonder if he's but, just slowed down a bit. Yeah, he might have gone knows, into. I think he knows. He now. might have gone he into let's to, nail every stroke mode. I think he might full have concentration. Because he does seem to have just. Yeah, I think you're right. He's. I think he might, we might start to see some replay uh, rewinds on some of these Groco strokes soon. Yeah, I mean, look at this. This is he's going for precision, isn't he? He's going for for striker's ball. You know, prioritising the striker's ball. And if he's going to play the turn like this, you really do think that it, it, it's you know it, it's Nailed it's going to finish. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's see how well he does. Let's uh, yeah. try and pick the spots. So, what do you want? Do you want this? Um, just want the hoop. Good hoop for Next, there, next to the hoop. Do you want it just in front of the hoop? I don't think it makes a lot of odds, does it? Settle for a foot a next good, to the hoop. A good hoop free pioneer. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's. All he's that matters is the rush to two, isn't it, really? Slowed down a fraction, hasn't he? Yeah. That looks like it will do. Yeah. You would usually be fairly confident that Jose had had his last shot, wouldn't you? And the more this turn mm. goes on, the more mm. confident we're all going to get, I think. Well, I think right now, with red stopping nicely in front of the hoop there, I think Jose will be mentally starting to pack his bags yeah. going, damn, how did I miss that yeah. one shot at the end? Because mm. I can understand him missing it. There's tension there. He didn't know where it would go. If he hit it straight, then he would get a bad outcome yeah. because he he'd be hitting that? it into yeah. the back of the hoop. So it was one of those ones where you know you yeah. have to well, hit the ball, but you don't actually want to hit it in the middle. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, another interesting angle out of that heat. Yeah. Astonishing. Maybe it's because he's got the small balls. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't know if there's been a, a thrash at that heap today. I can't remember. There's been so many shots made. I can't remember them all. Yeah, I think if Jose has got a, a mallet bag, he might be unzipping it in a few a few shots time. So you just drop red and uh, four or five feet mm. in front of it floor here and, I and suppose this, fraction towards the peg. This could go wrong, couldn't it? It's not going to, but and that's not yeah, Robert's it, fault. It's just because six, yeah. he came out of hoop to a funny angle, didn't he? He he hit the left hand wire and came out at the right, so he didn't get a rush. Mm -hmm. Now he's got full control there, I mean, so he can place yellow where he wants it, basically. You said, where would you want blue, didn't you? You said, where would you want it? And that is pretty much where you'd want it, isn't yeah, it? it? I don't is. think you'd yeah. pick anywhere else. If you, if you could put it anywhere, you'd probably put it there. Yeah. You move yellow just in a fraction closer to the line of the hoops. It's quite interesting now. A lot of the croquet players that were standing around watching have, have disappeared. Yeah, they know. Which kind this of indicates just, that everybody knows that this yeah, is over now. To them, I think in... Yeah. It's Robert Fletcher on a standard TP. I know how he plays them. It, it's not going to be worth watching. I'm not going to learn anything from it. There's no excitement. Um, he managed to make his previous attempt exciting and ultimately failed, but we're not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely slowed down, hasn't it? This has taken quite a long time, this shot. I wonder as well, um, just something Chris, men Chris Clark mentioned earlier, that... Uh, Robbie has to make sure that he manages his uh, blood sugar levels. Ah. Uh, so I wonder as well whether he's had to do more of that today. You okay. know, because Is obviously it's been a, uh, yeah, right, okay. because it's been a long day. Right. Um, so I guess he's not used to playing sort of matches that that go on all day. Yeah, at one well, point his watch hmm. seemed to kind of give him an indication that he might need to check or something like that. Okay, so once again I would say we have a nailed on position. <laughs> well, so if I can he can might he go run into the hoop into yellow. <laughs> he might run the hoop into yellow. And he's, he's a couple he of inches short. He nearly managed it. <laughs> that would be an instant way of not uh, having a standard TP. And that <laughs> That's see I think that was a poorly placed yellow. Well blue given... surely. I mean if blue was in if blue well, was yeah, in front of four back, them, yeah. it wouldn't have been possible to rocate yellow. Yeah, I think and both. Look at where he's peeling this from. It, well on the screen it looks fine, doesn't it? But on The screen is foreshortening this a little bit. It's, yeah. it's doing it from a couple of feet away. Yeah. It was on the screen it looks like about a foot away. <laughs> It's a bit worried, it's quite I mean, he can, he can screen, play it straight. Really I think he can just play a tiny little stop shot here, um, dead straight. Which is a great way of not having to account for Paul. Ooh. Well, surprised that didn't go through. It's slightly more difficult now. So the Australians are still sitting on the the grass watching. Andrew Gregory still tapping away on his uh, text commentary. So if you missed what happened earlier or you want to know a bit more about the other game, I'm not entirely sure what games he was covering. He, could, he might have been doing all three lawns earlier, I don't know. So I'm expecting Yellow to be level with Oop 5 here, not beyond it like he did in the previous game. That, to me, is a much better yellow than he'd had in the previous game. Even though I'd want that closer to the hoop, yeah. it's, it's much easier to get to it. And he knows, well, 
Do you think he's going to rush back to blue after four? And then Bert play a big crack I'd strike. Do you think so. he's going to leave it till after eight five? I'd, I'd imagine that he would go back to blue. But... Yeah, well, he's lining up to do that. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if once he's made this rush bill, whether he plays a takeoff or whether he plays a croquet stroke, trying to send blue to six, going to yellow at five. Right. Um, and these are these are different balls, aren't they? But we were talking at the opens, and with the the Humpty balls, um, people were telling me that that shot becomes quite playable. Right. I'm not sure I've ever attempted it because I sort of look at it go, oh, I don't really fancy that. It just that, looks like a horrible ratio, yeah. doesn't it? But yeah. he did play quite a good pass roll earlier, didn't he? So yeah. he can obviously you, do it. If you've only just rushed it a yard through the hoop, you can have quite a lot of split, um, especially with the yellow out there. Um, you know, if you're going two yards further out than yellow is. And Chris Clark picked on, up on this uh, yesterday, I think it was. One of the players, uh, he's rushed it quite far south to me. You know, I would have expected him to rush that off the, the north boundary. Um, no. The red here. Probably not, yeah. actually. I'm talking rubbish, aren't I? Because he's not got this peel. So this is probably the right thing to do. Yeah, you want to be a bit north of blue, don't you? I would have thought he'd ideally be south. another... South, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He'd ideally want to be a couple of yards further north. <laughs> yeah, well, I can well, remember. Again, um, he's got a good point. Yeah. I mean, it. look at this striker's wall now. It is. It's where he is going where he wants it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Full control. I was surprised he didn't get the peel after three. Yeah, it was quite. He's angled. got a few surprises in him. Yeah. Fine, thank you. Thank you. I'm fine, thanks. Okay, so he's picking a spot for where to where to rush this to, and that to me implies that he might be thinking about the split stroke. Yeah, or he's just making sure that he can take off from the left of blue, mm. going to yellow. Yeah, he's maybe. just he's just making sure he's doing exactly what he wants, isn't he? He's not yeah. rushing it, he's just ensuring that he takes his time and makes sure this turn finishes. I expect a take off here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think he was just making sure that he can yeah. take off from the left of blue. Needed to rush it through a certain distance so that the hoop wasn't in the way. Yeah, Chris Patmos pointed out that Jose's won the first game against uh, Robert Fletcher in this tournament, which is yeah, something that you're a bit obsessed with. But I don't think that would be much <laughs> consolation to Jose. I don't think it will after that, after this game, basically, no. because Jose was properly nailed on to win it and to take them into a decider. Well, if it had been 2 all, it um, would have been 50-50, wouldn't it, really? I think. Well, Unless given they... how Robert had been shooting, mm -hmm. not well by his standards, and that Jose had started to uh, really look warmed up, it would have been interesting. I'd still have, I'd still have favoured Robbie if, if I had to pick a horse. Mm. <laughs> but it would have, it would have. Now made I'm interested to see what happens with Yellow here. Is he gonna, is he gonna play the hoop approach we've been seeing all day and pump this up to the peg, or is he gonna do something a bit more delicate? I think it's mad to send this beyond the peg. Just, it just seems really yeah, weird to do like that. I feel like he should. The peg I feel like comes he, into you know, play. Yeah. Why would you bring the peg into play when you don't need to? He's got the ability to just approach this and not have the, not have the peg in play in any way. Yeah, it is up there. And there it is again. I mean, it seems at some point surely he gets punished for this. Well, I mean, I just, I just worry about what happens when you don't play a good hoop stroke and then run it by a yard, or yeah, you know. that's true as well. Oh, 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 he's gone past the. He's, he's, he's actually had to go past the peg there <laughs> in order to hit yellow. Now, okay, if he'd, 
if he'd been wired on yellow, he could still have it red, I suppose. That's interesting. Um, and he'd still have been okay. Just thinking about this Hoover approach that he's playing, it makes six duples a lot harder, doesn't it? I mean, he's not getting controlled rushes, is he? So, he's not going to be doing six duples, is he? He's just... I don't think he will be. Not afraid. Just this hoop approach, it just doesn't seem to give him the control out of the hoop. I mean, he's you know he's running the hoop, he's making rokes, but I don't know. I would, from where he was, I would have said he could play a sort of a hoop approach and almost run the hoop and guarantee a rush north. But yeah, I feel slightly um, confused yeah, by same. this whole lines of play that he's taken where he seems to be making life more difficult for himself I mean, he's been he's an immensely capable player and he's started uh, rolling out six tuples as well these days so he can he can usually do what he chooses to do but mm. why he's choosing well, to play yeah. these lines is yeah. really strange to me I think that's yeah. the thing isn't it that is his choice and that yeah. is what he wants to do I mean, look at that yellow there. That's not where most players would choose to put yellow. Mm. And I would definitely want that a couple of yards further south. But he's got a stop shot. <laughs> you know, I, how much is he... I mean, you know, he's maybe positioning balls in positions that look... Um, not ideal to us, but to him, you know, maybe that is where he wants yellow. I don't know. But why would you want it there? I mean, it's to send a ball to two back, for instance, going to yellow. You've got. To, mm. I mean, if it's two yards further north, then you've got to be more than well, two yards further I suppose north. One argument is you're already sort of vaguely in front of one back, aren't you? So if you if yellow is south of the hoop or level with it, you do have to get a rush on it to knock it. To decide who you want to approach from. I don't know. Is that a, is that a reasonable argument? I don't, I don't know. Okay, so he's put blue nicely in position there. Um, possibly can't tell as easily on the screen as we can from here that that's very nicely in front. Very tight control with red. So this is the kind of play that we would expect to see. Um, and that's what's he doing now, picking the spot where he wants to peel from or where he wants to run the hoop to? I don't know why he put his mallet down there. That was a strange, presumably he strange he's gonna, position to mark. Yeah. Presumably he thinks he's going to run the hoop and then rush black, back, uh, blue back to that spot where he's got his mallet. Is that what he's thinking? It must be. I think, I think that must be what he's thinking, that the blue is just off the line of the hoop enough yeah, that he's so he expecting to run it. the hoop and not blow back to four inches in front of the hoop. Okay, that was mm. a nice little tap, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, and the... The lawn has succumbed to the fraction of dew that we've had falling out of the sky, so uh, I think that the conditions are idyllic now for breaks. Right. Going from a lawn that's had quite decent pace in it to just taking off that pace a fraction during play means you've really got a lot of control because they the fast conditions have got you kind of tuned up with your with your real sense of touch. Yeah. And then when it just slows down that fraction, hey, you feel like you can do anything. Place the balls where you like. Wow, and he didn't get the pill again, but this is fine. I, I mean, that's he's, better, isn't it, than it just it's, being through? It's, yeah, it's actually better than going through by an eighth of an inch, um, because this way it's easy for him to rush it south. Mm. Um, whereas if it's just through the hoop, then that becomes highly risky. Um, now, with this red, 
obviously he's sending red as his two back ball but he'll want it inside that rectangle of the four outer hoops and he knows that he's going to be rushing red down and potentially even having an attempt at the blue. peel so blue he'll be rushing blue down through the hoop and potentially having a go at this peel so he'll he'll definitely want red to the east east side <laughs> thank you Jack I'm getting paranoid yeah. so sort of if you do it for long enough, you remember. Yeah, probably a couple of yards from two back towards the peg, I guess, would be a nice position here for the red ball. See, earlier fine. in the day, that would have run on, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, would have. Another two yeah. or three yards. Yeah, easily. So the odds in this position are that he will be getting his rover peel going to three back. So yellow becomes quite a important ball positional wise and of course he's going to be positioning it whilst getting his rush on blue. So the normal thing here will be to rush yellow beyond the line of penult uh, three back um, so that he can send it down Oh, we'll see it right here. Yeah, so he's this way. He's coming up the line towards the blue. Um, and I don't think he's going to be attempting the rover pill going to two back, is it? Just because of where red is. No, because red is not good for him. No, so. he's just going to get his brush peel and then take off to red. Yeah. And hopefully be in a position where he can peel blue through rover going to three back. Yeah. So this is really all about length now with this yellow, right? Do you want it probably yeah, level with the hoop? Harder, doesn't I would he? Say. he hit red. Yeah, do you want it a yard out from the hoop, from three back towards hoop one? Yeah, it's definitely better this side, isn't it? That looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah, just about got the legs. Short. If anything, you'd want it a bit further, wouldn't you? Yeah. A little bit short. Yeah, but it's far enough. The main thing is it's got to be beyond the line of hoop five. Um, yeah, I mean, I, peel, I so. like the line. I like to try and make sure it's sort of past the line of going from hoop four to hoop five. And I don't think that yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want it in that triangle, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, so what's he going to do with blue? Nothing? Well, nothing, nothing. Yeah, I think he's uh, just knows that as long as he gets this rush to two so back, then he's going to win this game. I think a lot of would be tempted, wouldn't they, to try and roll blue in front uh, of Rover? Yeah, there. most of us, including myself probably, I'd be thinking, oh, I, I can play a proper croquet joke yeah. and send this in front of you. But he's just... He, he goes, I don't need to. I'm perfectly capable of yeah. rushing this in front of the hoop. I'm just going to make sure that two back's nailed on. Guarantee a tight rush to two back. Yeah. But look, he's moved that, that to a position that. where the peg is in play. That was a bad stroke, yeah, surely. It's a very that hard is, yeah. from where he was. It's gone a yeah. yard too far, hasn't it? Yeah. Very surprising. I mean, that's the closest thing we've seen to an error so far, isn't it? And it's and it's just on a seven-yard take -off. I wonder if that's because this, his front ball just isn't quite getting there, is it? So I wonder if he's thinking, oh, the, low, the lawner has slowed down a bit. Yep. Yep, could be. So the balls have sometimes been coming out of this hoop at quite an angle. Um, yeah, and he does want a, he does need a rush now, doesn't he? Yeah, he North. doesn't he, he doesn't, doesn't want to go into this ball. And it Close looks to blue. Yeah, it looks to me like he's putting this out a bit wider than usual, so it's almost yeah. like he's he's accounting <laughs> he's, for it yeah, a little he's bit. He's worried about coming out of this hoop at a funny angle. <laughs> it's cold round. Oh yeah, it's curled, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe he knows it's gonna curl. <laughs> I 
I can't see. Can't see the arrow coming yet. I can't <laughs> see how how far off the boundary it is, but it looks like he's going. to... Look at that angle that he's come out of that hoop. Yeah, we, we called that, didn't we? That's what yeah. happened in the yeah. last game. Yeah, I mean, that's nuts, isn't it? That's what happened to Jose. And that, yeah. that was probably even worse than what happened to Jose. Mm. Um, so Chris would be looking at this saying there's a chance of getting cross-pecked coming to blue. Thank you to the lady that's just brought me a coke kind of me. That's lovely. So coming out of the hoop at that angle has yeah, really made a big a bit, difference because if if he'd just gone straight through yeah. that hoop, as you would expect, normally with tight hoops the balls come out pretty straight. Um yeah, then he strange. would have had a rush and he had towards the, the centre of the lawn. Instead, he's had to rush to the boundary, yeah. so he's m many, many yards further away from Blue. And this peg is in play. Mm. He's he's put Blue there on this takeoff. But He'd have been better off not moving it because that way he can just go to the north of Blue to rush it down to Rover. Whereas now there is a there is a genuine risk that that peg could could prevent him hitting blue here. Well, I mean, he's unlucky with how it came out of two back. There's nothing that he, he could have done yeah. to yeah. prevent that. Um, and he, yeah. had, he did have the same the same thing happen to him at hoop two. So the hoops have clearly widened throughout the day. So, um, it, I mean, I know there's no play on this tomorrow and presumably there will be new hoop holes for the final, but it will be interesting to find out in the morning whether they've moved the hoops again or whether they're going back in the same holes. Yeah. Well, he managed to not go into blue though, and he's got a cut rush. So he should, I think, he will have an attempt at this peel. Yeah. If he's well, it's quite a tough cut rush, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe so he's going to roll it across to three back instead, and have a go after three back. Not quite clear to me. Definitely no play on lawn four tomorrow, but um, we're, we're suspecting lawns two and three will be. Yes, we know that uh, Fulford and Balding will be on lawn three. Now, looking at where he's putting his mallet there, I think that he's going to instead put this to three back because having a speculative five-yard peel attempt. He does do that, doesn't he? You've seen it. You've seen him do this a few times. There we go. Yeah. I think this is instructive for some players because a lot of players here they don't even seem to think of this option they just go oh yeah. that's as close as I could get it in front of Rover I'll have a go you know with all the pull on this big split it can I think sail he'll be disappointed now though won't he to be to be in this position oh, from absolutely. where he was and it, it, it's not from yeah. his own doing it's, it's uh, from yeah, it's coming, from coming out of two back at a funny angle exactly but, yeah it's made it more difficult for him that, than he would have hoped and expected it it to be. Yeah, but even if he doesn't get this peel after three back, he's got a straight rover peel. Mm. I mean, this is the world number one. <laughs> yeah, slightly less likely to get the opportunity to peg an, an opponent ball out though if you have to do a straight rover peel for your plus one TP. Yeah. Uh, Blue's gone a bit further than I expect, would have expected. I mean, he can still. It's off the line still in the right direction, but. It's very far north, isn't it? He's. Yeah, it's further north than I'd want, but it's much further east than I would want. But it's kind of in a position where he he wants to run the hoop to, isn't it? it that seems to be where he wants to run hoops to. Yeah, he's wanting to run hoops it's long for some reason. It's sort of in a similar position to where he. He puts his reception ball. And I'm not used to seeing that from top players. No. So is there something going on with him for that? I don't know. No, I just decided that's the best thing to do. Yeah. So it's a nice yellow because he can, if he gets this rush on blue, then he can easily go to yellow. 
There's no hoops in play or anything with getting Russian it up to the north. And that's a nice length, isn't it? That's a really nice stroke. He's got the rush just about exactly pointing where he wants it. So he's just going to be tapping this to, what, five feet in front of the hoop would you aim for here, Jack? Yeah, you just want to be able to have a go, don't you? Yeah. Somewhere where you're guaranteed to not be pushing it past the hoop where you've got a decent attempt. He can have a go, can't he? Well, probably would have liked it to go yeah, it would have been, a bit further Yeah, that's that, a good couple of yards, isn't it? Hmm. Key thing here, once he's done his lining up, is nail in black to be a yard beyond yellow, a yard south of yellow. That's the one thing he'll be concentrating on in the stroke. Blue will do whatever blue's going to do. Don't get distracted by the peel. Hmm. Pulled more than he expected. He's got quite a bad outcome there, considering his position. He's, he's got that properly on the wire, so I don't think it even necessarily rushes easily into the hoop. Um, Again, massively expect him to just cope with it when he gets to Rover, but he may well go back to it because it's not in a nice position. I kind of expect him, with it right there, to go back to it. If it were in the hoop, I think he would leave it until he's at Rover. Or if it was in a position where he can easily tickle it into the hoop, then I think he would leave it. But with it right there, that's an unpleasant angle. I think he'll go back and play a takeoff up to his ball at Penalt, so I expect yellow to be a fraction north of Penalt. Yeah. And just out to the side. So Do you mean north or do you mean south? Sorry, south. Thank <laughs> you, Jack. Yeah, I'm glad you're here correcting me. Um, oh, look at that. He's put that. Oh, well, in that case, he's I not going. You, he's not going back might, to blue. I tell you still, what might put him off back this takeoff though, is he had one in the previous yeah, game. he did, and he went, and he into, went the hoop. into hoop six. Yeah, yeah, he went. That was a real surprise because he'd looked at that and he'd then rushed the ball across further than I expected yeah. from Rover, and I thought, wow, you'd have to be paranoid yeah. about going under the hoop to rush it that far off I the didn't line. think it was in play. But pushed but it, no. It was. That was, that was a real and he, surprise And he still to made me. a row okay, didn't he, through the hoop, Incredibly he it off made, the north yeah, boundary. Exactly. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's probably a good reason why he won't go back to blue, because he won't yeah. want to do that again. Well, that's true. But I mean, if you were going to go back to blue, you certainly <laughs> wouldn't put yellow think, there, would I you? I don't think I would. I think it's, well, yeah, he's not you know, to, you just need clear. to get on top of it, don't you? It looks like you can even just Okay, into the jaws, doesn't it? Well, you can, but it doesn't Is it look on the nice wire? to me. No, I, I think see. it's just off the wire. Yeah, okay. But if but, you I mean, try if you and want... tickle that into the jaws and it just clips off the other wire to a similar position, then you're not finishing this. Yeah, but if you're on top of it, it's easy, isn't it? You know, mm. if you're inches away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you've got to get to that position, haven't you? Oh, he's giving himself a three inch rush now. <laughs> I could play that one. Yeah, he's moved yeah, it. I might not miss that one. Moved it the nine inches he needed to. <laughs> I'd prefer to have red closer to blue at this point, particularly with blue being so critical. He now has to play a good rush on red. I'd be interested to see where he puts yellow on this next croquet stroke. Would you put this deep? Or would you just go, no, I just need shallow balls? Just need side balls, don't you? I mean, I'm, I'm well, confident that he's just going to rush red right on top of blue. Yeah. And there's going to be nothing that can go wrong. I think I would put out a deep ball. Really? Because 
but you can't jump over it from there, can you? No, because if you tickle blue and it ends up in the equivalent position on the other wire, mm. then you want to be able to knock it back in front, moving away well, from the hoop and jump through the hoop. I don't know if we can get a better camera angle of where blue it is, but I'm not worried about any of these things, I don't think. Mm. You just think, well, it's nailed on. You can just nudge it, it looks to me like it's... So you can Just see the angle front. there, he's looking down yeah, at 45 degrees. It's not degrees, on the wire, is it? I don't think. It's not. Just one good rush on it's the red It's a big here. jaws, you know, if you're on top of it, it's very difficult to not rake okay that so it ends up in the jaws, I think. Mm. Well, a good rush on gone, red here. He has is, gone for uh, a score for deep ball, hasn't he? Semi-deep, isn't it? <laughs> so this is to win the match. Yep. All the other games finish 3 0. This one will be 3 1. But they have used all the day. Yeah, they've at... made a full day of it. They got value for money out of today, that's for sure. Yeah, we started the. Oh, no, it's just playing a take off here. Yeah, no, this is fine, isn't it? This is what I thought you'd just. Yeah, but you don't, want, you you can't... don't want to have red in play on your back. So can do that. Near. You can't not <laughs> rotate that into the jaws, can you? I mean, there's nothing that can go wrong. It's just easy. No, you haven't seen me play Jack. <laughs> Well, I have feet, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I can find lots of things I to go on I saw you on the here. stream the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I just think this is an easy shot. I mean, it, he's, looks, he's, it looks like it should be easy, yeah. You know. Because he'd rush red down that yeah. nicely, he's, he's in great position. Yeah. Yeah, now... Now it can't go wrong. It's not perfectly straight, but it's absolutely fine. Yeah. Mm. So, I think that's going to be game, isn't it? You wanted him to peg out uh, one of red or yellow, didn't you, it's Jack? Not gonna, is he? I don't think it's occurred to him, to be no. honest. Genuinely think that it's literally well, not occurred to him to do it, because he's, he's just a it's killing just a bit machine. Of fun if he'd have got well, exactly, his deals. He's, just, he's totally zoned in on what he should be zoned in on winning this game. No like distractions. Say, if it was the fifth, yeah. it probably would have been... Worth a bit more. <laughs> I'm sure it wouldn't have occurred to him then either. <laughs> so, Fletcher versus Essex. Yeah, that's going to be a ripper of a match tomorrow. I'm really looking and forward Robbie to that one. Robbie needs to play like this, doesn't he? He needs to play all day like he's played this last term. Oh, oh it's going to be awesome because you've got Robert Fletcher, I imagine, will return to his normal incredible I can't shooting see him ability. Having another day tomorrow like no, he's had today. Exactly. But you've got Robert Fulford with his sax tuples. So yeah. the world number one, presumably back to shooting at his best, versus Fulford who has looked very, very sharp recently. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Essick yeah. and Fletcher is you know, give or take fairly even, isn't it, I think. Fletcher obviously a favourite but but not by a lot. But um but the Fulford game Yeah. It, he is he is strong favourite, isn't he? So he's going to have Thomas Balding, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would put him as strong favourite. Um, and that'll be but the Thomas has been shooting really well, and he's played some really good touch play today. Yeah, I don't think um, unless, right from the word go. I don't know what the score in the third was, but I don't think he had any TPs today. Um, oh. So he'll need to he'll need to be able to do TPs tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and that will be the the stream game. So two yard peg out here for Robbie. Yeah, there's Bad nothing to worry about, is there? The, nothing uh, at all. The Australians, a couple of the Australians have come down to 
the Americans or the Australians have broken out the beers already. Speak to uh, Jose, and I'm sure they'll give it a yeah. clap from up on the yeah. the bank. Well done. <laughs> a deserved round of applause from the uh, gallery. Yeah. And, it, and that turn was never in danger, I don't think, was it? I don't think we no. got excited at any point. No, at no point was there any real excitement. And that is what he will want to play like, isn't it? He doesn't want any excitement. Yeah. Well, well, I won't be here tomorrow, but uh, I'm sure Chris will be here first thing. I don't know who he's with. But I'm sure there'll be people that can come and join him. Uh, good luck to the semi-finalists. Yeah. As uh, Nathaniel Healy put it, a wonderful example of a risk-free break. Right. Thanks everyone, and good night. Have a good evening. everybody for joining um, terrific match there over 10 hours thank you for your company hope you can join us again tomorrow my thanks to Roderick Shreem David Owen Alan Charles Ludov Van Hasselt Claire Benson and Richard Andrews uh, for their terrific support over today's live stream and a very good evening for myself Stephen Hammond see you tomorrow